Is that so? Is that, is that you? Who do you think it is? What time is it? Oh, blimey, it's nearly half past eight. You should have woke me up. Oh, no, Kev, you do whatever you want. Stop in bed all day if you want to, I don't care. Oh, come on, Sal. No, why should I tell you when to get up? You take the notice of me anyway. Stephanie Brown said, come on, Kevin, get up. You'd be up and jumping round the room then, wouldn't you? So, I've had a lousy night's sleep. Looks like it. I have. I didn't get a sleep till must be, what, four o'clock easy. I don't even know why you fell out with me, because... I'm going to work now. So, come on. Don't suppose there's any breakfast. I suppose right. If you want your breakfast, get Stephanie Barnes to make you a soft ball day. <sighs> By the way, how's Mavis liking the new house? Oh, don't ask. Oh, what's wrong? I thought she seemed very happy with a nice new home. Well, she was, right up until the time they moved in. Oh, what's wrong with it? Well, it's not the house. Although I gather there's one or two snags there and all, um, wobbly radiators or summit. No, the real trouble is her next door neighbours. That young couple, you mean, the Barnes? Well, apparently, they threw a wild party the night that Derek and Mavis moved in. Well, it's not every night, is it? I shouldn't have thought it would have worried a couple of lovebirds uh, like and Mavis. And that's another word we haven't to mention to Mavis, lovebirds. Harriet, the budgie, picked the night they moved in to fall off the perch. One last tweet-tweet, a very gentle thud, and there she was lying on a sandy bottom with her feet in the air. Oh, poor Mavis. Still, what can you do? Even budgies die, don't they? Well, of course they do. But there's no consoling Mavis. Big sighs, floods of tears. She's even taken the day off to go and bury it in some pet cemetery Derek's found. Oh, when you say bury it, you don't mean a proper service and everything. As far as I can make out, they have everything apart from boiled ham tea. Well, here it is, Mavis. The happy hereafter. Everybody. We are early. Mr. Snellgrove, the man I spoke to yesterday, said he'd meet us at 11. It is only quarter two. Do you mean there isn't somebody here all the time? Well, I don't suppose so. Not all the time. Oh, what about security? I mean, that seems very lax. Oh, will Harriet be safe, do you think? Safe? She is dead, Mavis. I know that, Derry. You don't have to remind me. Well, once the pets are buried, they seem safe enough to me. <laughs> But anybody could come along and... Well, what, what? What, for goodness sake? Body snatchers? I can't believe there's any great demand for small feathered corpses, Mavis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This place was your idea, you know. Anyway, it seems very nice to me. The price they charge, it ought to be. But as soon as she started messing about, he should have told me about it, shouldn't he? Well, I suppose. Well, I don't know, really. It depends. Oh, no. Gail, I'd tell Kevin if anybody started messing about with me. I bet there's loads of fellas coming here to give you a bit of chat. Do you go home and tell Kevin then? Yeah, but that's different. I mean, I'm talking about really heavy stuff oh. like Stephanie Barnes was doing. I'd tell Kevin then. And what if it was one of his best pals, say, uh, Mark or Curly or somebody? Well, I'd still tell him. And what's Kevin going to do then? Bash his pal? He might. I don't know. I think you do exactly what Kevin did. Nothing. Anyway, I reckon you're dead lucky, you. How'd you make that out? Just <laughs> kidding. Kevin's crazy about you. Anybody can see that. Done it, then. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 3.34, then, please, love. I don't know. Me takers are down on your house these days. Mm, not as good a customer these days, am I? Now it's only me and Tracy to shop for. Give all. I know folk round here think I'm very fond of the pennies, but when it comes to you, if you came in here just to get rid of your milk bottles, you'd be a good customer. Oh, thanks, Alf. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, you know, Ken's not set foot in this place since, well, since you and him parted. Yeah, I think it's what they call keeping a low profile. Actually, it could get even lower. You know when he sold the recorder, he went working at the Gazette? Yeah. Oh, that's all finished. He's packed it in. Or oh, they've packed him in. I'm not sure which. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think there'd be many jobs like that for a fellow Ken's age. What's he going to do now, then? Haven't a clue. And shall I tell you something else? It's not my problem anymore, is it? Aren't I lucky? That's the second brandy we've seen. And a whiskey. We've seen a sherry. And you. Tells you more about the owners than the actual dogs. Ah, this is Harriet's plot. This one? Yes. Oh. Something wrong? 
She's next to a cat. Harriet's not going to know that, Mavis. Well, that's a very insensitive remark, Derek. It's the truth. If it's insensitive, then I'm very sorry. I want to go home. We can't. Mr. Snellgrove will be here any minute. Everything's arranged. Oh, I don't want Harriet. Ah. It was your idea. The way Mavis has gone absolutely to pieces. Well, honestly, it was only a budgie after all. Yeah, well, she's a frustrated mother hen, isn't she? She's lost one of her chicks. Oh, I know all about pets being substitutes for children, Deirdre, but there is a limit. I mean, pet cemeteries, funerals for budgies. <laughs> I mean, really. Right, I'm off. I'll get some lunch in town before I go to this meeting. Uh, is that a note for Tracy? Yeah, hopefully I'll be back before she comes home from school, but if not, that note tells her where I am. Oh, I'll keep an eye open for her if you like. I could make her some tea. No, it's all right, love. Tracy can look after herself. If she's hungry, she'll just have to make herself a sandwich. Well, if you're sure. Yeah, she's getting very independent these days. Hates being treated like what you and I know she still is, a kid. Anyway, you've got enough on your plate. I mean, Percy on two feet was bad enough. Now he's on wheels. I don't know how you stand it. <laughs> hey, do you think Mavis would take him on if you shoved him in a big shiny cage? <laughs> God, yeah. Ground's like iron. Yes, it's a good thing we bought the spade. Mind you, it all wants digging over, doesn't it? Oh, I was thinking... If we paved it all over. Oh, no, Derek. I've always wanted a little garden. Anyway, if we paved it over, buying the spade would be a waste of money. Right. Well, that's it. Well, do you think that's deep enough? I mean, I wouldn't want a dog to come along and dig her up. Without a spade, no dog would stand a chance. Come on, give me the rose. Oh, just a minute, Derek. Just a minute. You're completely forgetting what all this is in aid of. Oh, sorry, yes. Go on. Goodbye, Harriet. Rest in peace. This feels right, Derek. A small corner of Weatherfield that is forever, Harriet. Right, come on, give me the rose. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. <sighs> Hold that. Oh. Goodbye, Harriet. Rest in peace. I went down on Rosamond Street this morning, uh, next to the school crossing there, keeping a watching brief on my so-called replacement. Ah, she's making a good job of it, so they tell me, aren't they? Well, they tell you wrong. Do you know what she does? When she marches out to cross the road to stop the traffic, she starts off on her right foot. So? So she's bound to be wrong, isn't she? Women. <laughs> and then they wonder why they get motorway pile-ups. You know, sir, if an unidentified flying object ever lands round here, and the alien being gets out, and the first human being he per chances to meet is Percy Sugden, we are in for a lot of trouble, I tell you. Why? Well, he'll radio back to his bosses, won't he? All life forms malignant, getting ready to explode the planet. Do you believe in them then, eh? Unidentified flying objects. Believe in them. I need two hours here, that's when most of my life dodges. <laughs> oh, this is him who you were asking about. Oh, Tom. Uh, two whiskey max team, <coughs> please. Okay. You the wobbly radiator? Run. Oh, yes, yes, that's right, yes. Number four across the road. Right, well, uh, I'll be round to have a look at it this afternoon. Oh. I was knocking at your house just now. You'll be in. Ah, oh, no. We'd have been round the back. Very in the budgie. So, you see, Mr Sugton, we've laid Harriet to rest under a rose bush in our own back garden. Well, I like to think that she's going to help that rose to flourish. And in summers to come, when I smell the rose with its sweet fragrance, I know that Harriet was part of nature's eternal cycle. But there's not the there's not the nutriment in a budgie, uh, not in my opinion anyway. A dead cat, yes. Pardon. Well, there's nothing better on an apple tree than a dead cat. Now I'll keep my eyes open for you. You'd be surprised what you find in gutters round here. I'm telling you, he's right in the mire. His cave, you know. She made him sleep on the settee last night. You kid. Straight up. <laughs> Wait, let tell Steph. He's a plumber, isn't he, Kev? I can't believe he managed to pull Sal in the first place. I'll see ya. 
What's well, so with Sally? I mean, she's usually as bright as a button. I can't get a smile out of her today. Domestic trouble. Marital disharmony. Oh, oh, oh is that all? Mm. <laughs> no, Kevin shaved his tass off, you mm. see. Well, no, what happened? Uh, that lass across the road, the one they call Steffi, she shaved it off. Oh, do you know, they are a funny pair, then. Oh, What's oh. that husband called, Des? Yeah. He came into the Rovers last night without his trousers on. Gave over. True as I am stood here. Without his trousers on? Mm. What every... Oh! Oh, hello, Kevin. I, I hardly recognise you without your, uh, your what's it? <laughs> uh, Sally, I did any. Uh, I don't think so, no, no. Right, I'm uh, just taking it for oh, a dinner. Right, no, yes. you're not. I don't want any. Uh, come on. Look, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Now, come on. Kevin, get off hey, me. You and me have got something to get straight. Now, come on. Kevin, Mr. Roberts! Ooh, there's masterful <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when you're messing me about, never mind how it makes you look. I'm not stopping here while you are talk. Hey, you're gonna stay here till we get this thing straightened out. I am not. I'm going back to work. You're gonna stay here and you're gonna listen. <laughs> For one. What have you got to moan about? OK, I got a little bit tipsy and that pally across the road taught me into shaving my tassel. She is your pal, not mine. Oh, excuse me, she's not my pal and she never will be. And if you took notice of me, we wouldn't have been in the house in the first place. I said... I didn't want to go to that party. Did I say that? Yes, you did, but you There's should no have told buts. me when she... But you got your own way. You should have told me all this when she started messing about with you. Why didn't you tell I me know about I should. it? I know I I'm sorry. But I tried telling you in my own way, didn't I? Well, I suppose you did. You know I did. Look, Sal, I didn't tell you about a feel in my leg. No, because... you didn't, did you? Because I knew you'd go mad just like you're doing. And I'm fed up of you taking it out on me. If you want to get mad, go across the road and rip Steffi Barnes's hair out, not mine. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. <gasps> Hooray, we're getting somewhere. But you let her tear your hair out, didn't you? What's that? Scott's missed. It'll be back in no time. And while we're on it, I do not fancy Steffi Barnes. Well, she's very attractive. Yes, she might be. But compared to you, she's like a pile of bin bags. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I know I'm giving you a really hard time about this, but... Well, it's just that... I hate to think of you fancying another woman. And I know that maybe you don't fancy her. Well, it, it's just me, that's all. And I'm sorry. Oh, Lord Grizzly, I'm going to have to put up with that now, aren't I? Right. Come on. Where are we going? Well, you say it's good for your digestion to lie down after lunch. We've not had any lunch, hey, Kevin, yet. Don't start yet, picking. Right. What are you two doing now? Nah, not much. Why? Do you want to come in and listen to some records? Mum's out, so we can do. Go on, All then. right, yeah. What records have you got, then? Ah, at last. I was beginning to think you were never coming. Come in. Oh, no, you don't like Jason Donovan, do you? I bet you are into bros as well, aren't you? They're all right. Look a bit like you. No, they don't. They don't look anything like me. Yeah, they do. All soft. Hey, Chase, if you've got anything to eat, I'm starving. There's plenty of biscuits. Have you got anything a bit tasty, like a pizza or something like that? I don't think so. Oh, what about some chips? You can make chips. Yeah, of course I can. You two go upstairs, put some tapes on. I'll stuff some in my room. First floor, top of the stairs. It's your brackets. That's what it is. Do you take sugar? Hey. Oh, yes, love. Uh, two, please. That's why you're getting the movement. Right, here we are. Oh, Tal, oh, uh, just bonk it down, would you? Maybe. Hmm? Oh, oh. Really? All the trouble we've had getting him here. As soon as he starts work, you stop him with a cup of tea. It's the British disease, Mavis. Has he got goodwill, Derek? Goodwill? He is paid to do the repairs. I mean, they wouldn't be necessary if it had been done right in the first place. But don't take it out on me. I'm not taking it out on you. I'm simply saying, let the man get on with the job. 
too much of this tool downing, people taking days off whenever they feel like You've it. You've taken today off work. Ah, oh, well, that's different. <laughs> You're not at work today, are you? Well, no, that was the Berry Harriet, at your tearful request. But that's not the point. Anyway, Rita and I always find that workmen are more amenable if you give them a cup of tea. They do a much better... Where's my cup of tea? Oh, I'll get it for you if you'll stop grumbling. Don't forget the biscuits. Oh. Cheers. Oh. oh, biscuits and all, eh? Ta very much. Nigel, they'll be here. Probably stuck in traffic. Later the papers get here. Later I get finished. Yes, I can see how that'd follow Nigel. I mean, it's years since I was at school, but I can just about work that one out. Hiya. Oh, hello. How are things? Well, the evening papers are late, but apart from that, everything's <laughs> fine. How are you? I'm all right, really. Just fed up of living in the Hall of Residence. It's like a human beehive. Oh. Well, I did offer. I did say you and your pal could move in number seven any time you wanted. You did mean it, then? Of course I did. Well, I thought you did. It was just that Felicity kept saying that maybe you were just being polite. Me? Polite? <laughs> no, of course I meant it. You'd both be very welcome. I just thought you'd thought better of the idea. Van's here! Oh, no, I'm all for it, really, I am. I'm really fed up of living in that beehive. Well, look, why don't you bring Felicity round tonight? Come and have some supper. Now, I tell you what, we'll meet in the Rover at 7 o'clock and we'll take it from there. All right, then. See you later. See you then. Sure there are. Papers are here. I know, I'm not blind, Nigel. Have you started court in a summit? Should be all right there now, love. But if you don't have any more trouble, bring Maurice Jones's office. He knows get hold of me. All right, thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming around. Pleasure. Thanks for the tea. Fire! <coughs> fire! <coughs> fire! Help, there's a fire! Oh, my God! <coughs> Stay out here! Have you got that? Yeah. Stay out! <coughs> Is there anyone else in the house? <coughs> Are you sure? <coughs> Where's Steve? He's outside! Go get out! <coughs> Is it you all right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, what happened? It was the chip pan. I put the chip pan and I forgot about it. <coughs> Adrian there? No one's at home yet. Oh, well, I'll, I'll ring the fire brigade. No, yet Derek's done that, but there is a man in there. It's <coughs> 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 all right. <coughs> fire engine's on its way. Oh. <coughs> I have engine down the street. Yeah, I know. It was a chip pan at Deirdre Barlow's house. Oh? No one hurt? No. Come here. What was that for? Just for starters. All right. <laughs> what do you fancy doing tonight? Fancy uh, hour in the Rovers? No, I do not. Those horrible bounces might be in there. Oh, blimey. Does that mean we can't go in our local boozer now? You're bound to see him, especially living on the same street. I know I am, but I just... I don't want to see him tonight, that's all. OK. Look, can we forget about this with the Barneses now, eh? It's all history. Oh, no. You don't go playing games with people's marriages and get away with it, do you? I'm going to see how they like it. I'm going to get my own back on those two. You'll see. Has anybody seen Sally today? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> how is she? She's still mad at Kev. He's end-pecked, that lad. Well, you know how that is, don't you? <laughs> Since you shaved his sash off. <laughs> He's lost all his strength, hasn't he? That's what's bothering <laughs> Sal. Samson all over again. <laughs> that makes you Delilah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ungrateful. <laughs> Ungrateful not round here, aren't they? Try and Absolutely. give him a laugh. What if they give you nothing? <laughs> Hiya, Tina. <laughs> Two pints of butter, please, love. Listen, you sure you don't want something a wee bit stronger? <coughs> a bit of wee whiskey or something? No, no, you're all right. I won't be on my way, really. Well, I just wanted to thank you for looking out for me, lads. You know, that could have been very nasty. Ah, uh, no bother. 
I'm just glad I was around. Aye, right, well, cheers anyway, mate. Pleasure, mate. Cheers. Ooh. Hello, girl. Yeah. Hey, what's all this? A load of washing for my machine? No. It's our stuff. He said we could move in. Yes. What, tonight, you mean? Is that all right, Mrs. Weber? Uh, well, yeah, of course it is. I hate you don't hang around here, <laughs> too, do you? Uh, Jack? Yes, sir. Here a minute. Um, could I have some drinks from my lodgers? Oh. Jenny, you know, I, do. I don't think you met Felicity. I do. Oh, my pleasure. I mean your neighbour. Don't let that put you off, love. To keep him on a good, strong chain. <laughs> What are you doing here? Where's Tracy? Where the hell were you? What? What do you think this lot is? Condensation? There's been a fire while you were out. Oh, my out. God, where's Tracy? Is she hurt? No, she's not hurt. No thanks to you. She's across the street with Mavis and Emily. I'm going to go through That can wait. Your concern comes too damn late as far as I'm concerned. I asked you, where the hell were you this afternoon? I was afternoon? at the council offices. Not that it's any of your business anymore. None of my business! My daughter was in here! While you were playing your damn fool game of council, she could have been burned alive! She's a latchkey kid, thanks to you! I don't have to take this from you, oh, not yes anymore! You do. Oh, yes, you do! I've had to take a lot of hypocrisy from you about who can see Tracy and who can't, and I kept my mouth shut Well, not any longer. Now, look, Ken! No, you look here! You've been neglecting our daughter, and today she nearly paid the price for it. Well, it's got to stop! Damn it, Deirdre, you killed our marriage because of your bloody council nonsense! What do you want to do now? Kill Tracy? I don't know what time I'll be back. Depends how the garden feature's going. Mm -hmm. I said... Oh. What's the point? You haven't been listening to a word I've been saying all morning. Look, I'm trying to find a job, in case you hadn't noticed. You weren't trying to find a job when you woke up this morning. You weren't trying to find a job over breakfast. All right, all right. Let's just leave it there. Look, Ken, Tracy wasn't harmed. No thanks to Deirdre. When I think what could have happened... I don't know. I mean, what on earth was Deirdre thinking about? Ken, I know how you must feel. I really do. But you getting yourself all screwed up like this isn't solving anything. There is nothing you can do about it. There's plenty I could do about it. What kind of a mother leaves a girl of Tracy's age... Oh, for right. heaven's sake, Ken. Oh, what's the use? If you want to brand Deirdre as an unfit mother, you go ahead. Beggar the fact that it isn't true. Beggar the effect it'll have on Tracy just so long as it makes you feel better. I'll see you later. You really don't understand, do you? I understand what it's doing to you, Ken. What it's doing to us. You do what you've got to do. I can't find the gym shops. Oh, well, uh, I think they're in the washing basket, love. I did mean to do some ironing last night, but what with one thing and another. They'll be all right. The smell, it's everywhere. I've washed my hair twice this morning, but it's still there. Oh, sorry, love. I think that's going to be around for quite a bit. I don't think you've ever seen my dad so mad. He wasn't mad at you, love. You made it worse, hadn't I? Between you and dad. A lot worse. Your dad was upset. We all were. Go on, off you go. The washing basket's in my room. Take me out on Saturday. I don't see why not. Like I said, it's not you he's mad at. Right, now then. Jenny knows where everything is if you need anything. I'm sure we'll be fine. Oh, you seem to sleep all right, oh, anyway. Yeah, out like a light, both of us. <laughs> It was a relief not to have a party going on in the next room. Oh, well, you won't get many of them, I can guarantee it. You know what? I'd forgotten what it was like to have water as hot as that. You're fighting for the bathroom. Oh, well, I gather you're well suited then. Oh, yes. You gather right. <laughs> <laughs>
We didn't get a cup of tea in bed at Polly, that's for sure. Uh, well, I wouldn't bank on that here from today, anyway. Right, girls, I'll leave you to it. Uh, Jenny, if you think on, why don't you get a key cup for Felicity? It's your home now as well, you know. Thank you, Mrs. Fairclough. Right. See you later, girls. See you later. Bye. Bye. So, what do you reckon then? Great. When do you think she's moving out? Well, it depends when the new place is ready. Should be any day now. What I still don't understand is why she's moving into a little flat above a shop when she's got a place like this. So what do you want to do? Talk her out of it? No way. <laughs> See you up. Hey, I'm proved. Oh, sir. How long do you reckon that money's going to take you? Oh, another ten minutes should see you through. Oh, good lad. Hey, I don't know what you've had for breakfast, but I wish you could give me the recipe. It's not to do with breakfast, mate. It's surprising what a difference a good night kit makes. Oh, yeah. You've got a very understanding missus, that's all I can say. That's not to do with it. It's me irresistible charm. Yeah? Like you worked on Steph Barnes. You do like working here, I take it. A joke? Yeah. Well, Sally certainly won't see it that way, so drop it, eh? I don't want to go through that lot again. That's what she got planned, then. Hey? Sally, to get her own back. That's what she said, isn't it? Yeah, that was yesterday. She's not said anything since, so with a bit of luck, that's history as well. Girl. I won't be a minute. No, it's all right. I've not come shopping. I'm just popping down to Ivy's. Said she'd run up a couple of summer dresses for me. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very nice, but I'm not sure it's quite you, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble with a boy and a girl. There's not much you can pass down. <laughs> so, how are things with you and Kevin? Or shouldn't I ask? Yes, you should, and they're fine. Well, I'm very pleased <laughs> to hear it. It was a daft thing to do, letting Steph shave his tash off. That's fellas for you. They do dafter than that. I must have made a right fool of myself where I carried on. Anybody would have been the same. Anybody but Steph and Des, that is. Seems to be food and drink to them, playing the fool. It's <laughs> boxer shorts. Anyway, it's good to know they could take a joke too. <laughs> I'll see you. See you again. has gone off and heard of wild elephants have gone rampaging through the place. All right, all right. Mr. Roberts, can I take an early dinner about half twelve? Yeah, I don't see why not. You got something especially you want to do, like? No, I just want to be around when Kevin gets on. Mrs. Barlow? Deirdre. Deirdre. Well, come in. Thanks. I was just passing. I was wondering how Tracy and her mates were this morning. Fine, thanks to you. I only did what anybody would have done. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, if you hadn't acted so quickly, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no. No, no, I've got to get back. I just wanted to check the kids were all right. So, uh, what are you doing about this lot? Have you been on to the insurance company? Yeah, I've, uh, I've got to get some estimates. Oh, well, I need redecorating, that's for sure. A couple of new cupboard units. Well, have you uh, got somebody who can do it for you? Well, no, not offhand, but I'm sure I'll find somebody. Well, uh, if I can be of any help. Well, if you could give me a couple of phone numbers. I can do better than that. I can see to it myself. Oh, no, I couldn't ask you to do that. You're not asking. I'm volunteering. Hey. Hey, you didn't mind calling at the chippy, did you? No, did I? Only I thought you uh, had steak and kidney pie in the oven. Well, I have, but we can have that later on, can't we? I thought this would be a bit quicker. Quicker? Yeah, just give us a bit more time. Oh, right. A bit more time for what? No, Kevin, not what you're thinking. I thought we could go down to Rovers. The Rovers, eh? Yeah, for a quick drink. Are you sure? I mean, you might bump into those two jokers from across the road. So? What are you up to? Kevin, if I want to go down to the Rovers for a drink, I'm not going to let those two stop me now, am I? Come on, hurry up. This is going to go cold. Two minutes. 
On your own some then? Yeah, Kev's gone home. I mean, that missus of his is close as jam and crackers again, aren't they? If you ask me, you know, it gives him far too easy. Oh, and what would you do, eh? Spend the rest of your life in the outside loo just to get her back? Snooker. Ah, uh, do you play? Ah, uh, not so much now, Jack, oh no. Be fancy again, tomorrow night, Legion Club. Oh, well, I don't know about tomorrow night. Well, what about the night after then? Because I can swap me night with Tina. No, you can't. If you want to take anyone for a mug, you can do it without my help. Hey, hey, hey. Mug? It was £20 down yesterday. It's looking to get it back. Thanks a bunch, Tina. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh. I see, so uh, you reckon I might be a bit of a soft touch, Jack, or what? No, 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 I reckon you for like a sportsman, same as myself. Right? Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. All right. So I'll give you a game, then? There's one born every minute. Well, I know that, but if Jack wants to put his money where his mouth is, that's fine by me, look. It wasn't Jack yeah. I meant. Now, don't you worry your wee head about me, pet. I didn't get to the regimental finals three years running for nothing. Oh. Regimental finals? Aye. I won twice, too. So, uh, when do you fancy playing, then? Oh, well, I mean, it, it's a tomorrow night, so, I mean, next week could be very difficult. Difficult. I'll, I'll give you a shout. One cheese salad? Oh, thanks, Tina. Oh, Jack, yes, Walker and Tonic, look, please. Right. Hello. Hello, love. Hey, I don't suppose either of you two have seen Emily on your travels, uh, No? No, I haven't. She only said she might be in. Settled in all right, have they? Oh, they have. They're as happy as Larry, though. You don't seem too upset about it yourself? <laughs> Not. It's like a breath of fresh air in that house, and them girls. Oh, uh, one pound seventy. Right, Jack. There you are. That's right, money. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So, how's Tracy this morning? Oh, she's fine. Oh, good. That is not Tracy. That's the problem. Oh, well, what is? Ken. Ken. He could make things very difficult for me if he had a mind to. Believe me. He wouldn't do that. Not Ken. Mm, wouldn't he? You didn't see his face last night. Oh, whatever he decides, I just wish he'd hurry up and get on with it. If I have to wait much longer to see which way he's going to jump, I think I'll go out of my mind. Oh, still not sure this is a good idea, you know. So what do you want us to do? Never show our faces in the rovers again till the bounces have moved out? Come on, Kev. OK. Do you want one? I go on then, just after. So you can get him. <laughs> Jim? No, you're all right, Kevin. It's time I wasn't here. Well, that's 162 altogether. With yeah. 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 See you, Tina. Cheers. See you, love. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, Kev. See you. Cheers. Hey, up. It must be cold out. They've got his trousers on. Hey. Yes, hi. Kev, Sally. Hi, yes, yes. Uh, half pint of bitter, please, Jack. Right. Can I get you one? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Well, are you sure? Seems the least I can do after the trouble of me and Stephen seem to cause you. Yeah, we're quite sure. And uh, there's no trouble. Not between me and Sally, any road. No, like you said, it was just a joke. I must admit, we didn't see the funny side of it quite as quickly as you and Steph did, but, well, as far as we're concerned, it's all history now. No hard feelings, then? No, why should there be? It just takes a little bit of getting used to having a couple like you and Steph near around, doesn't it? 43, does. Lovely. Cheers, Jack. Is Steph coming in today? No, no, she's uh, still at work. Oh. Do you want a word? Yeah, I'd like to apologise to her. So, if you see her, will you just tell her that I'd like to see her, please? Yeah, will do. Okay. Here's to us, then. Ken? Deirdre? You're on your own, I take it? Yes. Yes, I am. Come in. Look, about yesterday... You left Tracy in that house on her own. Yes, I know I did. It was only going to be for a few minutes. <laughs> Which was quite long enough to have killed her. All right, Ken. You don't need to tell me. What do you think I've been going through? I'm her mother. I don't need you or anybody else to spell it out. No, I'm sure you don't. So, what have you come for? I've come to see what you're going to do about it. If you want me to say, I understand that it's not your fault, you're due for a big disappointment. Because quite frankly, Deirdre, I don't understand. I don't know what you had on yesterday afternoon, but whatever it was should have come a very poor second to your daughter's safety. Our daughter's safety. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't Tracy's fault. 
If those McDonald lads hadn't been there... You left her to go into that house alone. Emily was only next door for pity's Tracy sake. Tracy is not Emily's child. She's not Emily's responsibility. She's a mother's responsibility. You could make things very difficult for me. You know that. Yes, I know that. But it would make things very difficult for Tracy as well. And I happen to think she's been through quite enough. You don't know what a weight that is off my mind. It's not you I'm thinking about. It's Tracy. The last thing in the world I want is for her to blame herself. And if I start making life difficult for you, that will happen. She'll never stop blaming herself for what happened yesterday, for driving us further apart. And she doesn't deserve that, never in a million years. So as far as yesterday goes, it's over and done with. But not for your sake. For Tracy's. So? Steph? Well, come in. Des rang me at work. Said you wanted a word. Yeah, that's right. I, um... I just want to apologise to you, Steph, for the way that I've been behaving. It was just a joke, honest it was. We never meant any harm. Yeah, well, I know that now, but... You know, you two do take a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> I even thought that Des was serious at first. Des? Yeah. When he was chatting me up. I thought, what a suggestion to make for a married man, and he's just married and all. I would have looked a right fool, wouldn't I, if I had fallen for it. I would have been sat in a flipping cocktail bar waiting for a fellow who never showed up. Well, Steph, you sit yourself down and I'll put the kettle on. We'll have a nice cup of tea together. Right. Well, that should just about do. I'll uh, get your estimate written out for the insurance. Headed note paper. That impressive. I really do feel I'm putting you to an awful lot of trouble. It's no trouble, I told you. I'll enjoy doing it. All you've got to do is decide on your wallpaper. Thanks, Dave. Right. Well, uh, I'd better be off. A couple of more people to see before I knock off. Right, and thanks again. Pleasure. Bye, Tracy. Bye. OK, so I'll try and get that to you tomorrow night. That's great. Okay. Lovely. Really Cheers. appreciate it. Bye, Bye. Dave. How much is it going to cost? What? Kitchen. Well, I don't think you need worry about that. But it was my fault. Look, love, you've got to try and stop blaming yourself. It's not just a fire. It's a vote toss between you and Dad. Yeah, well, you can forget about that and all. I went to see your dad this afternoon. What did he say? Well, he certainly doesn't blame you for anything, that's for sure. Is he still taking me out on Saturday? Yes, he is. He's really looking forward to it. Great. I've been worried about that all day. Yeah, well, you can stop worrying. All right. Thanks for doing the vegetables. Well, not much else to do, right. So what time did you come round? Sorry? Deirdre? Oh, uh, just after lunch. She got herself into a right state. Tracy, too, with a sound of thing. Poor kid thought I might not want to take her out on Saturday. Saturday? Well, you can't. Not on Saturday. My mother's coming for lunch. This weekend? Yes, this weekend. We arranged it weeks ago. Ah, oh, clean for God. Well, we'll just have to switch it. We can't. Everything's arranged. Well, I can't let Tracy down. Not now, I promised. What would I tell her? Well, that's your problem, Ken. Were you? You've been like the cat that's got the cream ever since I come home. Yeah, well, I saw Stephanie Bounds today, didn't I? Oh, why? Yeah. I thought I'd apologise to her, Kev, for the way I've been behaving, cos, well, it was just a joke, really, wasn't it? Like I said. So does that mean we can start getting on with our own lives? No. <laughs> well, we can, certainly. What does that mean? Well, knowing how much they like jokes, I, I thought I'd play one on Steph. 
like telling her what happened while you and her were going through your shaving routine. Between Des and me. You and Des? <laughs> yeah. Harry was chatting me up and saying he'd like to take me for a drink sometime to this little place in us. It's very relaxing. It's so relaxing that you don't even have to leave if you don't want to. They'll let you have a room for the afternoon, then you can have a lie down. Oh, and she swallowed that. <laughs> Judging by the expression on her face, Kev, she swallowed every last word. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I know it's brilliant, isn't it? I surprised myself. I tell you what, she'll laugh her socks off when she finds out that this has all been made up. I've no idea what you're on about. Max, you better ask Sally Webster. She was in no doubt about what you were on about. Sally Webster, what's she got to do with Get anything? Inside. I, I inside! I've got a clue what you're on about. Fucking two-timing little rat! Stephanie! Oh, come on, Vera. I'm only after a social tea, aren't I? I know you and your soap. You'll be that much short next week. I'll never see it again. Have you got no pride? Pride? What's pride got to do with that? You're happy to let your husband go on his night out skint so he can't hold his head up because he can't stand his corner. You are? It'll be all over the Legion Club, you know. They'll be saying there's Vera Duckworth's husband treats him like a dog, she does. Oh, well, you put it like that. I do, Vera. Well, there's only one thing for it, then, isn't there? Well, I've got a tenner will do nicely. Yeah, you'll have to stop in. Oh, Vera. Your word. Flaming oh, it's not Nora. taking you too long to settle in, has it? No danger. You don't know how good it is to have a proper home to come back to. Well, yeah, we won't get dinner on the table when Rita's moved out. Cheers. We'll manage. You know what? It's going to be great on a place of our own. Yeah. <laughs> a room of me own would be nice. Well, when she moves out. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, the way she was talking in here this afternoon. I don't reckon she's in too much of a hurry to split up the happy home. All I wanted to do, Mavis, was to go round there, point out that they do have neighbours to consider. Oh, like you did on the night of the party. Well, we can't allow them to drive us out of our own home every time they have an altercation. Um, half a bit of Jack, please, and sherry, maybe. Yes. And a uh, medium sherry. Yes, sherry. Oh, listen, sherry. trouble with neighbours again? Afraid so. <laughs> they certainly seem a lively couple, that's for sure. Well, you wouldn't <laughs> find it so amusing if you had to live next door to the mouth, I can assure you. No, you certainly wouldn't. I mean, look at us, driven out of our own home, forced to take refuge in a public house to find a bit of peace. Well, you want to get the cards marked for them from pretty sharp, it's about sounds of it. That's what I wanted to do in the first place. Now is not the right time, Dad. I'm sorry, Mavis, I think you're wrong. Yeah, so do I. You want to get over there, Derek? Sort them out. Will you keep out of it, Vera? Well, I'd be blood if I'd put up with my neighbours, driving a wedge between me and my husband. They don't have to do, do they? We seem to manage very well on his own. £1.19, please, Derek. Look, don't you think you should go over? Explain it was a joke. Call a truce or something. Invite him for a drink. No, I don't. They're very good at handing out the jokes. Let's see how they like it when the boot's on the other foot for a chip. Do you believe you've gone too far? Sal? Steph, look, Sal, they live across the street. Unless we go out back ways all the time, you're bound to bump into them. You're going to have to face them sometime, even if you have put a bomb under the marriage. Hiya. You just 
Miss Dead. He says he's got to set an example and be first in the office. I think he's having a funny turn. Yeah, well, I want to be first in the garage. Mark will go home and back to bed if he sees it all locked up. I'll see you anyway. Bye, Bye Kev. Well, I'd better be getting into the shop. Last night. What a spectacle. Last night? Me throwing Des's gear out in the street like that? I only ripped his Giorgio Armani shirt. <laughs> I went a bit old TT. About what you told me. About him trying to make a date with you. Till I realised. You realised? You were having me on. I mean, you're not his type, are you? Not a lunatic like me. So we had yet another passionate reconciliation. Still. You only know how warm the fire is when you've been out in the cold, don't you? See ya. Bye, Steph. Uh, Tell love. You know, you've got to hand it to that lass. She's got enough get up and go for ten people. But like her. Supposing I told you she tried to seduce Kevin? Give over. I'm sure you're exaggerating. Look, there's no danger of that happening ever. Not when Kevin's got you to come home to. <laughs> right. I'm off to work. Fine. What would you like for tea? Should I bring some fish home? I'm easy. Does that mean yes or no? Yes. And what about the other decision? I can't let Tracy down. Would you expect me to let my mother down? Look, Tracy's a child. Your mother will understand. That's not the point, Ken. You knew my mother was coming this weekend, long before you arranged to take Tracy out. You are completely forgotten about your mother. Then tell Tracy that. Apologise and arrange to take her and her friend to Alton Towers another Saturday. Well, put your mother off for a week. Put Tracy off for a week. I can't. Well, I can't put my mother off. Look, I mean, what's so important about this particular Saturday out of all the others? I'll tell you what's important about it, Ken. It's a Saturday I want you here with me to meet my mother. I haven't sprung it on you. It was arranged weeks ago. I know Tracy's your daughter. But you live here with me now. And what goes on here takes priority within reason. Well, don't you agree? I don't think I'm being unreasonable. It's part of the price, Ken. Morning, Mrs. I've got some tarmac left over from another job, and I was wondering whether you'd like your paths doing. Uh, I haven't got any paths. Ah. ah, well, I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll try one of your neighbours. Hey, hang on a minute. What do you want? Is it OK if I make a start tonight? A start? On your decorating. Oh, yeah, why not? Well, I've got the paint, and I can borrow the gear from the site I'm working at. Hey, I don't want you getting in any trouble. I'll have it back before they miss it. All right, tonight, then. I got me dinner money from out your purse, Mum. Right, love. Going to school? Yeah, I think I should stay home, actually. I think I'm still suffering from shot from the fire. School. I'm going that way. Want a lift? Yeah, please. OK. Oh, well, yeah. As long as you don't mind getting swooning looks from all her mates as the hero saved her from the flames, which, of course, you are. Hey, I heard that. See you tonight. Right. When's the tenor? What for? Does a gentleman ask another gentleman that? No, he just gets his flipping wallet out. What do you want a tenor for? Because it's my day off, Curly, and I am skint. That is like going to bed with a woman wearing a diving suit. Sorry. Oh, come on, you can afford it. You must be rolling it, assistant, flaming manager, dressed up job. It's not the money, Jack. I mean, yeah, all right, I'm rolling in it, but comparatively. Well, then. It's the social implication. What? Look, I lend you a tenor, right? Right. A week goes by, two weeks go by, and you're still not giving me back, probably because you're still skint. Now, every time you see me, you're embarrassed, and I'm too embarrassed to ask for it, and that sours our whole relationship. Now, I can't be having that. Sorry, mate. There's only one thing with all that. It wouldn't embarrass me if you owed you the flaming dinner forever. You were trying to borrow some brass off you, weren't I? Uh, yeah, how did you know? Because my birds have been moved, I always put it dead on top of a fag burn on my bedside table. It'd been rooting in it. But my money were in pillowcase. Serves him right. He can stop in and do some crossword. <laughs> Hello. 
Yes. It's me. Ken? Yes. Look, I'm not trying to pressurize you, but I need to know. I can't put my mother off at the last minute, can I? No. So what? I'll uh I'll talk to Tracy. Does that mean you'll put her off? Yes. I'm not being unreasonable, am I? Look, don't expect me to solve your conscience for you. As well as let my daughter down. Oh dear, can't keep away, can you? Give us a bad bit of love. On tick. On oh, tick? Do you want to get me in bother? Oh, come on, I'll stick it in the till tomorrow. Oh, I'm a fool to myself. And why are you so broke? You only got paid yesterday. Yeah, well, I had a few debts, didn't I? No, Vera wanted her whack out for the housekeeping. Very hard, vindictive woman. Yes, Jack. Tarlov. Hey, yeah. Talking about being skint, is there any chance of you lending us a tenner? Neither a borrower or a lender being. Oh, no, you give us that. I just had enough of that off Curly. Look, where do you think the banks and the City of London would be if they didn't borrow and lend your <laughs> million, nay, trillion? Well, what a poxy tenner. Look, why don't you go home and spend your day off nice and quiet doing a few odd jobs around the house, like putting up a shelf? You don't understand, do you? This is my day off. A working lad can't waste the day off because it's, it's the day where he's free to do whatever he likes. Putting flaming shelves up isn't what I like. You know, even me old dad used to check his whippets for the long walk. Oh. Hi, Em. Hi, Em. Why don't you meet me potato pie and chips? What do you want to drink? Uh, I'll have an orange, please, Ken. Yeah, uh, orange as well, please. Thanks, oh, Keith, don't tell me. He's been up to his tricks again, has he? What do you mean? Alf Roberts, the goose in grocer. <laughs> Having to do with them top shelves again, has he? Eh? So how did you get on this morning with Stephanie? Fine. They're back together again, all lovey-dovey. Right. Oh, so that's why you niggled, is it, eh? Cos it didn't work. No, Kevin, I'm glad, actually. What did work? Oh, Sally tried getting her own back on Steph, you know, by making out Des had made a pass at her. Oh, aye. And did he supply the crucial evidence? Hmm? Bet you didn't. What evidence? Well, a bunch of flowers he sent, Sal. You know, with a card insane. Your thighs are driving me insane. Hey, signed, Harry Chess. Don't go giving her ideas. Is there no other subject in the world to talk about apart from Stephanie and Des Barnes? I couldn't agree more. So why didn't you just ignore them? What, and let them get away scot-free? Yeah. That's not the way women operate, is it, Sal? Only trouble is, you shouldn't be feeling guilty, should you? Oh, wonder where Duckworth's gone. Right. What's that pig pinched? Thank you. Um, right, lady, off you go for your pie and your pint. Oh, a lot of women do drink pints these days, you know. I were only joking. I don't want you to drink pint. Make Derek look daft, sat there with his dandelion and burdock. What did you have for your dinner? Oh, I only managed a couple of cream crackers. I was busy making a spud pie for girls' tea. Oh, how's it working out, having Jenny and a friend to live with you? Oh, fabulous. House is full of shrieks and giggles, phone never stops ringing, and best of all, everything's a tip a lot of the time. Not much room for ghosts, then? None at all. <laughs> so are you going to stay there? Well, I'm beginning to feel a bit of an outsider, actually. What, in your own home? Oh, don't get me wrong. The kindness itself. A bit too kind and considerate, actually. It's as if they're thinking, poor old thing, we'd better not upset her after what she's been through. While well, they're really wishing they were on their own, without me hanging their clothes up for them, 
cocking an ear to their phone calls. I don't mean to. It's just that I'm naturally nosy. Well, they don't know how lucky they are, if you ask me, having a nice home to live in instead of a grotty student flat. Oh, come on. Didn't you ever want to live on your own, away from your mother's gimlet eyes? That's what I am, a sort of house mother. No, I didn't. I, I cried for weeks when I had to leave home because of my job. I'll see you later. Hey, has our chap been in? Yeah. <laughs> no! Well, I might have expected you to lie for him. Did he have it with him? You know, what he carry, you know? Like what? Well, like the clocking on clock, you know, from Baldwin's. Come again? The clocking on clock, the time clock from the factory. I, I pinched it, you know, before I uh, pulled it down. Great sentimental value to me, that clock is. And it's worth the bobber too, was that rat back nose? Well, he certainly didn't have it with him when he was in here. Look, has Jack got a watch, by the way? You know, a wristwatch? Yeah, why? Well, I just thought he might have taken this time clock of yours with him so he could tell the time. Give over. It's that flaming bit... Very funny, yeah. Do you know I have a good man to have the police on to him? Still, he's got to come home sometime, hasn't he? And when he does... You'll uh, not have had any tea, will you? No, uh, is it a good chippy round here? Well, that's all we're having, so you can have your tea with us if you don't mind mucking in. Oh, thanks a lot. You fancy a cup of now? Mm, I wouldn't say no. I've not had my full quota today. Only had about six cups. Oh, well, they save women a tea belly. You still think it's not much of a job? Piece of cake to an artist like me. I thought you were supposed to be a joiner. I'm a jack of all trades. They call me the infirmary to do the odd bit of brain surgery around the short staff, do you know? How long do you think it'll take? Oh, if I work all weekend, I should finish it. Well, surely you've got better things to do with your weekend than spend it decorating my kitchen. I would be playing footy, but, well, I'm on the injured list. Nothing serious, I hope. Nah, the old knee. Getting a bit slow to play the hard man now. Starting to kick me back. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> kick me out of the pub and all work in here. So, with what I save and with what you pay me, rich man by Monday. Might just retire. <laughs> Come on. Hiya. Hiya. I knew you were. I saw you ran outside. Uh, brilliant piece of deduction, that. No need to be sarcastic. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Why should you want to embarrass me in front of him like I that? I'm sorry. Can I watch you? Help huh? me clean down this woodwork, if you like. All right. Are we in Paris, or better still Barbados? <laughs> Well, is it my fault you're a penniless student, Justin? <laughs> yeah, she is. She's draped all over the city trying to look sexy. Oi! Okay. Can Justin speak to you? No. She says she's very sorry, but she's far too busy answering a love letter she just got from Michael Douglas. <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. Gotta go. <clears throat> no, you cannot bring a video round. I know his videos. Most of them took place in graveyards. Who <laughs> <laughs> were that? Just kidding. He's a nice enough lad, but he's a bit, you know. Well, you can bring your friends here, Jenny, if you want to. <laughs> we don't want to, do we, Flynn? Mm, no, not especially. <laughs> anyway, friends like Justin come for a meal and end up staying for a week. You wouldn't like that, would you? Well, um... He's not very hygienic either, oh. is he? <laughs> well, he brushes his teeth, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> right, girls, now then, when do you want your tea? I've made us a potato pie. Yeah, I saw it in the oven. Um, the thing is, Rita, we were going to go out for a pizza. You know, a gang of us, it's a kind of end of term party. Do you mind? I mean, we can always heat up the pie tomorrow, yeah. can't we? Yeah, of course we can. It's my fault. I should have asked you if you've got anything planned. Have you got anything planned for the holidays? No. No? No, we'll just probably lie around, do a bit of studying. Pray that Justin doesn't turn up. Oh. If he does, I hope he brings Tom with him. Oh, now you're talking. Oh, you'll probably be climbing a mountain or sailing boats. Yeah. And doing something very physical. <laughs> Go camping with him. Oh, a little temper, too. Better still, for one. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs>
Excuse me, girls. <laughs> yeah? I've got something to tell you. What's that? I've decided that um, when we move into the new shop next week, I'm going to move into the flat as well. Might as well be all of a piece. Are you sure? I'm sure. You two can have this place to yourselves. Oh, Rita, don't think we want to get rid of you. I don't. Are you really sure? Absolutely. Oh, if that's him again, just hang <laughs> on. Hello. This is the Queen. How can I help you? It's Tom. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's, it's me, Jenny. I, I thought it was Justin ringing. Jesus. Yeah. Are you? <gasps> He's coming tonight. We, yeah, that, yeah, that'd be all right. He wants to pick us up and he's bringing a friend. <laughs> Not Justin. <laughs> um, yeah, the address, it's, uh, it's Coronation Street, Weatherfield, number seven. at number seven. No, no, it's not a flat. It's a house. It's our own house, actually. Not bad fish and chips at all, then. Yeah, I'm glad you approve. You're an expert on fish and chips, then, as well as everything else. According to me, Dad, once you find a good chippy, a good pub and a good wife... In that order. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Then you've had a good life. Well, he uh, tried one or two pubs before he found the right one. How about wives? No, just the one. Are you married? No, no, I'm not. Why not? Tracy? <laughs> well, uh, I was engaged, but it uh, didn't work out. How didn't it work out? Uh, that is enough, Tracy. Just when the conversation was getting interesting. I'm sorry about my inquisitive daughter. Oh, uh, they should be inquisitive, shouldn't they? That's how they learn. Yeah, I know, but Thanks there are limits. Hello, Ken. This is uh, Dave, Dave Barton. He's uh, doing some decorating for us. My, my husband, Ken. I do. Hello. It was Dave who spotted the fire and got the kids out. Yeah, it was. Well, I'm very grateful to you for that. I just happened to be on the spot. Could have been anyone. Have you come about tomorrow, Dad? Uh. Yes. Yes, I have. I'll, uh, I'll make a start on those cupboards. What time are you coming for us? I told Debbie to be here for nine. Actually, there's a problem. You can't take us? No, something's come up. But I can take you next week, though, or during the week, if you like. OK. Let me know when, will you? <laughs> Thought it'd be at least tears, if not an outright tantrum. Talk about unpredictable. What's, uh, what's come up? Or shouldn't I ask? Wendy's mother's coming. Oh. Right, well, uh, I'll ring Tracy. Probably on Monday, fix up another day. Right. Any news on the job front? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call him with a seagull on his head? I don't know. Clint! <laughs> Tell you what, let's do this washing up for your mother. <laughs> what are you going to do, eh? Right. Uh, right, definitely. Bye. 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 Come on, then. Well, no. Is Jack showing up? No. It'll be L to pay when he does, so she's been spitting out in filings all afternoon. Hey, what are you two whispering about? Nothing. Nothing. May I say how nice you look tonight, Mrs Duckworth? <laughs> What do you want, darling? As in Stephanie. So? Oh, can so? I? I thought I'd buy another drink. Yeah, yeah. I'll get these. What are you having? All right, mate. Cheers. Right. Um, yeah. Pint of bitter, please. Pint and and a vodka Hiya. and orange. Hiya, Steph. <gasps> What's wrong? I didn't get that window dressing job. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry about something else and all. What? Well, it was a lot of old rubbish, you know, about Des and me. Oh, that. And you know, you had no chance with Kevin, you know that, don't you? More than likely. Definitely. <laughs> anyway, this all proves one thing, do not it? Well, if we can all get upset and jealous about these silly jokes about our blocks, well, we must really love them, mustn't we? Oh, I love Dad. Snap! You love Dad as well? No, fool, I love Kevin. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Dad. Bad sign, the gig lit. <laughs> can, we, can we have a quiet night tonight, no. please? I've had a day at work. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dad's out of your shirt. Shh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Use your place, Dana. Uh, he'll tell you what that clock means to me. What's you on about? That clock, the clocking on clock from your factory. I don't know what you mean. Uh, it mysteriously found its way into Mrs. Duckworth's possession. <laughs> mysteriously, are oh, you? Yeah. Well, you don't begrudge me the clock, do you? Oh, of course he doesn't, do you, mate? <coughs> All them hours slaving for you, it totted up. Best years of my life ticked away into what? Old age and poverty. Is it any wonder it's a sentimental value to me, eh? Is it, eh? I don't know what you're talking about. As far as the clock's concerned, it's yours. You can have it, all right? Yeah, but that's just it. I have got it now, have I? Jack the Rat's got it. Oh, calm down, Vera. Calm, calm down. <sighs> so you wonder why I got rid of that factory. I got rid of it because of her. She's talking about her life ticking away. Well, mine was too, listening to her. Better late than never. I really have had a pig of a day. Just couldn't get anything started. None of the right people ever seemed to be available. It happens. Fish all right? Yeah, fine. How did Tracy take it? Oh, very, um... Well, very philosophically, as it happened. Well, there you are, then. All that worry and anguish for nothing. Most certainly is, my little swamp duck. What's that thing? That thing, Vera, happens to be a Velocet 200, a prince amongst motorbikes. Where's my clock? The clock? Well, it, it's turned into a motorbike. Do you know like Cinderella's pumpkin did? <laughs> I swapped for the, the motorbike on, on a couple of pints. You're a reptile, Jack Duckworth. You should be slithering about at the bottom of a pond. Fear? It's worth the bomb, is this? Damn sight more than your flaming clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, give over, Vera. You know, with all this fresh air in his lungs, we are going to be the healthiest couple on two wheels. Well, you have as much chance of getting me on a camel as you have of getting me on that thing. That thing, my little swamp duck, is your youth recaptured. Do you not want to live the happiest days of your life again? What happy days? I haven't had them yet. <sighs> Hey, hey, hey. Well, looks like a right Roman feast. No, not really. More nouvelle cuisine than roast suckling pig. If you garnish my chipolatas with kiwi fruit, I shall very likely say a rude word in front of your dear old mum. Oh, she's a sweetie. Is that right, would you say? Yep, the other gave me. Good. Ken, about today, you will... Be on my best behaviour. I was going to say, be diplomatic. Well, she's very broad-minded, Sylvia, but even for her, this is going to be quite a lot to swallow. So you told her about us? Well, she knows we're living together, but... You didn't tell her the whole sordid story. It's not sordid, it's just complicated. Oh, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. You'll like her, I promise. Ah, yes, but the burning question is, will she like me? Will I pass muster? So how's your sorting out going? Painfully. I think I'll knit back later and have another crack at it. You know, I should have let Jenny do this. She's the artistic one in the family. I hope I'm not tempting fate. Friday the 13th. I mean, fate and me have had one or two run-ins lately. Yeah, but on the other hand, it is Good Friday. Hilda Rogan was the one for the signs and portents, you know. Perhaps I should boil up a few bats and toads and dance naked on Alderley Edge, just to be sure. <laughs> a bit chilly this time of year, though. Yeah. 
have. On the other hand, I have been told that it is like a witch's coven in here. Oh, have you been going? Oh, it's only Daddy's little joke. I mean, he meant it in the nicest possible way. I should hope so. Otherwise, I'd put on my little pointy hat and turn him into a blob. <laughs> Come to think of it, somebody's already done that. Rita, have you never thought about moving well, completely away? I mean, you could have started a business anywhere, somewhere lovely on the coast, perhaps. Oh, I've always fancied Cornwall myself. I mean, the very names are, are magical, aren't they? Married Siam, Tintagel, Mousehole. Mousehole? <laughs> oh, well, it's pronounced Mousel. Oh, you try and get rid of me, will you? Well, I just wondered if you'd ever been tempted. Well, 20 years ago, 10 even, I had the guts to jump off the edge into the unknown. Now I think I just settle for the known. At least round here I've got my friends. Jenny, and you, Derek. It's time we were making tracks, Vera. Yeah, I'll eat washing up for Cinderella out there. Do you know I never valued my Saturdays till I started working them? You get a day off in Lou. Yeah, but it's not the same, is it? Saturdays are special. When I were a girl, that was the day you got yourself all tidied up and went on the monkey run. And if you didn't come back with a date for it Saturday night, you'd chuck yourself in cups. Never happened to her, you know. Didn't know what it was like to do that one, that Myra Ellaby. Uh, <laughs> which makes me wonder how I ended up with a dead leg like him. Have you seen the pile of old rubbish you swapped Mark lot for? I have. I think it's a shrewd move, financially. Listen to the lad, Vera. I could make a lot of money, you know, that bike, once he's got it going. You are the state that's in. We'll be OAPs by then. And I'm not being an Elle's granny for nobody. Trust a woman to exaggerate. Anything mechanical and they flip, you know. Listen, sunshine, what you know about motorbike innards, you can put on end of a pin, a very small pin. Well, we'll soon get a few manuals. I'll go to the library and get you some. Hey, it'll be a challenge. Mind expansion, personal growth. Spot on, Curly. You see, it's good for a person to have a challenge, Vera. Well, what's good about it? Nobody took a bigger challenge than I did when I wed you. And look where I ended up. Stop. Wait a minute. Mmm, I do love freesias. Mind you, Sylvia grows most of her own cut flowers. She's the one with green fingers. You should see her chrysanthemums. Yeah, she sounds a paragon. No, she's just a nice, ordinary, no-nonsense lady. I was glad when she married Dad. He'd been a widower for far too long. I know it's old-fashioned, but... I still think it's worse for men being on their own. Yeah, I do know what it's like to be a widower. Of course you do. Oh, poor old Ken. You've not had an easy time of it, have you? But at least you sailed into calmer waters now. <laughs> you reckon? No money, no job, grasping a strange wife and a daughter that couldn't care less. Well, you'll get a job. Well, you're overreacting about Tracy. She loves you. Yeah? That's why she was heartbroken when I had to let her down about Alton Towers. You'd have preferred it if she'd been broken-hearted, would you? Been happier if she'd sobbed with disappointment. Don't be ridiculous. Well, you're the one who's being ridiculous, Ken. You're in danger of becoming self-obsessed. Tracy's doing the right thing. She's adjusting and she's getting on with her life. And in that sense, she's being a lot more adult than you. Do ones have your done? Oh, for your ears, love. You can do what you like with them. Does it hurt? Oh, only for a second or so. Good sleepers don't come cheap, though. They've got to be real gold. I'll see what. When's Dave coming? Oh, about lunchtime, I think he said. Do you like him? Oh, he seems very nice. I mean, I don't really know him that well. Only I don't mind if you do. Like him, I mean. Thank you for your permission. Well, Dad's got someone else. I don't see why you shouldn't see other men, if you want to. Ah, uh, yeah, fair point. But Dave is only decorating my kitchen, you know. He's not wooing me with champagne and flowers. I think he will with a bit of encouragement. <sighs> Excuse me, could you tell me where the tofu is? You up, Carl? Tofu? So you're being curd. It's a vegetarian product. Oh, it'll be somewhere around there. We'll rest at Grant Cold, then. Mrs. Duckworth, 
three things. A. We never address our customers as cock. B. We do not describe our organic merchandise as crank food. And C. We never, ever jerk our thumbs. We show the customer to the appropriate aisle. Yes, Mr. I mean, Watts. put yourself in the customer's shoes. I mean, how would you like to be treated with such a show of, of, of indifference? No, Mr. Watts. It's just that flaming motorbike. What about it? Well, it's got me in a bad mood. I mean, how would he like it if I swapped something valuable of his for a pile of old rust, eh? Not that it's got old valuable or else I would. Look, Vera, I, I think you're looking at this total thing in the wrong perspective. Well, how would you look at it then? Well, look, A. Jack is reading something educational, not ogling at page three girls. B, he's working outside in the yard instead of spending his, his time and his spare cash in the pub. And C, this new hobby of his, well, it might mean the end of those smelly pigeons. <laughs> Buy it, curly lad. You certainly know your ABC. Oh. Do you think he understands a word of that? Oh, I doubt it. It takes him more his time to struggle through Pino. Have you come to any rude bits yet, Jacko? It's just the job, is this, you know? Is it better than Jackie Collins? It makes it crystal clear what bits should go where. So does Jackie Collins. You know, Jack, those illustrations are wildly oversimplified. You'll never get yours together like that. So you're another one with no faith, boss. All it requires is a bit of study and a lot of common sense. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> There you go. How's it going? Oh, don't ask. Don't ask. I think I'll jack it all in. Go to Las Vegas and become a croupier. Oh, you won't be saying that when you're teaching 15-year-old louse. You'd rather be at a nice house party. Uh, actually, I was asking Mrs Tiggywinkle down there. You know what? She looks like she's setting up in competition with Oxfam. <laughs> How can one person accumulate so much junk? Hey, you haven't seen her bedroom. Do you know, <laughs> I found five pairs of tights with holes in, stuffed in a drawer. Now, why would anybody keep five pairs of holy tights? Um, does this have anything to do with why does the chicken cross the road? <laughs> oh, good <laughs> Lord. Is this still here? He lends Auntie Edna gave us that for a wedding present. We both hated it. Oh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> well, we had to keep it just in case the old dear ever, you know, paid us a visit. But seeing as she popped her clogs four years ago, I don't suppose either of you. Uh, you suppose right, Rita. Mm -hmm. Flick. I think I'll pass. <laughs> oh, well, fair <laughs> enough. You can go to Emily's Hospital Charity. There we go. Hey, Jenny, will you be a love and see if Alf's got any more boxes? Yeah, sure. Do you want anything else while I'm out? No. Nope. Mm. All right. Mm. See you later. Oh. Now that could be useful. Well, don't you want it? No, no. That comes under the category of bad memories. That summit I'm definitely not taking with. Then. What for? To pick Sylvia up from the station. Oh, you don't want me tagging along. <laughs> we'll be tagging along, for heaven's sake. She's coming specially to meet you. Yeah, yeah, so you keep saying. No, no, you go. You'll need a few minutes on your own. Give you a chance to prepare her for the horrible shock she got in store. She is going to love you, your misery guts, just like I do. Okay. If you don't want to come, make yourself useful and lay the table. Oh, and could you put the spuds on in about uh, 20 minutes? They're already peeled. Yes, boss. And Ken. Put a decent sweater on, eh? You've got nicer ones than that. Want to make sure I wash behind my ears as well? Making an assignation with your wife. Thought it was something exciting then. <laughs> what time are we going out? 
like we're going for a run. Tea and crumpets in the country. Come with us if you want. Only fetch your own crumpet. Kevin, <laughs> I can't make it. I've got to work. I thought yeah. you said you could have the afternoon off. Yeah, well, I did. That was before I got hijacked. Mrs. Roberts has seen the cutest little portable television and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous in that lovely new bedroom. <laughs> uh, she's not content with having a television downstairs, she wants one upstairs now and all. Well, there's better things you can do in bed, you know, than watch the goggle box. I can her. do without your mucky talk, thank you, fellow my lad. I meant like reading books. Aye. Uh, look, I don't know how long we're going to be. You know what traffic's like Saturday afternoons. Hey, she can have next weekend off. All right? Poor Mr. She's giving him a really hard time, you know. I don't like to say no. Well, I will. I'll just have to drag myself off to the Rovers, drown my sorrows. You fancy making up a foursome? Yeah, you're with. I saw a couple of tasty birds going in there. All right, you twisted me arm. Which tasty birds? Ah, that'll teach you to say no next time, won't it, eh? <laughs> Perhaps he's gone for cigarettes. Well, he doesn't smoke. I might have guessed, knowing how fastidious you are. It'll be Tracy. Hmm? His daughter. She's only 12. She's been rather emotional ever since the split. Well, you, you said he was separated. I assumed it had all happened some time ago. Well, no. No, it's, um, it was relatively recent. After you met him, you mean? Well, yes. But the marriage was on the rocks before I came along. I mean, if everything had been fine between them, there wouldn't have been any room for me in his life, would there? I find that a somewhat specious argument, Wendy, dear. And I rather suspect you do, too. I'll put these in water and uh, make us some coffee. I'm sure he'll be back soon. It's very chancy of Rita handing her house over to two young girls like that. She'll only be across the road for Pete's sake, and they're hardly likely to turn it into a giant squat, are they? Well, they might. I mean, before she knows where she is, she could be knee-deep in sleeping bags. No, the young people like that, they're very casual about that sort of thing. And aren't they lucky? All they do is pop a spare pair of jeans in the backpack, and they're off exploring the big wide world. Eh, uh, wouldn't suit you, Chuck, would it? I mean, for one thing, you can't plug heated rollers in in the middle of the Australian bush. I meant then bet it. Furthest I ever got at 18, we're pressed at him. That's what our Vera and me should be doing come midsummer, zipping off into the wide blue yonder, putting two fingers up to motorway traffic jams. I have a dream. Well, there's no wrong with that, though. Every man should have a dream. I know that, Cock. But you should try for something more attainable, like launching a space rocket from your backyard. There you are, my dog. I'll take it. I'm putting her through the Coronation Street initiation ceremony. I've told her that she's not one of us until she's had a bowl of letters up, Cock. So there are going to be all kinds of wild student orgies that your chaperone's waving out, eh? I doubt it. It'll be far too busy studying for any that. Pity. Hey, you're a married man. I know. I was looking forward to writing letters of complaint to the Gazette. Signed, a disgusted Weatherfield. <laughs> well, I think we better start. You sure you don't want to wait? No. The rest of it will be ruined. He'll be back soon. Looks nice. Oh, Ken. At last. Ken, this is Sylvia. Hello. Hello, Kenneth. Sorry I'm late. Oh, you're not late. You're doing me a favour, coming at all. <laughs> Rubbish. Only Saturdays are my domestic mornings. You know, clean flat, down laundry, trundle trolley around supermarkets. <laughs> you sound a right, capable little housewife. Oh, I've wielded a nifty feather duster in my time, I can tell you. <laughs> How's Rapunzel then? Eh? Rapunzel. She was this princess imprisoned in this high tower, right? But she had these amazing locks. And when her handsome prince came, she let her hair down out of the window and he climbed up it to rescue his own true love. I do know who Rapunzel is. 
Must have hurt like it. Oh, no romance in me. Kids are today. Can I go round to Joanne's? She's got Roger Rabbit on video. Yeah, yeah, if you like. Don't stop in all afternoon watching the box, though. Get some fresh air as well. Go for a walk. Walking's boring. <gasps> Will you be here when I get back? Well, probably. If your mum keeps me well supplied with cups of char. <laughs> See ya. Bye, lovey. See ya. Uh, she's a good kid, that. She's a changed kid. You'd not have recognised her a month ago. Ah, uh, they're resilient, aren't they? What about you? You getting over the worst of the damage yet? Tell me to shut my big gob if I'm out of order. Ah, uh, no. No, you're not. And yes, I think I am over the worst. I'm actually beginning to wake up in the morning and look forward to the day. Where the hell did you get to? Just out. Just out? My mother was coming for lunch and you just decided to go out. It just suddenly all got on top of me, OK? I needed some space. At least you could try and be sociable now that you're here. Or is that too much to ask? I thought I was being. I've hardly had two words together since you walked in. Here we are. Freshly ground coffee, especially for you. Though I have to admit, we do lower our standards somewhat during the week, don't we, love? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's all go in the home of an upwardly mobile career couple like us. I'm sorry you've lost your job, Kenneth. But I don't feel it's right to take it out on Wendy. Oh, Sylvia. It's all right, love. I'm not blind. I can see what's going on. I'd much prefer if you wouldn't put on an act for my sake. It helps nobody. I'm sorry, Sylvia. Yes, we are working our way through some problems, but we've no right to inflict them on you. I'm a good listener. Sometimes it helps to talk it out with a third party. Thanks, but uh, I think we can go. The whole trouble is he won't let go. His wife and daughter are always with us. It's like there are four of us living in this house, not two. Yes, well, it's easier for you. You didn't come to this in any previous emotional ties. Which is why I'm the one who has to make all the allowances. Look, Wendy, I'm trying to sort myself out, but I'm not Superman. Anybody would snap occasionally under the kind of pressures I've had. You're creating your own pressure. Can't you see that? Let them get on with their own lives. Tracy will see you when she wants to. We've all got to adapt. Oh, Sylvia, I'm so sorry. We invite you round for a pleasant lunch and land you right in the middle of a marriage guidance session. Yeah, situation we're in, bound to fall into the odd emotional booby trap now and then. Which no doubt you've already pointed out. Hello, Alf. I thought you'd have been out giving your credit cards a bashing. Oh, she's not satisfied she's got me to fork out for a television set we don't want. She only wanted to go wandering around all the furniture shops. I told her I ain't got time. I've got a shop to run. <laughs> How's it going here, love? Oh, well, bit of luck. We should be open on time. You know, you're a brave woman, Rita. I've got to say that. Brave? Moving my shop from round corner to across the road? According to Mavis, if I'd been really adventurous, I'd have opened up in Mousehole. Were you? Any word but here. Ah, well, there's plenty of people who'd have jacked it all in long ago if they'd been through half what you've been through. Done what, Alf? Stop at home with Jim Bottle. Been there, done that. Not to be recommended. No. Oh, no, you've done the right thing. Hey, it's only a smashing shop, this, you know. And don't forget, if there's anything you need, you've only to ask, you know that. I've got plenty of contacts in the trade, you know. Oh, thanks, Alf. I think I can cope. No, I mean it. I'll take you the rounds on Monday, if you like. Uh, no, you know, you've got enough on. But you're a pal all the same. Ah, just as long as you don't branch out into frozen food or an off-licence mine, because then it'll be war to the death. So think on. I will. <laughs> Sylvia, catch a train all right? You're right. She seems a nice lady. Thanks, Ken. Thanks a bunch for making it a smashing day. Look, I've said I'm sorry. She understood. She might, but I don't. What are you trying to do to us, for God's sake, Ken? Destroy us the way you destroyed your marriage? Hey, Curl, going to Emping Bowling later. Do you want to come with us? If you can wait until I've been home, got changed and had me tea, yeah. All right, no problem. <laughs> Lovely. Our dragon cellar is there. No, he's nipped home for five minutes, Vee. Two hours of lager, please. Uh, no, it's our, not for me, love. No, I'll get home and see our drown. Now, remember. You're right behind him on this one. It's good for Jack to have a hobby. Oh, definitely, yeah. No more worrying about where he is or who he's with. 
Right. Oh, thanks, love. That's right. Okay. And you're sorry for the rollicking you gave him last night when he brought the bike home. Yeah, I am. Do you know, we're dead chuffed with his self, and then I went and spoiled it. I'm a rotten, bad-tempered cow, aren't I? Do you know, I don't deserve husband like our Jack. See you. See ya. Right. Nice one, Curly. Well, I've got to live there, haven't I? Anything for a quiet life. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to apologise, love. I was wrong about your bike. It's great. Hey. That is... <laughs> I thought so. Uh, hey. What did I tell you last night, no, beer, beer. Eh? Look, I'm, now, I'm get it out! No, no, beer, beer! I'm not having my breakfast looking at that thing. Look, will you just sit down and shut up for a minute? I've got something to show you. I have time to sit down. I've got work to go to and I'm gagging for a cup of... There are more important things in life than a cup of tea, Vera. Well, I can't think of any right now, so shift it! Oh, OK, OK, stand there, OK? Are you ready? Ta-da! What do you think about that, then? Eh? How much did you pay for that? All this cost is a bit of hard labour. A few bob for a bulb. The original. Oh, yeah. So that's the one you took off? All my own work. Ah. Uh, anyway, I ain't bad, that, Jack. Yeah, I'll tell you what, buy that from a dealer in that condition, it'd cost you a fortune. Does it work? <clears throat> Does it work? When I do things, Vera, I don't do them by halves. Here, here, here. Do you want to switch it on? Oh, I'm no, not go, doing on, that. go on, go on. No way, right. no. All right, leave it to the expert. Then. No, what's happening? No, what's happening? I can see that car now. Got a flaming duff bulb off that flaming fella. Well, if you can't suss an headlamp out, Jack, what rest chance at bike, eh? Oh, now, come on. Yeah. Peter. I mean, I thought that when you'd finished that, you were going to ride it, not stick it on the flaming mantelpiece. Ken, coffee. Mm. Coffee. Oh. I've got to go to work. God, is it uh, that time? Oh, oh thanks. I um, I didn't really expect one this morning. I've left a shopping list on the table. Save me a job if you could get it. Yeah, right. Look, uh, about your mother. The less said about that, the better. I've got to go. Don't forget the shopping. And while you're down there, why don't you pop into the employment agency? It's just around the corner from the supermarket. Well, I could. Would there be any point? Well, they've always got plenty of jobs on their books. Not the sort I'm looking for. You won't know till you try, will you? I'll think about it. Do more than think about it, Ken, OK? <sighs> I wondered where it knows you're coming from. So now you know. Ah, oh, you said you got a bike. Old Norton, eh? Velocet. Ah, I see it is, yes. 200. I know that. Oh, yes, I'm not uh, unfamiliar with motorbikes. You know, I used to ride one just like this during the war. You've had a problem, 1957 model. Ah, yes, well, it didn't do much change in the post-war years. Uh, well, uh, what do you think? I think it's stuck, Percy. Not that, me. New jacket. Not me jacket. My chair! I'm out of my chair! Ah, oh, they repossessed it. Couldn't keep up the payments. <laughs> oh, very, very funny, yes. <laughs> Joker. Yes, the world's coming to a pretty pass when people are more into a load of junk like this than they are about their fellow human beings. And something else, too. You're going to strip that thread if you're doing that. Yeah, it's been on the whole time as this nut, Percy. Ah, oh, so's this pot. But if you're being treated like that, it wouldn't do my leg much good, would it? You want some easing oil on that. I've already used these in all, Percy. But you've got to let it soak in. And another thing, bashing away like that, what do you think it's doing to your forks? And your wheel alignment when you come to reassemble it? I am not a novice, Percy. Well, you want to go on television then, because uh, you're doing a very good impression of one. When did you say you were having that pot off? I didn't. That would right now suit you. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? 
You're a maniac. Ah. You're a flaming idiot. Ah. <laughs> Rita's new place. She's got the shop fitters in all, right? Ah, well, they'll be opening any time now, you know. Oh, she must be run off her feet. Keeping one place going and opening another. Not to mention flitting into the bargain. Yeah, well, I did offer to help her a hand if she needed it. You what? Eh? Hey? Oh, I offered to help her. You know, she's gone looking for new furniture for the flat. You've offered to help her buy new furniture? Well, I've just been neighbourly. What you call it? Well, what else? Oh, I'd like to know what else, Alf Roberts. You wouldn't take me to Johnson's when I wanted to go and look at new beds, look, would you? I wasted an hour looking for flaming televisions. Anyway, we don't need a new bed. Uh, we have had that bed since we got married. So old, all the springs have gone on your side. Every time I turn over, I keep rolling into you. I think I can cope with that. <laughs> but I can't. Do you know you've got a goal? Offering your services to old girlfriends, you can't even accommodate your own wife. Look, she declined the offer, so I'm not taking nobody nowhere, all right? Mm. Well, just make sure you don't. And just remember, Rita Fairclough is not married, but you are. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. I didn't know Mr Duckworth was mechanically minded. Yeah, well, he's a cellar man, isn't he? Mind you, I'm in two minds about that motorbike. I mean, all right, it keeps him out at Legion and bet in the shop, but it just makes the whole place a mess. <laughs> Hello, Vera. I keep forgetting you work here. Oh, I wonder, would you mind just passing me one of those jars of coffee? And what did your last slave die of, eh? As if we didn't know. Sorry? Yeah, and you should be sorry. You should be arsed with the way you treat people. And while we're at it, it's Mrs Duckworth when you speak to me. But if it's all the same to you, I'd rather you didn't. Vera? I'm ever so sorry, Mr. Barlow. She didn't mean it. Mr. Holdsworth, telephone call. Telephone call. Mr. Holdsworth. There we are. Quarter of mince, Mrs. Yeah, Pierce. Do you know, they say the way to a man's heart's through his stomach. But I sometimes think Percy hasn't got a heart. Oh, I'm sure that's not true, Mrs. Pierce. Why well, is he never in when I call? He's not a man to let the grass grow under his feet, is he? And now he's mobile again. Perhaps he's got unfinished business to attend to. Why? Compensation. Pardon? I bet he's gone to see about his compensation. Didn't you know he's claiming? No, I didn't. Mm. And he's expecting to get quite a bit. Mavis, yeah. I'm off to a new shop. Oh. oh, just... No, I, 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 I can't stop. There's problems with shelving. Oh, Ooh, what's her big rush, oh, then? Well, they're fitting out the new shop today. So it's a busy time for her. Heck, I bet she's worth something moving to that place. Well, I wouldn't know about that, Mrs. Pierce. And you wouldn't be telling me if you knew, would you? Well, I'll be off, love. I'll go and whittle Percy out. I wouldn't like to be throwing good money away, would I? <laughs> Bye -bye, love. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Barlow. Everything to your satisfaction? Uh, just about. Good, good, because if there's anything you need or anything you especially want, please feel free to consult me. Thank you. I'll remember that. Service with civility. That's our motto here at Better Buys. Bye-bye, then. Hey, what were you saying? A conversation between management and a customer has nothing to do with you at all, Mrs Duckworth. Only if it were about me. I'd like you to bear in mind it wasn't me that left me half an home to go swanning off with some flighty piece of stuff. So, uh, here we are. Oh, thank you. Hey, were busy over there when I passed. Mm. Hey, they don't hang about them lads. They'll be finished tonight. You know, shelving, counter, the lot. There's still a lot to do, of course, you know, moving stuff across and with me flitting. Well, I did offer to help. I know you did, and I'm very grateful, but I think I've got everything under control, more or less. Oh, Rita, hmm? the very person I was looking for. Um, not disturbing anything, am I? No, don't be daft. We're just having something to eat. Sit you down. Uh, no, no, I won't do that. Uh, I just wanted a word with Rita oh. regarding this afternoon. Is there something wrong? No, 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 don't be alarmed. It's just that Mavis and I were talking, and she happened to mention that you were going out this afternoon on your own to buy furniture for your new flat. Oh, yes, I was. Well, you'll be happy to know you won't be on your own anymore. Mavis has detailed me to give you my undivided attention and support. What exactly are you trying to say, Derek? I mean, I'm at your disposal for the entire afternoon. But well, you're working, surely. All taken care of by one telephone call. 
I don't know what to say. Well, just tell me when to call and where you want taking. Well, uh, it's very good of you to offer, Derek, but uh, I've already arranged for somebody to go with me. Oh. Well, yes, you see, case... Al's volunteered yesterday and I've accepted. Isn't that so, Al? <laughs> yes, so oh, I absolutely. <laughs> Sir, can I help you? I hope so. Uh, I'm looking for a job. Come to the right place, then. Have you got an appointment? No. No, uh, no I was just passing. Well, that's fine. Mrs Woods has someone in with her at the moment, but I'm sure we can sort something out if you're prepared to wait. Oh. Uh, no, maybe it's better if I make an appointment and come back. Hang on a minute. No, it doesn't I can matter. easily check for you. you... No, no, really. Forget it. it. It's all right. No, really, please. We'd like to help. Oh, sorry to bother you, Mrs Woods. There's a gentleman just come in without an appointment. I will. Thank you. Shall be ten minutes at the outside. Give you time to fill this out. What is it? Personal details, experience, preferences, that sort of thing. Would you like a pen? No, no, thanks. If you need any help, just shout. <sighs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Hello. Oh, Mr. Roberts, thank goodness for that. I was giving you up for lost. Uh, yeah, well, don't take your smock off yet, love, because I've got to go out again. Oh, but I haven't had my dinner yet. No, no, I know that, but you can have it when Audrey comes. She won't be that long. Well, where shall I say you are, then, if she asks me? Well, I'm going to Johnson's Warehouse. Audrey's been nattering me about a new bed ever since we moved out, so I thought I'd go down and see what they've got. Don't you think you should take her with you? Ah, well, I'm trying to make it a bit of a secret. Oh, you romantic old thing, you. Hey, less of the old. <laughs> uh, listen, if you get peckish, help yourself to a pie or a banana, something like that. I'm sure she won't be long now, Mr. Barlow. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it will be better if I made an appointment than going back. Goodbye, Mr. Joplin. Goodbye. I'll let you know as soon as we have any news. Thank you very much. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Barlow. Would you like to come through to the office? So, you're interested in a new position? I'm looking for a job, Mrs. Woods. Are you willing to travel? Within reason, yes. Take a Christian salary? Look, uh, I think perhaps we ought to get one thing straight before we start wasting each other's time. I'm not here to be matched up against some outstanding vacancies on your files. I have something very specific in mind. We don't force jobs on people, Mr Barlow. And it's not in anyone's interest to put you up for something unsuitable. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. No offence taken. It's just that, um, well, I, I have extensive experience of newspaper work and I want something in that sort of area. Perhaps it's better if I read through this first, and uh, then we talk. Yeah, OK. Then I can get a better idea of what might suit you if we can't fix it up with something of your first choice. Oh, well, uh, if you can't do that, I'm afraid I'm not very interested. <sighs> Bear with me, Mr Barlow. We may have something right up your street which you've never considered. Oh, oh you've got your life belt, Mrs Armitage, honestly. Darlow. Dear, oh, dear. Hey, what are you so doing here in your dinner hour? Well, Mr. Roberts had to go out suddenly, and he asked me to stop here and wait till you got back, so... Well, I didn't say we're going out this afternoon. Andrew, if he's up to where I think he's up to. What do you mean? Rita Fairclough, that's what I mean. If he's taken her looking for furniture, I'll skin him alive. No, he hadn't done that. <laughs> you don't know that, man. No, Audrey, really, he hasn't. He's gone to Johnson's warehouses to look at beds. There you are, then. Yeah, but it's not for her, it's for you. He wanted to surprise you. Really? Oh, and all that bashing away, that thick skin, it's paid off, then. Mm. <laughs> Where are you going, Sally? Listen, I cannot leave choosing a new bed to Alf. Otherwise, if I'm not there, he'll just choose the cheapest. <laughs> I know, but it's supposed to be a surprise. Well, I've not had my dinner yet. Oh, lovely. Now, come on, just choose anything you fancy. A pie, banana, anything. I won't be long on this one. Oh. 
No disrespect, and I know you've got your books to clear, but I thought I made it quite clear I didn't want just anything. It's a very responsible job, and with your art background, I think they'd be seriously interested. Yes, well, I wouldn't. I really have no intention of becoming a bookkeeper, even if it is for the local theatre. Pay's not terrific, I know, but it could be a very stimulating job, and there's no age restriction. Like I said before, let's just forget it, shall we? Thanks for your time. Well, we've got your details on file, if anything comes up. Which seems unlikely. Give us a chance, Mr Barlow. You've only just set foot in the office. These things take time. Yeah, look, I, uh, I don't mean to sound ungrateful. It's just that, well, I'm not used to being quite so out of demand. I get a lot of men around your age coming in. And it isn't easy to place them, but it can be done with a little give and take. Just one problem. I don't want to take what you want to give me. Have you ever thought of going back to teaching? No. It's just I remember how good you were at it. I taught you? Bessie Street. Christine Loxon before I got married. Not that you'll remember. Long time ago. Maybe. But I remembered. And I bet every kid in my class remembers. They all liked you. I taught you. I hope you don't mind me bringing it up. Only you were so good at it, it seems a shame to dismiss it out of hand. Oh, well, thanks, but... Uh... Too much water has flown under the bridge since I last picked up a piece of chalk. You know best. Only other thing I can suggest, though I can't put you in touch with anyone, is the tax office. They're always looking for responsible, mature people. So, tax office or teaching, those are my options. I'm sure we'll come up with something. Goodbye, Mr Barlow. Bye. He used to teach me, that chap. Makes you think, doesn't it? Hey, I like this. It's a bit pricey. Oh, yeah, it, it is expensive, sir, but we are talking top of the range here. Uh, real quality. It's a big bed, interior sprung mattress, brass headboard, and um, mahogany trim storage drawer. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not a nice bed. Hey, it's nice and firm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's, it's very comfortable. Oh, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you make this your choice, sir. It's, um, it, it's not exactly orthopedic, but, but well on the way. It's the, the firmest of our normal range. And as I said, it, it is a big bed. Plenty of room for the larger person. Oh, um, go on, sir. Try it. Oh, oh, stretch out. No, no. Oh, go on, Alf. Give it a whirl. <laughs> well, don't on. be shy. Uh, a bed's a long-term investment. And as you said, it, it's not cheap. It's something you and your lady wife need to be sure of. Yeah, well, maybe the lady wife ought to try it then, eh? <laughs> oh, why not? And after all, you'll be sharing it with him. <laughs> Come on, Rita. Nip in. I say, dear devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go, Al. Oh, I say. Ah, what do you oh. think, then? Oh, I think this is just what we wanted, Al. <laughs> it is that, Al. Yeah. We're as snug as a bug as a rug in here. Don't get too comfortable, Alf, eh? If the shop to run, remember? Audrey? Oh, nice of you to remember. Uh, look, look, go, you'll get the wrong idea. This isn't what it looks like. <laughs> isn't I, it? No. Alf was just doing me a good turn. <laughs> yes, on a double bed in front of the entire warehouse. I'm glad you think it's funny, look, Rita. No, you don't understand. Look, Rita said she wanted a bed, and I remember what you said this morning about wanting one and all. So I came down with Rita to choose her one, and, and then we were going to look for one for us. And this is it, is it? Well, no, not exactly. I mean, Rita's not chosen one. She, she really likes this one, though. Mm. That's a surprise, it's very nice. Yeah. 650, is that mm. all? Yes, madam. Mm, sounds very reasonable for a bed of this squalor. Oh, 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 it is, madam. Um, you better wrap it up then, haven't you? We'll take it with us. What does it look as if I'm doing? I couldn't leave this lot out there in that weather. It'd all go flaming rusty. Rusty? What about my living room, eh? What about my carpet? It's only a drop of water, Vera. Come on, out. Oh, now be reasonable, Vera. Come on, out, now. 
And take this with you. Here. And what's this? My raincoat! Yeah, well, I had to get You've been quick. using my raincoat! I had to get some quick beer, didn't I? Oh, look, it's rowing! Then it'll clean up. Clean up. All this is fit for his tipping. Like this. Really more for that! Well, let's leave all as it is, but I'm late for work. Hey, I'm you don't work. go out of this house and get all this junk in the backyard. Oh, but it beer, a beer, a... But there are no out now! Because of your drones. I won't be responsible for my actions! Oh, <laughs> Hey, where's Jack? Alex spitting blood back there. He should have been in half an hour ago. I don't know. We came straight here. Probably got carried away with his motorbike. From what beer is that? He spends all of his spare time on it. Well, he'll have a lot more spare time if he don't get himself in here before Alex blows. Okay. Is he still not here yet? Not unless he's disguised himself as the Invisible Man. Well, he's got five minutes and then he's on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> so amusing about that. If you don't know Tiger, I can't tell you. Yes, love. Uh, usual, please, Mrs. Jim. Hey, yeah. All right, yeah. you look a cracker. Are you going somewhere nice tonight? Oh, I hope not. Better just had a hard day on that perfume counter. I was going to have a word with you about that. I was wondering about discounts. No discount. Ali. Where have you been, pal? Now, sorry, sorry I'm late. It's a bit of an emergency. See. Haven't you got a clock in your house? Not now. He's got a motorbike. <laughs> oh, yes, very funny. <laughs> look, you've got, haven't got time to talk. Get in that back. I'll be through in a minute. Uh, Jack. Oh. Jack. Oh, Right. Come here. You can't go around looking like a grease monkey. Why not? Everybody treats me like one, don't they? Look, why don't you behave like a human being? People might be fooled into thinking you are one. And if I was you, I wouldn't be this late again. Not if you want to keep your job. Hi. You're not socialising again? Working? Had to go for a drink with a prospective client. Hmm, must be difficult. Yes, it is. So, is dinner ready? I'm starving. Afraid not. Oh, Ken. I can't be expected to go out to work and come home and cook a meal. It's not fair. It's not we've really been sitting around doing nothing all day. Well, I never know when you're coming back. And what's the point of wasting food? Well, you could have put a casserole in. I mean, what do you do all day? Well, now, let's see, shall we? First of all, I did the shopping, like you asked me to, and got a mouthful of abuse from Vera Duckworth. Then I followed your instructions and went to the job agency, where I was told by someone that I used to teach like years ago that all I was suitable for was either the tax office or the classroom, neither of which they could fix me up with. I had to apply myself. So, you see, I've had a quite a busy, full and totally unrewarding day. I mean, you actually went to the employment agency? Don't you believe me? Yes, of course I do. I just hope you left them your details. Ooh. Along with my self-respect. Ken, you mustn't give up hope yet. Yes, well, it's easy for you to say that, isn't it? You've still got a job. In fact, you've got my job. Well, that's not fair. Yes, well, life isn't very fair, is it? Ken, what about teaching? Oh, don't. No, come on, Ken. Before you dismiss it out of hand, I mean, it's something you're trained to do and you could walk into a supply job any time you wanted. Perhaps, but I don't want to. Well, what's so very wrong about being a teacher? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. One, it's underpaid. Two, it's undervalued. Three, they're overworked. Four, most men of my age are leaving in droves. And five, if you think that I left my house, my family, my wife, my kid and my business to go back to something that I left 15 years ago, you don't know me very well. And I'll tell you what, Wendy. That worries me more than not having a job. Kids, don't hang about. We're late enough for already. Oh, and don't forget, this afternoon it's round the corner in Coronation Street at the new shop for the evening uh, papers. Hang on a minute. No, it isn't. Now, forget that. That's not right, what Mrs Wilton said. We are doing the evening papers from here tonight. From here? But I don't... We are doing the evening papers from here tonight. I've told the van to come here as usual. It's tomorrow night when we're in Coronation Street. Well, I get flummoxed. All right. This afternoon it's here. Go on, don't wait. Oh, it's a good thing we don't move the business every day. Oh, a cup of tea would be really welcome. Well, life's full of little disappointments, isn't it, Mavis? Executive decision. I've decided to take the tea-making title with me to the new shop. I am not being selfish. I never said anything. 
the thing is, Mavis, that's where the main body of the troops is going to be. There's going to be me and Jenny, Felicity. And if the removal men know there's a cuppa at the far end, they'll be out of here a damn sight faster. Psychology. Mm, see, you thought it all out. Well, I'll just have to survive on tap water. I no, suppose. you won't. I shall send one of the girls over with a thermos flask for you. Now, come on, cheer up. It's only for one day. Man, I should just feel useless standing here all day with nothing to sell but newspapers. Well, look, if anybody comes in for anything, just remind them where we've moved to. There's bound to be plenty who haven't taken it in. Ah, now then, removal men are here. Good oh, morning, morning, lads. Morning, morning, morning. All right. As right as we'll ever be, so you can start loading up whenever. Right, I'm going to walk round to the new shop and I'll be waiting for you there. Fine, OK. All yours, Mavis. Well, we've time for a brew then, I dare say. I'll never get used to working Good Friday, you know. I know the show must go on, the paper must come out and all that, but still... Yeah, how lucky you are. Sorry, Ken. Little moan of mine was a trifle on the tactless side, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's me, that's a bit touchy. What are you planning to do today? Sit around, wait for you to come home this evening. Okay. Well, what else is there to do? I'd take Tracy out somewhere if I thought for a moment she wanted to go, but obviously she doesn't. Not that again. She was just taking it out on you, that's all. You're a handy target, you know. Easy to hit and easy to hurt. She doesn't really mean it. Mm, I don't know. Well, I do. Listen, why don't you ring round some of your old contacts today? See if there's anything going on the job front. Will there be any point? OK. Well, I don't know. Only you can answer that. You tell me. I've got to go. See you later. Yeah. Hey, it's time you were getting down the pub. And get that load of rubbish off my tablecloth. It's not only a flaming tablecloth, woman. I've put a lot of newspaper down. Do you know, I hate to see newspaper on a table like that. Mind you, that was a tablecloth in your house, weren't it? Eh? News at will, Monday to Saturday, and football pink on a Sunday. Yeah, well, my mother was a very organised woman. That's to be in heaven. Uh, first up, best dressed in your house. Well, there was no flaming different than yours. You what? At least we knew what a tablecloth looked like, and I am sick of finding old junk on mine, so get it off. You know, it's typical, this. Anything I want to do, anything that wants a bit of encouragement, what do I get? Belittlement. Oh, you don't need any belittlement, you. What do you mean by that? You know. Yeah, well, joking apart. You know. I was joking. I think it's tragic. Look, I could do with a bit of help with this project. You see, I've got one or two parts here that are far too gone to do any good with. Yeah, well, I've been telling you that for years. Will you stop talking like that? Curly my ear, you need. You might think you mean it. No, what, what I'm trying to say here is that I'm not spending time and money on this bike just for me, you know. It's for both of us. Oh, you're not getting me on that thing. Oh, go on, I'm gonna fix for a couple of quid. On your bike. Yes, well, that's what I'm trying to do, aren't I? When I get that bike on the road, it'll be, it'll be like the old days, me and you, when we were courting. Do you remember them days, eh? Yeah, I remember being perishing coal sat behind you on the back yard then. Uh, but I used to warm you up a bit, didn't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. Stood in shop doorways, you fumbling at me. Me thinking I wish you'd buy me a bag of chips. That's what I remember about motorbikes, being perishing coal. Do you remember that? Do you remember that time, that time? There was, there was me, you, Harold Perrin, his bird. Oh. Harold Perrin. He used to ride a Norton. You remember, we all went down to pick me. I got soaked on the way back. So we went via the tack. That was, that was where Harold's dad used to work as a, as a caretaker. Harold had the key for Boiler House. So. I don't remember no Harold Perrin. Yes, you do. His dad had a plate in his head from the war. He was, he was a bit... Anyway, when we got in the Boiler House, it was dead hot. And you and Harold's bird said you wanted to dry your clothes off. I don't remember any of it. Yes, you do. And me and Harold said we'd shut his eyes. Now, you made me say, me God... Strike you blind if you look. And I also said, I think I'll chance an eye here. So. Look, that weren't me, it was some other girl. Come and think of it, it was Cynthia Pashley. Oh, I remember her, mm. spotty article. Yeah, go with anybody. Not that many have. Cynthia Pashley, by God, that takes me back a bit, that. Wonder how she's doing, then. Oh, she's doing all right, don't you, worry? Oh, I don't know. Have you seen her? Well, I don't have to do, do I? I know she ain't got a bloke with a bike pulled through to bits as decrepit as itself on her tablecloth. 
You have a very wicked tongue, Alvira. Charlie! Hello, Ken. Hello. What are you doing around here? Oh, just passing, just passing. Well, no, no, actually, I was hoping to see you. I heard about your bit of trouble at the Gazette. Tough. Yeah, well, Ted Lucas was just looking for a chance to get rid of me. He as good as admitted that. That's how it is. If your face doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, is there anything doing at your place? For you, you mean? I'm the one in need of a job. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, Ken. Uh, as far as I know, there's nothing. I'll ask, though. If you would. Sure, no problem. Only don't bank on it. Well, you know how things are up here these last few years. Used to be a real newspaper town. All gone. Just a few stringers and a few hundred ex-journalists wishing they weren't. They're all into PR, advertising, anything they can get. Yeah, I know, I know. Still, you never know your luck. I'll tell you where you'll get the griff, the lamb. Do you know it? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's still booze down there, the survivors. So, if there's anything going, that's where you'll hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks anyway, Charlie. See you soon, eh? Right. Hmm. You must bring Deirdre round for a jar. See ya. That's two pints of bitter, large scotch. What's yours, Wendy? Dry white. And a dry white wine. Ken? You're not coming here with me, love. I'm the swine who fired him. What's he doing these days? Well, um, he's looking around. In other words, nothing. I'm not surprised. He's no ball of fire. Let's face it, he's a loser. I'm sorry if that annoys you, but it's the truth. You dry white wine girls can stand the truth, can't you? <laughs> fancy doing tonight then? What I really fancy doing is getting on a plane and going to Paris. I've got work in the morning. Well, I'm thinking of taking you. Oh, well, thanks very much. That's charming, that is. Well, you asked me what I wanted to do and I told you. So have you got Monday off as well, Sal? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? We were going to go away today if Kevin would have shaped himself. You still can if you're paying. Not okay. Where do you fancy going? Well, if the truth be known, I fancy this staying at home. Rose a murder bank, I was that. See, that's Kevin. He's a stop at home. Why don't you have a word with Steffi? They might be having a wife swapping party this weekend. You're just there, are you? <laughs> Kevin doesn't want to go to a wife swapping party, do you? Oh, no, not round here. With my luck, I'd probably end up with Vera Duckworth, one of <laughs> Just like him. <laughs> oh, so with you. I was thinking about that lady wife of mine asking Curly to drive her to Staley Bridge here, Auntie Lil. Don't let me near that flaming car of hers, you know. Still. Who needs it? Not the thrill of a motorbike, is it? We've been on the back of a motorbike team. Yeah, I yeah. have. Not with me, you haven't, which means, of course, you haven't lived. You wait till you get that bike of mine on the road. Give you the thrill of a lifetime. Oh, you've been promising me that ever since I came to work here. Oh, no, it's straight, straight. Mind, mind you. You look great in leather, black, figure, hugging. Give over, you give yourself a funny turn. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, half lager and a sweet jerry, please. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Where's Tracy today? Oh, she's gone to her mate. You know, Lindsay's. Oh, I was so pleased when you called, Deirdre. Mr Sugden's driving me mad today. Over lunch, he gave me a minute account of every good Friday he spent between 1939 and 1945. Oh. <laughs> now he's looking for his medals. Oh, God, I thought you were looking a bit war-weary. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I've had to come out of the house myself. Oh? Well, Dave's still beavering away. He wouldn't even stop when I made him a sandwich. Makes me feel guilty while standing there while somebody else is toiling. Oh, oh can you manage? Yeah. yeah. That's right, I see people working. Oh, <laughs> hello, Al. I saw a removal van outside, so I popped across to see how you're going on. I didn't think you'd be open today. Oh, I'm not. Audrey won't stand for that. No, I had to come down to see about freezers. They've been on the dodge lately. You know, you can't keep away from that shop, Al. Come on, admit it. <laughs> 
That's the lot, love. Oh. Oh, have we got oh. everything in? Yeah, Van's clean as a whistle, so, oh. so if you'll just sign my sheet. I will. Okay. <sighs> there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just hang on a minute. Here we are. And thank you again. Oh, ta very much, love. Pleasure. Lovely. Ta-ra. 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 Ta you were a bit generous there, weren't you? Well, not every day I move into a new shop, is it, Al? Oh, that's true. I... Hey, it's a great feeling, though, isn't it? Hey. Mm. You see, you and me know about that. I've tried to explain it to Audrey, but she'll never understand. You know, I'm right glad you've got these premises. And if there's all I can do, I'm just across the street. Right. I mean, you'll do my trade a bit of good, won't you? You know the shop, like, you know. Customers from here will come across there, and you'll get some back again. We can do each other a bit of good. I tried to explain all that to Audrey, but can she see it? I take me hat off, you know, to Mrs. Fairclough. Oh, she's tracking them both for common sense and reason. How do you mean, Mr. Sugton? Well, there's a lot of silly folk that be afraid of moving into her new premises today of all days, Friday the 13th. Oh, it is the 13th, isn't yeah. it? You've forgotten in the rush. There's too much of this superstition. Now, Hitler, now he wouldn't get out of bed on Friday the 13th, you know. Wouldn't he? No, not him. But it didn't stop him losing the war, did it? Well, I've never thought of myself as superstitious, Mr. Sugden, but all the same, I don't it's, know uh, about... It's all silliness, though. Now, say you got knocked down by a bus tomorrow. Oh, well, Mr. Sugden! Or a roof slate comes in, it's on the top of the head. <sighs> or something like that. Well, these things happen. And people will say it's just because you moved on Friday the 13th. Oh, well, Mr. Sugden! It's nonsense. It's, uh, it's just a coincidence. And I would tell him that as well. Keep smiling. Well, that were a complete waste of time. Not for me, Vera, I can assure you of that. Jack! Who oh, is that, Jack? Well, at least it's cleared his mess off my tablecloth. What are you doing back so soon? Hey, won't you flame in, know it? But go over to Auntie Lil's. There's nobody in, is there? I said to her next door, I said, have you seen her? Hey? She'd only gone on a day trip with old folk to Lake Windermere. Oh, her that never, never goes, goes anywhere, anywhere yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got no tea and out. No, nowhere open. Put kettle on, will you, love? No, you put on, love. I've been working. Oh, you're an awkward swine. Well, I've had a good session behind the wheel. Oh, aye. Oh, once you've got it, you know you never lose no, it. No, I don't. But where are you going? Upstairs. What for? I don't want to go for it. I want to use the bathroom. The bathroom? Why don't you use the outside bog? Young lad like yourself running up and downstairs like a big soft girl. Use the outside bog. It, 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 it's more manly. Manly? Aye, oh, right. Look, if the lad wants to use the toilet and the bathroom, stop mithering him. It's not me mithering, it's you flaming mothering him. He's madder than every flame he was. Get using the outside bog. Give over. Look, you go upstairs, Curly. Right, well, I'm off then. Hey, don't you want a cup of tea? No, Where are you going? I'm out of the door. Do you know, he's going by me. He is. Use the outside toilet. Do you know what, Curly? If I got two doctors and a justice of the peace to come and see him one night, I could have him took away. Ah, oh, you wouldn't do that, would you? No, of course I wouldn't. Couldn't stand to go visit him in a place like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, don't stop it. I don't mind. No. It only works for an audience of one. Oh. Ken... I wasn't seeing things, I take it. That was you in the pub at lunchtime. Of course it was. Well, am I allowed to ask what you were doing? Why you turned round and walked out like that? Very simple. I didn't like the company you were in. In particular, Ted Lucas. The man who got me fired, if I have to remind you. You seem to like it, though. Oh, come on, Ken. I have to work for the man. No, you don't have to. You choose to work for him. Well, damn it, one of us has to work for somebody, because otherwise we can't pay the butcher's bill. Season part. And if you finish with the bathroom, I think I'll have a soak. Oh, well, um, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You see, you'll have to uh, 
empty the bath first, you see, because there's something in the bath. I didn't hey. put it there. Man. Um, it's not alive, is it? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. If anything was alive in there, it won't be now. I think it's called gunk. Gunk? Yeah, th they use it for getting rust and, and, and muck off things. You know, for, for treating metal parts. Wait till I get hold of him. I'll treat his parts. Right. Oh, it looks really great. Oh, will do when I finish it. Got more pieces I need. Can't really do any more till I match up with your existing stuff. Should be able to get what I need next week. Well, I'm really pleased with it. And you've worked ever so hard. Been a pleasure. Six o'clock, uh, you fancy a drink next door? Oh, uh, well, I'm expecting Tracy back any minute. Ah. Oh. Right. Thanks all the same. Another time, eh? Yeah, sure. Are you up to anything next weekend? I mean, you and Tracy, have, have you got any outings lined up? Ah, uh, no, no, I haven't. I suppose I should have, but I didn't really know what other people's plans were, and then it's on you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not doing much myself, and I was thinking, I'd really like to take you and Tracy out for the day, if she thinks she'd fancy it. Well, I think she would. Um, she's always saying we never go anywhere these days. Mind you, I don't drive, which makes it awkward. What about you? Well, I wouldn't say no to a day out. No, that'd be very nice. OK. Oh, what about Monday, then? Monday's fine. Let's hope it's a nice day. Will be. I've got a feeling. Well, I'm not cleaning it out. Oh, no. He'll clean that bath out. Don't you clean that bath, Curly, till he's cleaned it out. Don't worry, I won't. Ooh, it's a pig. Well, you might know it's where we're brought up. Brought up, dragged up. You see, they didn't have bathrooms in Butler Street when they were a lad. No, they had tin baths. Used to hang them on nail on outside wall. Hey, you here. Uh, you're the swine. Back to his filth. Get in here, you swine! Oh, my God! Go on. What do you, what, what do you think? Go on, go on, go on. Be honest. Oh, you, you're nearly giving me heart failure. Is it bondage gear? What are you talking about bondage gear, you burp? Bondage gear? It's been leathers, in it? For me bike. Got them dead reasonable, you know? Because they've been new, these. But the fella's widow, he... She had no use for them now. Never mind that. What about my bath? Oh, give all my that it's only 24 hours. But not for 24 minutes. You can get up them stairs and you can clean it out. No, I'm not cleaning no bath. That's woman's work. Right. Where's that old junk you call a biker? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm throwing it out. Oh, yes. I'm going to throw three pieces out a day till it's gone. Starting now! Don't talk so, Fear. I have a word, girlie, will That'll you? That'll do with me, mate. Fear, come back! Thanks, girls. I never would have managed without you. Well, that's all right. You can knock it off the rent if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been meaning to ask you about that. The rent. Oh! Now, get it! Get it! Will I have to fly? Get it! That's me bloody water pipe! Right, wait for the next bit. Wait for the next bit. Sorry, sorry about that. Yes, well, um, when we get round to setting your end, I'll knock you some atop for your neighbours. <laughs> Sixteen years, that's how long I've worked here. Oh, so many memories. Most of them happy ones, though. You've been the mainstay of this shop, Mavis. The calm in the eye of the hurricane, as it were. <laughs> And the upstairs flat. Oh, I mean, I love our new home, Derek, and I'm very happy in it, but... Oh, I'll never forget that upstairs flat, cos it was our first real home after we were married. But you have to look forward, Mavis. Onward and upward. Oh, yes, I know that, Derek, but, I mean, the older you get, the more there is to look back on, and the past becomes more important, not less. Mm, I think Shakespeare summed it up, Mavis, as he did so often. Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. Oh, pardon me. I'll go out with the again. 
Don't be silly, Reed. We were just, well, we were simply... Overcome with nostalgia. <laughs> I expect you feel the same way, don't you? Saying goodbye to this place. I could. I'm not going to. Come on, let's go for a drink. To the future. Just what I said to Mavis. <laughs> well, you go ahead. I'll lock up. Right. Did you see anybody today? Any contacts, I mean? Yes. One. Well? Anything going? No. Well, you're not even willing to talk to me. I'm going to bed. Because I don't need any more of this, and I'm tired. And, of course, you've got a very full day tomorrow in your demanding job, mingling with the likes of Ted Lucas. That's petty, Ken. Yes, well, no doubt it is, but when it comes to pettiness, your remark about who pays the butcher's bill takes some beat. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. You really don't need to rub my nose in it. I've said I'm sorry, but when you start talking as if I can pick and choose my job, hinting that I should walk out or, or tell Ted Lucas what I think of him, or rather what you think of him, well, it's not on, Ken. It's tough out there. Well, perhaps you've forgotten. I'm oh, sorry. It's petty again. You weren't working when I saw you. You were lunching with the man, boozing with him, to be precise. It's not easy to keep the job apart from the drinking, which you well know. Oh, for God's sake, Ken, will you stop trying to make me feel guilty? You can't put me on some sort of chain. It didn't do you any good with Deirdre, and it won't do you any good with me. It's a ritual, Maeve. Happens every bank holiday morning. All the peasants come out and crawl about on their hands and knees. You're in my front garden. Well spotted, Mavis. Well, if you've lost something, I think you could at least tell me. I have lost something, Maeve. Things have been callously chucked away by the cruel hand of woman. What things? Me dreams, me youth, Maeve. Well, you'll not find them in my garden. Yeah, well, they're not anywhere else. I've been up and down this flaming street. Are you feeling quite all right, Mr Duckworth? Maybe so. How would you feel if you've been on your hands and knees since 8 o'clock this morning? <laughs> What's that? The Holy Grail, Mavis. One more bit to go. <laughs> OK, yeah. Just a typical Coronation Street resident having a funny half hour. <laughs> Come out every full moon, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Come out every time the doors open. <laughs> well, you're all in high spirits. <laughs> out for the day, are you? We're going picking up Lindsay, then we're going to Altland Towers. Oh, that's lovely. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Cheers. Another one. Well, why not? <laughs> you have a girl with you. Well, I can't help it if I'm irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> What's she like? Is she pretty? Yeah, she's OK. Well, one of her heads is. Well, have you met her, Kim? <laughs> yep, she's got a white stick. Uh, <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Katie. Katie what? Oh, I don't know. Another lamb to the slaughter. Well, oh. I can't get up too much in eating pies, can I? I don't know. We used to, didn't we, Sam? Shut up, Kevin. Not with you two gooseberries, anyway. I don't know. These young kids today, no imagination whatsoever. <laughs> you right? Yeah. Kev? Oh, no, I know. I'll finish it dinner time. Make sure he does, Mark, cos I want some bank holiday. Yes, and so do I. I promise you. Eaton Park won't know what's it. it. See you later. Kevin, don't get greasy, will you? What's that? Does it look like a jambutty? It's a bike. Oh, come on, Vera, you're in her arm, they're in a box. I 
I've said I am not having that bike in this it house. It isn't in here. They're only bits. Yeah, but they're still covered in oil, aren't they? Go on, get it out. Come on. Come on, Vera, have heart, will you? Have heart. Well, when you put it in their bath, you won't see to... Vera, a motorbike was our youth. You can't ignore it, chuck it away. It was us. Do you know, if I took you to be seen to, they'd ask me why it'd taken so long. No, soul, not a bit. All I remember about being on that tin opener of a bike you had was getting off and my ankles covered in oil. My shoes were spoiled, my stockings... Right, Barry, you've said enough! Oh, come on, Mrs D, get your skates on. It's a major stock take today, you know. Yeah, and that's all I need, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a long, flaming day. It's going to be a long, flaming life and all. Here we are. Drumsticks, celery, cheeses various, garlic sausage for the vampires, tomatoes and... Ta-da! Antifreeze. <laughs> now, what else do we need? Uh, bread? Oh, quite right. A stuff of life. Sorry if the car breaks down. Use it as a spanner. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. I'm so glad we're going out. Yeah, me too. You know, I think this is half my problem, being cooped up in here. Well, it's not good for anyone, is it? Certainly not me. I'm sorry. We mustn't let it break us, Ken. No. Let's go before we get heavy. Got the corkscrew? Ah! Good thinking. What are you doing out there? Oh, I thought there was somebody left at the door, but there weren't. Oh, don't worry, love. When I catch you talking to trees, I'll find you good <laughs> home. No sign of duck egg. No. Oh, well, leave them glasses. They can do his show and he shows. Where have you been? Sorry, boss. I, I had a sick, sick pigeon. Perhaps you should change its oats, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well? Well, what? Is there a cog gone missing this morning or something? A cog? This is where you come to work, Jack. Or had it slipped your mouth? No, 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 boss. No, no, fit and ready. No. Look, far be it from me to interrupt your leisure time, Jack, but if you could manage to get a few ales up in the next month or two, I'm sure the punters would be very grateful. Oh, anything for you, Alec. Our next Sunday suit you. <laughs> Back down that cellar. Alec, we need a float in the till. What are you talking about? Bet's just done it. No, I uh, looked a minute ago and it was empty. Uh, I don't know about it's all here. Well, that's queer. I could have sworn it were empty. There's cogs missing all round this morning, it seems. I suppose next time I come in here, there'll be posters all over at wall and half a dozen students sleeping under the stairs. Hey, we hadn't thought of that one, had we, students? <laughs> there. <laughs> Listen, just leave the meters alone, that's all I ask. No gentlemen callers and no baths after ten. Look, you can do what you like. The only time I'll say out is when the neighbours complain. <laughs> well, it takes something to make more racky than the duck quests do. <laughs> True, but don't forget, you've got human beings on the other side. Don needs his sleep. <laughs> It isn't going to be one endless round of parties, you know. We do have some work to do. Yes, I know, love. I'm just saying. Have a thought. But talking of parties... Here we go. Well, yeah. it's not really a party. It's just no. that we thought we might invite a couple of friends around tonight. A couple? A couple of hundred more, like. No, just two. Didn't we, Flick? Just two? You don't have to ask, love. It's your house. Thanks, Rita. Just, um, be careful, though, eh? Right, well, I'll get this last lot across and then I'm done. Okay? Oh. Well, let me give you a hand. Oh, hand. no, don't be daft. It's only over the road, for heaven's sake. Right, I'll leave you. Ta ra, both of you. Bye. It's <laughs> ours! <laughs> Hey, listen to that, Bet. Is there any sound like it in the world? No one but you, Alec, could get excited over 25p for a bag of nuts. Yes, please, who's next? Flipping lagers off Jack quick before he finds out. We'll do it. Mr. Duck was behaving very strangely to you. Must be love. 82 <laughs> pence, please. Yes, I, I'll get it. No, please. No, I'll... I've got it there. There you are, T. Oh, well, I'll get the next. Well, I woke up this morning to find Jack Duckworth crawling about on my front lawn, peering into the grass. Well, I've been with Derek having to go to work. I was very concerned. Well, I think he's at a peculiar age. 18 pence, Mavis. Yes. And don't worry about Jack. With specs on, he's harmless. 
Do you know, I don't believe it. He promised me you were, didn't you? Well, will you calm down? He's just got his radiator to finish and then he's done. Yeah, but I know, Kev. It'll be the radiator and then it'll be the engine and then it'll be tea time. I'm phoning him. Look, what do you want to drink? You don't work Easter Mondays, why should I? Yeah, well, I'm just finishing, aren't I? I promised to take the wife out. Oh, wait a minute, can't you find anybody else? No, no one's mugging enough, are they? Yeah, all right. Where are you? I know it. Yep, all right, stay where you can. I'll be half an hour. Yeah, well, I'm glad you are. Sally won't be. Well? It's engaged. See, like I said, he's just finishing off. Yeah, don't put money on it. Did you get me a drink? I didn't know what you wanted, sorry. Tina, can you get us half a lager, please? Where is Kev? Oh, what do you think? Well, I know Jack owes him work today because I saw him come in. But what he's coming for is a mystery. One of these days, I'll go down that cellar and find his vaporizer. Well, we wondered if he was a bit under stress. Jacko doesn't get under stress, Mavis. Just everybody around him. Yes, lovey. Jenny? It's Rita. I I'm not phoning to check up on you. I was only phoning to make sure my phone's connected. Yeah. Well, they must have done it before weekend. Oh, it's lovely. It's not straight by any means, but I'm in no hurry. What about you? Have you painted walls yet? <laughs> well, I'm just going to have an hour or two on my own with my feet up, and I can't wait. All right, love. I'll see you. Ta-da. And you. Yes? I'm not having you on your own at a time like this. Al? Listen, there's a bottle of wine here and two glasses in case you have unpacked. Oh, well, it's very kind Come on, of let you. Me in. Uh, I'll, I've got a lot to do I'll this be afternoon. Doing better with a glass of wine inside you. Come on, open up. Well, only for a minute or two. Yeah, hey, I've even brought a corkscrew. Oh, how thoughtful of you. Pick your moments, don't you? I'm sorry, Kevin. It's really good of you to turn out. I do appreciate it, really. Yeah, I don't think Sally will. Well, I'm sorry. We were off on a day out, would you believe? Oh, so was we. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, uh, Wendy Crow's here, Kevin Webster. Hello. Hello. So it uh, just stalled, did it? Well, I'm breaking and it cut out. Won't start again. OK. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Flap on your camera, stuck open so it's flooded. Oh, see, see. Oh, uh, it's okay now. No, no, just bodged it with elastic band. It's well worn. You'll need a replacement cap. Oh, I can do it for you. Not till the end of the week. I see. Uh, is it an expensive job? Well, you're looking what? 130 for a new cab or so. Not labour 30 or 40. 40 pounds for coming out to you. Then there's VAT, of course. You're looking at what? 250 thereabouts. Plus, one or two things what I'll need replacing soon. Oh, God. Like I said, can't do it yet. But it's drivable. Bodged. Get you home if that's what you want. <sighs> what a total wreck of a day. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll take it home, Kevin. I'll have to think about this. Fine. All trouble and their worth, aren't they? Oh, flipping it. Kevin. It's my fault, Sally. I had a breakdown. We're supposed to be going out today. Yeah, well, it's all yours now. I'm just off. Yeah, but it's gone two o'clock oh, now. Okay, Sal, I'm coming. Look, I'll just put the air filter back on this. 
And I'll be with you, OK? Oh, yeah, great. You're with me and you're covered in muck. Honest, he made such a fuss about opening up instead of taking me out for the holiday. So then I come round, the shop shut, there's no sign of him. Well, I'm sorry, Audrey, I haven't seen him. Well, it was open this morning, because I bought a box of crisps for him. Twice what I should have paid and all. What are you doing? Uh, just checking mixers, boss. Do we need someone, do we? You've only just stocked up, Jack. I'm oh, a thirsty drinkers, these holiday bits. Look at the state of your hands. Ah, well, I've been, I've been working on the bike this morning, so it's a bit ingrained, sorry. You think to be seen behind a public bar looking like that. Get back down that cellar and get it cleaned out. And tonight you'll arrive presentable and not at all. Yes, boss. Ooh. Hey, hey, body to the cellar, Tina. Not my day, is it? Oh, penny for them. Oh. Tina, I was just wondering where a grocer might go when he's not grocery. Come on, let's finish bottle. I have a lot to do this afternoon, Alf. Well, one glass of wine won't hurt. I've had two already. Oh. Shouldn't you be opening up? That can wait. The important thing is to warm this flat. You're making a new start. Hey, I'm right pleased for your love. Thanks, so. Al. You know, I've always had a very soft spot for you. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. Well, that's very kind of you, Alf. And I don't want to say something I shouldn't, but... Uh, well, there's people, and there's special people. And you're one of the special ones, so remember that. I will, Alf. Come on, one last glass. No. That'll be Mavis. Well, I'll just fill your glass up. Alf, I said no. Oh. I meant it. Oh. oh. Hello, Audrey. Your front door wasn't shut properly, Rita. You want to look out for that? Come in. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Hello, Alfred. Hello, love. Uh, I was just leaving. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're not on a bed this time. <laughs> Haven't you found one yet, Rita? Look, we're not alone in that cell. I know, it's just that... Well, with you, I always feel as though the garage comes first. Look, I didn't know Ken Barlow was going to break down, did I? I know, Kev, I'm not blaming you. It's just that... Well, if you hadn't have gone in today, you wouldn't have been able to get hold of you, and we could have had a proper day out. Look, I had to work. You always have to work. Hey, so. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> you get your eyes off. <laughs> Makes you feel old, doesn't it? You all right? What do you mean? Well, I don't know. You just... You just seem a bit low. No, it's just that... I just wish... Well, I've said it all, really, haven't I? Okay? I'll tell you what. I promise you, a proper holiday this year. How about that, eh? Where's your fancy? I'll tell you what, could go abroad. No, I'm not bothered about holiday, Kev. I thought you was desperate. Well, I think we should get the house sorted out first. Why? What's wrong with it? Well, that bedroom needs doing upstairs, doesn't it? Yeah, well, there's no rush. No. But... So, why can't we have holiday? I don't think that we can afford both of them, Kev. Are you all right? I just want us to be happy. It's no crime in that, is there? Flake! Hiya. Hiya. I got everything except bread. I got crackers instead. Did you get candles? I certainly did. Who needs bread? Hey, I'm wrong, have they? No. Good. You must be coming then. Well, Tom is. Definitely. Oh, well then, I'm all right. I don't know what you're going to do. Sorry. You are going to have a nice evening in with Justin and his cold sore. Me and Tom? Well, I'll just leave that to your imagination. I'm very sorry, but I am not leaving Tom to my imagination. I hear Justin's a wonderful conversationalist. <laughs> I can't believe it's happened now. I just can't believe it. Ken, it's not the end of the world. It was all right for you, comfortably employed. £250 right now is the end of the world. It's impossible. I can help you. You damn well can't. One thing I don't intend to do, Wendy, is sponge off you. It's not sponging. Look, look Wendy, just... Just don't mention it again, OK? Can you pass the wine? Thanks. 
I'm going to have to sell the car. Oh, Ken. Can't afford it. Impressive, don't you think? 50 plus and can't even run a car. It's not your fault. I didn't say it was. Between the two of you, you cleaned me out. What? You cleaned me out. My wife has my house and everything I've ever owned, and you have my job. My sincere thanks to the pair of you. Come on, old soldier, let's have you inside and get that door shut. Now, take it easy, take it easy, these bones are fragile. Come on, Percy, you're not dead yet. I didn't say I was, I said take it easy. What Mr Sugden wants you to observe is that he's just out of plaster, Bet. Oh, I can see you're out of plaster, Percy, but just remember one thing. What? Emily's not your walking stick. No Rita tonight, Maeve? Uh, no, I think she'll be having a quiet evening on her own. First night in a new flat. Oh, know? that's not good enough. First night in a new flat? The world should be running with champagne. Oh, well, I think that sort of thing's going on in her old house with Jenny and a friend. Are they having a rave up, then? Mm, well, I don't think the world should be running with champagne. More likely canned beer and cider. <laughs> right, the sauce is done. Better take it off the gas, then. I have done. Stick it back on when they arrive and then I'll put the pasta on. Do loads. Can't stand it when there's not enough. Better not be late. It's five past already. They did say eight o'clock, didn't they? Yes, of course they did. If they don't turn up, I'll kill them. Do we have to have this on? Have what you want. Percy, love, uh, me and Mavis are taking Emily off. You OK? What's this about? We're off to Rita's. We can't have her stuck on her own. Well, there's a rave up going on in her old house. Well, it is her first night, after all. Uh, why can't I come? Oh, Percy, with them fragile bones, you'd never make it up the stairs. Oh, you'll be all right, won't you, Mr Sugden? Yes, of course he will. If you get stuck for a crutch, just shout for Ali. <laughs> Hello, goodbye, oh, Where are you going? Night school, Vera. Try. You shouldn't ask that, Dave. Oh, I just thought we could do something. With traces at Lindsay's for the night, we've got some time to ourselves for once. It's a shame not to... Exploit the fact. Well, um... <laughs> A cup of coffee at least, eh? Listen, you would be very welcome to come for a cup of coffee if Tracy wasn't at Lindsay's for the night. Right. Got the message. <laughs> Cracking day, though, wasn't it? Eh? Oh, it was smashing. Let's do it again sometime. There you go. <laughs> do you know something, Rita? If you got yourself a pair of binoculars, you could see right into Jenny's window from here. God <laughs> forbid. Hey, just think you could keep tabs on the place without stepping in front. Oh, oh bet. <laughs> what I can't see, I can't grieve over. <laughs> Only me. Well, it doesn't look very party over there. I thought you said there was a thrash on me. Well, I heard there was. Well, not a party, just a couple of friends. Oh, that sort of party. <laughs> Not boyfriend. Oh, Mavis, you're not that naive, surely. Explains why lights are out. Oh, doesn't it make you sick with worry, though? Mavis Jenny was on her own for months. Whatever she feels like doing, she was able to do well before tonight. <laughs> oh, more visitors. Oh, sounds as if the party's over here. <laughs> well, I hope they fetch their own fez, whoever it is. Oh, I'd be very worried if I was Reed. Hey, come on, Maeve, where's the arm? Oh, there is harm, Bet, you know there is. I mean, it can be very dangerous, especially nowadays. Tell us, Maeve, why do you automatically think sex means danger? I don't automatically, but you just have to bear it in mind. Yes, it's living with Derek that makes you think that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now look who's here. Oh, what are you two doing here? Roof's supposed to be rattling at your place. Oh, well, we'd half invited a couple of friends, but we yeah. won't really expect them to turn up, will we? Yeah. It's a relief, really, isn't it? Uh, we didn't really feel like entertaining. This is a nice flat, isn't it? It's nice. Well, sit yourselves down and I'll get you both a glass. Feeling better now, Mavis? Yeah, stop taking. Flipping murder. Do you want to see my feet? Never mind, Vera. Only another two days of it, eh? Oh, tack, Curly. Thought you'd have bought me a drink. Where's our Jack, anyway? Confined to the cellar. Do me a favour, Vera. Before you let that husband of yours out, hose him down in the yard. Why? He's unhygienic, that's why. 
came to work this afternoon covered in oil, and again this evening. Ah, oh, well, that's his bag. They should get shut of his flaming bag. Well, he has. What? Oh, I told him, I said, out. And where is it now? Well, I don't know, but it's not in our house. Oh, and dog house is here, Jack. Give him a shout, Tina. Tell him I'll buy him a pine. No, no, don't bother, Tina. I'll tell him. <laughs> I'm more than happy to oblige. Your wife's upstairs, Jack. There's a pint for you when you're ready. Right, boss, I'll be right up. You wastrel. Hey, turn it, face. What? Well, you know your name, then. Do you know, if you'd have spent as much time, care and attention on me as you have done on that flaming bike over the last fortnight, I would be a very satisfied woman, instead of being a bitter woman. So get rid today. Give us a bit more time, Bean. I'll have it like new, I will. You couldn't get that thing like new if it all trapped apart to help you. Today, or else you'll find a few more bits gone missing. I could. I know I could. There's only one way down to this beach, and that's down the road, ladder. so not many people use it, you see. It's like having your own desert island. It's like being Robinson Crusoe, only, uh, with no clothes on. Who's got no clothes on? Ugh, anyone who wants. Oh, forget that. This bloke reckons he practically lived on this beach, barbecued on it, even kipped on it a couple of nights, you know, lulled to sleep by the sound of the sultry surf. Kevin, you sound like a brochure. Mark's bringing them in this morning. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's keen as well, him and this, uh, Bird of the moment, I suppose. Oh, so that's who you want to see with no clothes on. I wish you'd show a bit more enthusiasm. This is a holiday we're talking about, you know, a holiday. Sun, sea, sand, surf, vino, wall-to-wall -wall pleasure and blow the expense. I'll see you dinner time. Oh, oh. Hello, Jack. Uh, you got a minute? Hi, hi. You know, Jack, you're an awfully lucky man. You know that. Am I? Mm. Are you sure you've not got me mixed up with somebody else? No, no, no. I mean, that bike you're working on. Velocet 200, and that's a very much mistake. Ah, you're right. 1954? 57. 57. Absolutely beautiful. You know, I really envy you, Jack. I really do. I mean, working on a machine like that, you know, restoring it to its former glory. Mm. That is what you're doing, isn't it? Of course it is. What else? You haven't seen Portsman, have you? There's something wrong with what you know can't be civil. I mean, what's it cost, eh? Civility. Yes, well, perhaps the whereabouts of the postman doesn't have the same significance for Mr Duckworth as it does for you. No, he'd be chatting that uh, woman up. He reckons he's his sister in Argyle Street. I bet her post is never late. You've been waiting for that letter about your accident compensation for long enough now for another five minutes to be neither here nor there, Mr Sugden. Go in and finish your breakfast. But I want the money in my hand, in the bank, not in his sack, it's losing interest. Yes, Mr Sultan. Jim, up if you see him, will you? Car keys. Car keys. Have you seen them, Ken? Hmm? My car keys, have you seen them? On top of the fridge. Oh, why didn't you say so? You saw I was looking for them. See you later. And good luck selling the car. If he turns out. Oh, for God's sake, Ken, of course he will. He told me on the phone he would. One o'clock, he said. And to be prompt, he had a prompt sort of voice. OK? Yeah. And stick to your price. It's easily worth £1,400. <laughs> Faults and all. Yes. I should have got young Kevin Webster to sell it for me. It'd probably be much better than I would. You are selling a perfectly good motor car. <laughs> you didn't hear Kevin's diagnosis. Well, don't sell it then. Let me tide you over until you're owning again. Oh, sell the damn car. He wouldn't take up much room. He'd hardly notice in this place. No, Jack. I'm sorry. Look, I, I could work on it in that corner. You wouldn't even know how we're here. Jack, this is a business, not a refuse for DIY maniacs. Could set a very dangerous friend letting blokes do their own mechanic in here. Pay your rent. How much? A couple of quid. It was a favour. Oh, come on, I've got nowhere else to take it. Tough. Thanks a bunch, pal. 
<sighs> Just see what'd happen, can't you, eh? He'd be borrowing tools, asking advice. We'd end up putting the flaming bike back together for him. I'm talking of borrowing tools. You what? My tools are keeping that clapped out car here. Dad's on the road. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. She's very sensitive to criticism, I'll have you know. Yeah. Well, we'll start charging you for the hire of him in future. Oh, well, look at it this way, Kev. If I didn't bother your tools, I'd have to ask you to look after the problems of my car, wouldn't I? And the chances are you'd find it much too complicated. So then, you know, your self-confidence as a tradesman will take a dive. I'm doing you a favour borrowing these tools. And there's borrowing spare parts as well. Oh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think I need a new clutch. Hey, Kev, this place is brilliant. Oh, yeah, it is. What's this, then? You're watching Wish You Were Here again, have you? Yeah, it's a building <laughs> Portugal we're going to. Me, Kev, Sal, and my current partner. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look, then. Oh, yeah, very nice, isn't it? Mmm. I oh, see it sleeps eight. Yep, a uh, pinch. You'd be wasting four beds, then, wouldn't you? Unless that is, you know. What? Well, me and Gail, the kids used them, right? <laughs> well, we could drive down there in my car with its new clutch and reline brakes. Get out of here, go Well, on. the offer's there, uh, mate. I mean, we're very good company on holiday, us. And think how many sandcastles you could build for them kids. <laughs> There's no chance of him and them kids. <laughs> no way. Well, I'm off on it, then. Oh, so am I. Oh, we've got a deal now, is persuade Sally. Well, what's up with her? <laughs> think she'd rather spend the money on a, a bedroom suite. A bedroom suite? Instead of a thrash in the sun? What is it with women, eh? <sighs> Just want putting straight on priorities. Leave her to me. Are you going to Skype down here all dinner or what? What do with you? I'm doing your work. That's what it's got to do with me. Well, why don't you just bog off? At least I have to do with women today, the better. Oh, God. Well? What? You've been telling Jacko to pull his finger out, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And? I got two fingers for me trouble. Well, as good as. See, that pint's worrying. <laughs> Jacko? What? Taking an early retirement, are we? I'm here, available for work. Ah, so is that bad top and you're just about as active. What are you sulking about? Do you know how old I am? You're going on 60. 55. Like I said, going on 60. 55-year-old fella, not allowed to have a flaming hobby. I thought you got loads of hobbies. Jiggery porkery, women, booze, oh, not that flaming back again. See, typical, isn't it? A typical woman's reaction. See, you see a lump of iron, don't you, when you, when you see that bike like our Vera. Me, I see something beautiful. Like a like a steam engine. Like the Royal Scot. I thought that were a lump of old iron as well. What I can't understand is you women reckon to be so flaming smart up to the minute, don't you? If it was up to you lot, we'd all be living in flaming caves. Sorted him, have you? Tina, will you go and earn for me, Cop? Where to? Rawcliffe's. Toy shop. Go and get him a flaming Meccano set of summit. How's Percy? Wow. That man's got a genius for finding something to grumble about. I doubt even Paradise would come up to scratch. Oh, what's he going on about now? Well, he's had no word about compensation for his accident. Gravely injured in the line of duty, as he's forever proclaiming. You'd think he'd know the wheels of bureaucracy grind slowly after being in the arm. Well, is he expecting a big fat check? Oh, well, what he's planning to do with it, like visiting all his old battlefields, I'm afraid he is. <laughs> By old battlefields, I presume he means his old cookhouses. <laughs> <laughs> What's it with you two? Come again? Well, the shirt and the horrible t shirt. Oh, we're just cool, baby, cool. Yeah, and with like two sandwiches, two plates of fried octopus. You mean two halves of bitter and two hot pots? You look ridiculous. Do you know that? You'll catch your death of cold. Men, daft as brushes. Yeah, don't suppose Sally's been in, has she? No, she probably saw you two coming in and ran for it. I mean, what's the idea? <laughs> All right, Jack. All right, Jim. Uh, pint lager, please, mate. Come on up, son. Yeah. I didn't have you down for a bike, man, Jacko. You've got to see me when I was a younger man. I burnt some rubber kid, I can tell you. Oh, did you have an AJS, then? Oh, I did that amongst many. Well, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? What is it? Restoring a bike, it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, well, it would be. <laughs> Dead easy. But I've had a few setbacks, haven't I? Most of them due to the wife. Oh, really? She's uh, not too sympathetic about motorbikes, then, She eh? is not sympathetic, full stop. I see. She wants me to get rid of it. Really? Ah, she's got no chance. Very important to me, that bike. See, I don't see just a lump of iron. When I look at it, I, I see a perfect machine. Yeah. Like the one I had when I was, when I was 20. And I'm going to be 20 again when I ride it. You know, that's just what I see when I look at her. Give up. No, I do, I. 
See, they don't know what it's all about, women, do they? I should no. I haven't got a clue. No. Well, better go and see how the wounded soldier's doing. He's probably on the telephone shouting at the post office. Well, if he does get a big fat check, you tell him there are lots of nice battlefields in the south of France, and you'd be only too happy to show them to him. Well, I couldn't be tempted to go to Arcadia with Mr. Sumter. <laughs> Not even first class. Bye. Bye-bye, love. Right, listen, Jack. I'm gonna say something very, very, very silly, all right? Oh. Well, I've been thinking. Yeah. Now, being as though you're having problems, which you obviously are, mainly down to the way. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, I could take the bike off oh, your hands. Oh, no way, Jim. I no. said it was silly, didn't I? I said it was silly. I'll give you a very good price, though, Jack. How much? Well, I'd need to have a closer look. Oh, it? naturally, yeah. You want to nip round this afternoon? I do, all right, fine. It doesn't mean I'm going to sell it, though. Listen, I'd be very, very surprised if you did, Jack. Well, is there anything wrong? I've been sacked from the job, Mrs. Bishop. Sacked? Fired as a crossing warden. He's from council. I thought it about my compensation, but it's not. It's a sack. But, but why? They say I'm too old to do the job. What are they talking about? I'm in the prime of life. Handles well, very well. Goes like the wind. You think so? Yeah. I can't get over this being your car, you know. I mean, when I saw the advert in the Gazette and rang, uh, uh, Wendy. Oh, yeah. I'm very sorry about all that, by the way. Anyway, I thought I'd be involved in some pretty sharp trading. <laughs> you know, buying a second-hand car. <laughs> and here I am, dealing with a mate. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want for it? Well, I was thinking in the region... I'll be that... honest with you. I have uh, checked in the book. The book? Yep, Glasses Guide. Oh. Well, I like to be well briefed. Well briefed, no grief. That's my motto. Is it? <laughs> yeah, so I'm afraid all I can offer you is... Uh, 1450. 1450? Well, I know there can't be much wrong with it. I mean, nothing serious anyway. I mean, if there was, you'd tell me, wouldn't you? Yes. Of course you would, and I think 1450 is a very fair price. Well... I'm sorry, Ken, I can't go any higher. Not even for a mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. 1450 it is, then. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Ken. Yeah, they're behind you. Man, you don't blame me for not recognising them. I think they've gone potty. What's going on? Ah, senorita, you want to come a ride in my fishing boat with me? They call them senoritas in Portugal. Oh, I don't feel the shell, yeah. Are you drunk or what? Just getting in the mood for sunny Portugal. Early. Yeah, well, you look stupid. Yeah, well, sit down and cop a load of this. <laughs> All right, stand up and cop a load, then. Top left. Villa floors. I wonder what floors means. Fun and frolic. It means flowers, actually. Oh. So what do you think? It's very nice. Do you think it's fantastic? Yeah, that beach I was telling you about is just across the road there. It's very nice. So? Shall I go and book it? You can have my money this afternoon. Really? No. I'd rather that you didn't care for that. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? Do you have to sound like it's flaming Eck all the time, you? Sorry. Because I think we should talk about this tonight. Might be booked up. It might. Sorry. I said we'll talk about this tonight and Kevin take those stupid glasses off. Well, you did a great job of talking her around, I don't think. Yeah, well, there's no way she's going to talk me into having a bedroom suite, that's for sure. Another sangria? Certainly, senor. Two more, please, Tina. <laughs> no, one sweet sherry not enough for you these days. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. There's something wrong. Oh, not with me, with Mr Sugden. Oh, uh, no compensation. Worse, he's been sacked. 
it. Oh, no. Yeah, I wonder if you could do some fishing for me and find out why they've suddenly decided he's too old. Yeah, I'm sure I could. Well, I mean, he was expecting a check. He gets his cards. He's devastated. I can imagine. So you haven't got any idea how long it's going to take to do it up, then? It's not a question of time, Andy. I mean, it's not a race against the clock. I don't care how long it takes. I just want to do a good job with it. <laughs> can you do a good job on that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, it's not my idea of a bike, is it? I mean, it's an accident. Well, if it was a Suzuki GSX 750, <sighs> well... Tell him, Jack. Tell him what? Tell him how beautiful she is. How beautiful she will be. She is poetry in motion. In motion, that. Oh, well, you can't imagine her as she will be, son. You see, I can't. Do you know, first time I saw her, I thought, there's a thoroughbred. You know? I, could, I could feel the wind in my face. I could, I could hear myself singing, coming over at last brew from Kendall, seeing late Windermere for the first time. Good luck with her, Jim. Treat her right. She's a lady. God, I thought he was going to start crying then. What's that thing doing there? Well, I bought it off Jack, didn't I? What do you want with a motorbike? Oh, no. Oh, very swish. I like it. Oh, thank you. Of course, you know everything's gone up to pay for it. <laughs> I believe it, no. <laughs> Taking on new stuff as well. Don't tell me you put poor old Mavis out to grass. Well, we just thought we'd give Rita an image to fit the 1990s sales unit. You see, Mavis is firmly fixed in the 50s. Mm. <laughs> no, Mavis is on a half day. And these two are here because they've nothing better to do. See, unemployed students, lowest form of life. Mm -hmm. Still on holiday, too. Well, well, what else? Where did I go wrong? Ah. See ya. Victor Arlo. That's the one I was telling you about. Gail Tilsley, the local cradle snatcher. <laughs> I expected her to be more glamorous somehow. Well, when she lacks in glamour, she makes up for with warmth. You know what I mean? Really? Tell me more. <laughs> Have you heard yourself? Do you know, you just sound like a couple of old biddies confabbing in a pub snug. Now, come on. Have you finished the papers? Yes. Well, if so, then you can deliver them. You didn't say anything about delivering. No one you asked us to. Oh, yeah. didn't. I'm sorry. I must have forgot. Only, you see, I'm short of two paper persons on your back. <sighs> You know how she can afford new premises, don't you? Yeah, she employs slave labour. This is true. I just hope nobody I know sees me with this bag. I just hope you shove them through letterbox. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye forever. <laughs> Do you know this curly character? You must have seen him around and once seen, never forgotten. And it was pure coincidence? Absolutely. And he bought it? Yes. For? 14 But that's more... He insisted. And you let him? Yes. Good. Very good. What's hope for you yet? Quite nippy, don't you think? Well, I don't write much to your driving. Why, what's wrong with it? Jerky, very jerky. Like you got kangaroo petrol in. Yeah. Ken's old car. Yeah, so I see. Look, look, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I just bought it. Why should I? No, I wish you luck with it. Never brought us much. Well, me anyway. Do try and eat something, Mr. Sugden. What's the point? My life's over. Chucked away like an old tin can. Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Sugden. Do you think I'm too old to be a crossing warden? No. No, I do what I mean. Why should I be too old now? I wasn't a fortnight since. I have no idea. Maybe some old council trying to find a job for a pal. Decided to grab mine while I'm crocked. Well, I'll not get away with it, or my name's not Percy Sugden. It's only me. Oh. Hello there. Oh. Yeah. Well, have you found anything out then? Yes. Oh, yes. 
I was right then, wasn't I? They've done this behind my back while I was out of action. Who they given me job to, eh? The chief executive's father-in-law. I, uh, I don't know who's got your job, Percy. I only know why you haven't. Right, well, come on. Out with it. You're not going to like this. Eh? Well, it seems that when you filled in your compensation form, you put your age down as 68. Well, you are 68, aren't Co you, Mr Sumter? Of course I am, yeah. yes. But when you got the job as crossing warden, you told them you were only 62. Presumably because you knew you wouldn't have got the job otherwise, being too close to retirement age for wardens. Mr. Sugden, did you tell a deliberate lie? No, not a lie, no. A white lie. I mean, I don't feel 68. I don't feel 65 either. You should be judged on how you feel, not on how old you are. It was still a deliberate lie, white or not. I'm, uh, I'm afraid there's another consequence. What? You're not likely to get any compensation for the accident. Eh? Hey? Well, you lied about your age, didn't you? So you probably weren't insured. Folly, noise and sin, Mr Sugden. I don't think we're folly, Mrs Bishop. Or a sin. Trying to do a useful job. It's better than sitting on your backside waiting for handouts. Any day of the week. Oh, dear. Do you want a drink, Jatlow? <laughs> Little whiskey. Oh, I wish I'd let him keep the flaming bike. At least he had a smile on his face. Well, there's no deeper and lasting relationship than the one between a man and his chosen machine, Vera. And to come between him and that machine, well, the consequences are as dangerous as splitting the atom. Right then, I'm going to take it for a spin. I'm going to rev up outside of mate's house. It's <laughs> in a bit. Ah, hello. I'm glad I bumped into you. Uh, that car outside your house, uh, it's mine. Uh, just in case you thought it was an intruder. It's not. It's mine. I just thought I'd put you in a picture. See you later. Strange boy. What was all that about? I don't know. I didn't yes, notice a car. <laughs> all right, Jack. Uh, pint and a half of lager, please, mate. All right. Oh, full marks, by the way. What for? That cleaning job you did on the bike. Oh, well, I worked hard on it. It was labour of love, you see. Well, it shows. It made my job a lot easier anyway, that's for sure. Well, oh, it's half the battle, isn't it? I hope we're not going to talk about motorbikes all night. No, I just want to ask them about the dynamo. Oh, but there was one other problem. What hey, Vera, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh. Making your husband get rid of that bike. Last thing I wanted was for Jim to buy a flaming motorbike, especially with two impressionable young lads in the house. Well, nobody forced him, sir. The bike, did he say? Did he say he bought it? According to Jim, he gave £150 for it. The lying little toad. I'm sorry I'm late, love. We got called out last minute. And then we break down on the way to it, didn't we? How embarrassing. <laughs> not spoiled, is it? No, no, it's just sausage and mash. Oh, great. I'm starving. There you are. Oh, cheers. Come here. Sorry about dinner time. It was a bit OTT, wasn't we? Wow, well, I'm sorry I lost my temper with you. Oh, well, we'll have a natter about it later on, eh? Way up a holiday against the bedroom suite. Now, I can't be further than that, can I? <laughs> So, what sort of day have you had? Well, it depends on how you look at it, really. Oh? Uh -huh. Why? What have you been doing? I've been confirming something. Uh -huh. Confirming what? I'm pregnant, Kev. Don't choke on that banger, will you? So, how sure are you? I've had two tests. I did one at home and then one at the doctor's. And it's positive, Kev. I'm pregnant. So, why didn't you tell me before? Well, I, I wanted to be sure and... You kept waiting on about this holiday. I didn't have a chance. That's why you wasn't keen. Well... I didn't want to spend him money that we might not be able to afford. Money that we're going to need to set this baby up. What are you thinking? I don't know. I suppose I can't believe it. What about you? Well, it'll to happen sooner or later, didn't it? And we always said that we would. 
Yeah, I know, but... I'm talking about it now. You don't see it from the same angle, do you? Oh, you make a good dad, Kev. We'll have at least two kids, Kev. It's planning, isn't it? The future. This is different. I didn't want to be old parents, did we, Kev? And the way we were going on, talking and planning it, we would have been 50 and then we would have been too old. What are you thinking? Just frightened. What about whether we're going to be able to cope or, or whether you want it? Responsibility. But you do want it, don't you, Kim? Oh, yeah. Of course I do. Of course I do. And I'm sorry about going on at dinner time. I want to done, you know, and I know. Shh, Kevin. Just tell me that you love me. I do. And tell me that you're the happiest man in the world. I am. Hey, and tell me you're still going to fancy me when I'm out here. I will. <laughs> Any idea what you get out of this then, Top Speed? Look, if you don't hold it steady, I can't get the threads. Come here, I'll do it. No, you won't at all. Look, if it gets any steadier than this, mate, you'll know I've died. Right. So come on, what's Top Speed then? <sighs> well, I don't know, but 120. Give her a take a bit. She's built the last, though. Andy! If you've got that stuff all over your clothes, you'll wash them yourself. That's what I told you. No, you didn't. Look, I was only helping out here. And we're only supposed to be going to your grand's. Oh, come on, we're on holiday. Your grand never talks about his school. Yeah, that's right. Look, do we have to go? I mean, can't I just stay here and help me dad with a bike? Can't I? No, you can't. And yes, we have to. Anyway, I thought you were coming with us. Well, well, if you want, well, but take you just to get the stuff off my hands. Skates on. Quick wash, hair combed. And put your faces straight. Oh. You know you've gotten bitten by the bag, bug, don't you? Andy's talking about getting a scrambler the minute he's 16. Well, at least it'll keep the power on the way from Alf Robert's shop, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? It'll put them in plaster, more like. Anyway, how long do you reckon it's all going to take? Well, it'll take a long time. See, needs a lot of money and, above all, a lot of affection. Oh, don't we all? Only I have to do a lot more than look pathetic. Oh, no, you know you don't mean that. Besides, she'll be a belter when she's done. And I'll take you on a wee trip down the south of Ireland, a camping tour, eh? <laughs> you and the chrome and I underneath the sun and watch her fly. Give over. What is it about this thing that turns grown men into whimpering romantics? Mm -hmm. You're getting as bad as Jack Duckworth. <laughs> Don't bust a gut, mate. See, women have got these hormones that turn them blind to the passion of a beautiful piece of machinery. Oh, yeah, and what would you know? You only sold it to Jim because you didn't know it sunk from its cylinder, eh? Anyway, I shall tell me, ma'am, you've caught a second childhood from the chap next door. I'll see you later. See ya. Well, come on, Jack. Climb over and give us a hand if you're uh, suffering from withdrawal symptoms, eh? Uh, no, thanks, mate. Our Vera's got me breakfast on. Anyway, I'm sticking to my life studies now. Scabby wing. <laughs> What's that? Where did you get that from? Yeah, you thought your jacket was safe under that bed, didn't you? Yeah, well, I'm just taking what's mine. Oh, Vera, that was my motorbike. Yes, that you got with the money you got from that clock that belonged to me. So that's one and a half at 50-50, that's 75 quid each. Hey, do you know, I think I'll go around Market Square before I go into work. Oh, your bacon's under grill, <laughs> show. <laughs> See ya. You know, Jack, I can't understand why you got rid of that bike. I mean, Ever since I've had my own wheels, I really understand what freedom's all about. No more walking Kimberley home. No more coming back from the Chinese with cold chop suey. No more paying your Vera to drive us to work very fast. No, you don't know what you're missing, mate. Any tips, Eddie? Well timed. 
Hey, you're spoiling me, you know. You'll have it written into his contract. I'm joking, at you. You've got away with murder this morning. Hey, he's right, you know. I don't know what you've been doing to him, but I got in late this morning and he never makes a peek. <laughs> I botched up a wing and said it's all right, he'll get sorted. <laughs> and he's been laughing to himself when he thinks I'm not lucky. Hey, three coffees, less lit. That's more like it. You're too much, Steve. Stop. Thanks, Ken. Hey, are you coming this afternoon to doctors with me? Well, I should have that job finished by dinner time, so it won't matter if I've sworn off for an hour or two. You don't have to. You don't. I mean, it's, oh, it's nothing heavy. It's just to register the pregnancy and then yeah. get a confinement certificate. But Kevin want you there. I want to be there. I have a lot of questions. What do you mean? Well, I want to find out how wide they've got to leave the bedroom window open so the stork can fly through. <laughs> hey, you best not. <laughs> if you do that and play around with Doctor, she'll think I'm right or right, dear. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can't feel it kicking, you know. That's because you're about five months too early. Yeah. Over here, son. On my head. <laughs> she's not a son and she's got more brains to be a footballer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you've been married too long for that. <laughs> 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 Go on, Kevin, before you pop. Mark, we've got something to tell you. What? We're having a footballer. I'm pregnant. Uh, we're pregnant. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Aren't you pleased? It's a disaster, isn't it? What about the holiday? Oh. <laughs> what do you mean it's hibernating? Well, exactly that. He's left his porridge to go cold, he won't drink his tea, and he won't come out of his room. Did you tell him I was coming? Uh, yes, I did. I hope I'll shift to. Percy? Percy? What? Rochdale's been invaded. Get your kit on. Oh, leave me alone. What's up? Bang a racing world turn you down because you wore your seatbelt? You what? Your face. Oh, I've just got a lot on my mind. At your age? Yeah, well, I've just lost a mate, haven't I? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, no, survive it. Just one minute, the man in the street. Next, English is his second language and he doesn't talk about anything else. Well, you know how it is. No, I don't, love. It's too early for crossword puzzles. I need another clue. Oh, I'm sworn to secrecy, so... Oh, thanks. Here's another. Everybody looks as if the end of the world's been announced. End of an era, Mavis, when Jack Duckworth's faith in human nature has finally been crushed. See, folk smile and say good morning now. I wonder what they're after. Tragic, isn't it? When did you not? When I didn't have our Vera screwing me into the ground for every flaming penny she can get. Curly Watts flashing his junior management wage packet. Do you know, they've both got cars now. I am the only Muggins that goes to work on foot. But you only work at the Rovers. Yes, well, I know I couldn't drive down to the Rovers, maybe, but opportunity might mean a lot to a lad my age. Well, I wouldn't be jealous if I was you. That car kills bought off Ken Barlow. Well, it's not the gem it's cracked up to be. What do you mean? Oh, it's a lovely car. I've seen it and I think it really suits Curly. Yeah? Well, Kev had it on the breakdown just a couple of days ago. What kind of breakdown? What's the point of staying in bed? I'm safe in my own company. That's the conclusion I've come to. Oh, surely you can't spend the rest of your days under the blankets, Mr Sugden. It's not healthy. What is healthy these days? Eat anything with an E in it and you die of cancer. Have a drink when you want to relax and you die of a liver. Want to do a job and you shove you on the scrap heap just because you're not what they call eligible. Mr Sugden, you lied about your age when you started on road safety. You can't entirely blame them for resenting that. I lie about my age all the time. Shall I tell you what I resent, Mrs Bishop? I resent them telling me when I'm fit enough to do a job. It's not fair. They reckon anybody over 60 is a cabbage. He's right, you know. I was turned down for voluntary work cos I'm on tablets. Well, who isn't? Well, surely you don't see work as the be-all and end-all. I mean, this is the only time in your life when you've got the freedom to do exactly what you want. I want to work. Oh, the way I see it, things aren't going to change. We've always had to fight for work, Percy. I've took war taught us a thing or two. Yeah, but we fought clean then. You've lost your bottle, you have. What are you talking about, woman? Well, you're gonna take it lying down, aren't you? What else can I do? Well, you can get dressed for the start. And show them that you're a fella that deserves a bob or two. And what good will that do me? Well, it'll look as if you're fit to fight. Fight? Well, we're not gonna leave it like this, are we, Percy? Oh, you're late! Oh, Audrey, hi. 
Uh, Alfie said you weren't feeling so good. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Oh, now I'm going to the doctor's, but, well, I'm not keeling over or anything. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear it, anyway. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I'll just have a wash and I'll be with you. Uh. Hi. Oh, you're going together then, are you? Yeah, Kev wants to come with me because uh, our doctor's really pushy, you see. Oh, I see. Um, it's not too... It's not this bug that's going around, is it? I mean, there's umpteen people down with it, I know of. What, stomach upset? No, no, it's just that's a normal flu. How upset? Well, you know. No. Look, Audrey. If I tell you, it's just between us. Oh, of course. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, I <didn't> know. <laughs> oh, lovely. I'm so happy for you. I was, after all this time, I bet you thought you were never going to get pregnant. No, no, I mean, actually, it's not planned. Oh, you'll be marvellous, honestly, both of you. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm not telling anybody. I've not told anyone. I'm only Kevin, telling you. Kevin, because... congratulations. Oh, <laughs> do you know, I can just see the two of you with a little one. Look, Audrey, we're not broadcasting this. It's just to mates. You know, I just want to make sure that everything's all right before I tell her. I'll tell you the best bit, shall I? The bit that I enjoyed most with our girl, it's when she was starting to crawl and she was picking up bits and pieces, honestly. Well, it's then you realise, you realise you've got a little person on your hands <laughs> and not just a, a spoon-fed robot. It's a brilliant age, honestly. I am delighted for both of you. Yeah, well, like Sally says, we want to keep it under our hats yet, you know, till we know everything's oh, okay. Trust me. <laughs> Mum's the word, eh? <laughs> 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 I'm told you end up, no. But we're talking life or death here, B. See, I thought he was just at his wing, but it's his breathing. It... He's more magpie than pigeon. Yeah, well, look at it up you. Look, just 20 quid to all the bets fees. But they are your pigeons and all, you know. You wouldn't see Eddie suffer, would you? You what if there were man Jack that had gone long since with this? All I'm saying is, with a bigger car, you're so much aware of the road. I mean, last night I took my car on the M62. Well, you should have seen it hugging oh, the no, bends. Mr. Watts, it's... Norman, talking to a bloke who has driven Daimlers. You've had a Daimler? Well, not me personally, no. So I used to do, uh, I used to taxi for a bloke in Bury who did weddings. It was like putting a bride into a private jet. Never mind about a way of the road, you used to have to check the ignition twice to see if the engine was running. They were that quiet. Well, why are you driving a Mini now, then? Economics. See, with an 850 engine, you've got 850 expenses. So can we stop talking about the wheel as if it's just been invented and get the stuff pork up and running, please? Not over impressed, was he? Hey? Mind you, that'll stick in his throat, you know, assistant, training, manager, bigger car. Could very well hold back promotion, Curly. Hmm. He could be jealous, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you be happy doing his job with an 850 engine? If I was honest, no, Curly. I mean, he's got a reputation to maintain. Mind you, if I were you, you see, I'd sweeten him and talk about his faults. Yeah. Faults? Yeah. Dodgy offside wing, needs a new clutch, carburetor's knackered. Well, what are you talking about? You mean Ken Barlow didn't tell you? Very good of you, Deirdre. Well, I just want Percy to know I'm on his side. I mean, it can't be easy feeling as if you've been ditched at that age, can it? Oh, it's hit him worse than I thought. So don't expect anything resembling gratitude. Mr. Sugden. I think we've got his circulation going again. You know, she's right. I'm ashamed at myself surrendering to that bottle crew down at road safety. Monty turned in his grave. Me and Mrs. Pierce were putting up a fight. Fight? What kind of fight? A protest. We're going to camp out on town hall steps. We're going to get Percy's job back. Oh, I'm not entirely sure. Is that sure. wise, Percy? I mean, I was just saying to Emily, I am on your side, but you draw too much attention to yourself and you don't stand a chance of winning your case. Mrs. Barlow, you'll be too young to remember Dunkirk, but we had more to lose than we had to gain. But we didn't let that stop us. Right, Mrs. Pierce, forward march. There you go, Kev. That was an education for you. Do you reckon you're going to help me through these antenatal classes or what? She wasn't exactly gentle, were you, was she? The way she was poking about. No, but Kev, I keep telling you at this 
stage of pregnancy, it's really difficult to spot the difference sometimes. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Have you both been sacked or what? Yeah, we both thought we'd try on employment for a day, you know, see what it felt like, well, just in case. Take no notice of him, Martin. Hey, what mm. shift are you on? I'm oh, just finished, aren't I? Do you fancy a drink, you and Gail, tonight? Well, that's easier said than done nowadays, isn't it? You know, with kids. It takes about a month to get a sitter. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll ask Gail, see how she feels. Hey, it'd be really nice if you could. Why? Well, that special at me, isn't it? Well, well, we're celebrating. The fact that we've both got jobs to go back to. <laughs> you imagine, you, mate. <laughs> Try not bringing him, mate, tonight. See you later, so man. Come on, see what I can do. <laughs> I've been trying to ring you. Me? Oh, the uh, service history record. I could have brought it with me if I thought. Uh, no, no, it's it's a Cavalier. Um, does it have any faults that we didn't discuss when I came round to buy it? No. Only uh, I heard that you had it into Kev's garage on a breakdown. And I also heard it wasn't exactly mint. It needs a lot of jobs doing to it. Is that is that true? Yes, but uh, you have to put things in perspective. Uh, well, how do you mean? Well, quite frankly, you didn't pay a mint price for it. In fact, you paid less than bottom book price, which reflects the fact that a car of that age is going to need a bit of mollycoddling. Yeah, but with respect, Mr Barlow, I paid just about all I could afford for that car, and you never mentioned any of this when we did the deal. Neither did you. And I'm sure you know that the common rule in these situations is bought as seen. Yeah, I know. Trouble, Mr Watts? No. No, no, Mr Holtzworth. Blue's up. Cheers, mate. Just put it down there. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. What? Well, the baby. I mean, I'm really chuffed if you are. Wasn't exactly on the calendar for this year, but I think I'll get used to the idea. So what do you want then? Ooh, a boy. Definite. Or a girl. I'm a bit jealous, really. I mean, what are you both? You and Sal. 24. You've got your own home. You're both in work. You're both happy. That's all some people want, innit? Hey, what happened to me and Sal happened by mistake? I don't want to go putting stupid ideas in your head about happy families and all that. Me and Sal had to wait a long time for this. What was it you were saying the other day about uh, being young, free and single? Yeah, maybe. I suppose me and Katie will manage in Portugal without yeah, you. Of course you will. I'm sure we'll get through. Of course you will. Basking on the beach, table full of San Miguel, seafood and factor one. I'm sure we'll manage. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at your paper bill the other day, Gail, and I thought, Ooh, it's more than usual. Well, Slap hands, I won't let it happen again. Oh, I didn't mean Oh, that. she has a way with her on debt, you know. I subcontract her out of an evening to loan shop. Yeah. Be all them comics and cartoon mags. Love for Martin, you know. Kids don't get a look in. No, I simply thought, well, that's not like Gail. Oh, never say it's not like our Gail. Hello, Mum. Do you know, I've spent a lifetime trying to discover what's not like our Gail. I wonder where you get that from. Yeah. What are you doing tonight, Mum? I am getting a video out and putting my feet up. Mm. You don't fancy doing that round our house, do you? Well, it's just that Pauline's busy and we wanted to go out for a drink with Kevin and Sally. Does it have to be tonight, Gail? Right, Audrey's had first refusal. If you're stuck, Gail, I'll come across and root through your cupboards. It's just that they're having a bit of a drink to celebrate. Oh, oh she's told you then, has she? Well, it's Martin that you invited, really. Honestly, here's me keeping my lips tightly buttoned up, but I think they'll make lovely parents, don't you, the two of them? You what? About time. When's it due? Do we know? No. I've done it again, haven't I? I, th I thought they'd said. No, they hadn't. I don't know. Steal oh, me. What on earth? Talk happened? about a caring society. They put it to shame, this lot. Wouldn't take a blind bit of notice, just stood there and watched us suffering silence, didn't they, first? They said oh. the dad was forcibly removed if we didn't end the picket. But it isn't raining. No, two yobbles started hosing down the monument, didn't oh. they? And there were pigeon muck oh. everywhere. That's why they wanted us to shift. Oh, dear, we did what they did. You know, I, I'm beginning to believe it's not worth it after 50. I really am. Oh, he's at it again. Listen, you can lose the battle and still win the war. But if you've any sense, either of you, you'll do it like the rest of civilised society and put it in a letter. 
No, that'll take forever. Well, whatever way you go about it, Mr Sugden, it won't be easy. But at least that way you'll make sure you live long enough to get a reply. Congratulations! We've got a mascot for the evening, eh? Like right. it? The drinks are on the house. They're better. Oh, yeah. that's very nice, nice Mark. Eh? We told you we were broadcasting this. I'm not guilty, honestly. Uh, a swim up, oh, sorry. Well, Gail sold me. My mum told me by accident she thought I knew already. Well, you should have done around here. We've only been here a couple of months and already Mavis Wilton knows we sleep without pyjamas and put the milk bottles on the table. <laughs> <laughs> too much, that. It's not as if you're living over Russia, is it? Right? So, little tiny thing. Did I say something wrong? Uh, I'll remember when I said it would have been. Best thing that ever happened to me. No, you didn't manage that on your own, did you? <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't turn my nose up at a third one. Oh, no. wouldn't you now? No, I mean, the twins are grown up, you know. I'll tell you the cutest thing about having babies is they're the only people that smile in the morning. <laughs> oh, our Jack smiles in the morning, don't you, love? <laughs> only now it's his teeth in a glass, you know, without him. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like, Mark? 500 quid to put it right. I mean, 500 quid. If you're lucky, girl. Do you know what? I could murder you, Mum. I just wanted to keep a low profile telling you everything were all right. Count on me, Mum, eh? Are you all right? Yeah. It's just a... No, Sally. No, I'm not. I didn't think you were. It didn't look so good when you walked in. Why don't you get Martin to run you on? Because I'll go around the bed if I spend another night in the house with him. Oh, dear, yeah, it's like that, is it? When are you due, Sally? Christmas week, I'll be in well. Well, I'm due the month after that. What? Must be something to put in the water, eh? And I'll not be telling me, ma'am. I want this strictly between you and me, all right? I'm sure we should be going around telling everybody, Kev. Why not? You're happy, aren't you? Yeah, but it's early days and things can happen. You don't say that. You're healthy and everything. I know, I'm just saying. I can see why Gail isn't going around telling everybody. I can't see why she's not telling Martin, though. I mean, it's his kid. Isn't it? Don't be daft, Kev. Of course it's his <laughs> kid. I've not said anything. I suppose he's just not sure how he's going to take it, that's hey. all. He's a big boy now, Martin. I know, but big boys don't like being tied down with little children, do they? Oh, give up. We've seen him and Nicky. We got on like house on fire. I know, but <clears throat> if he left, nobody would go, oh, and it's shocking, would they? I mean, he's still free in that way. Yeah, well, he doesn't want to leave, does he? I mean, not from what I can work out, anyway. Don't be dense, Kev. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's never going to. But he can, just like that. Because they're not married, are they? And I reckon Gail likes it that way, because then she's... Oh, he's practically tunnelled his way under that table. He likes it. I know, they both like it. Anyway, I wasn't supposed to say anything, not to anybody, not even you. So you don't know, remember? Sounds like we don't want to go, son. Thank you very much, Jack. No, you can tell, you know. Not even nearly there, is it? Do you want me to have a go for you? If it won't start for me, what makes you think it'll start for you? Oh, well, some folk have got a mechanical touch, you see, son, and, and some folk haven't, you know. Oh, aye. Well, I know it's camp you're in, then, after that pile of junk you brought home, thinly disguised as a bike. Junk? Junk, is it? You sit here in this can and call my bike flaming junk, right, right? Go on, let's hear it. Oh, please, Jack, not this morning. I'm not up to it. Junk, it may have been some, but I am not paying back a bank loan, am I? Hey, I made money on it. <laughs> Come on! Start, you stupid pig! One thousand four hundred and fifty quid! Right! Start! Or I'll kill you! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You'll flap the bat if you're not careful. Have you got no sense, Percy? Hey! 
You're an early bird, Phyllis. I've done all my messages. Hey, when I was a lass, you'll not believe it, but I was. And I had everything in the world to get up for in the morning. I used to sleep the clock room. And now they let me, I can't keep my eyes closed. Oh, well, that's heartening, Phyllis. At least I must still be young. Now, well, don't waste it. Get up early oh, in the morning. Are you taking notice of this, Alma? Are you talking about young uns? Is it right about young Sally Webster? Well, that depends on what you've heard, Phyllis. She's expecting. Well, that's what a little bird has told me. Would you know? I'm <laughs> so thrilled for her. Yes, well, it's nice, isn't it? She's thrilled, too. Hey, I'm the lot of the worry they did in the old days. My mother had seven, and that was all before penicillin. <laughs> they haven't half the worries now, have they? No, well, they know how to stop before they get to seven, Phyllis. Hey, I think families have gone too small. There's a feeling about a big family that's better than just one or two. Oh, well, I suppose you know once you can afford seven kids, you start to think what you can afford instead. <laughs> well, I hope Sally has a few. Because she's going to make a lovely little mother. I'm popping out for five minutes. Mm, that's me chattering. I've upset her again. You know he's got this motorbike. Bought it off Jack. No, I'm sorry. Anything you get off Jack Duckworth, you deserve everything you get. Oh, according to Jim, he's got a bargain. Oh, according to Alf, it's a load of junk. Oh, no. I mean, if Jim says he can do it up, he can. Mm. But why? Motorcycling. It's like smoking. If somebody were to invent it now, they'd never allow it. Lunacy. Yeah, I know. I've never seen the attraction of it myself. Well, if you were in our house, you'd see the attraction for a couple of lads. They've really got the idea in oh. their heads. <laughs> yeah. Morning. Thanks, Uh, 16, is it, that they can have one? The roads these days are no place for lads of 16 racing round on motorbikes. Do you know, it's funny. When you get too old to have a good time yourself, you want it all stopped by law. I've noticed this in the older persons. No, enough of the older persons. I remember motorbikes. I had my knees frozen many a time on a pillion. <laughs> <laughs> Sally? Yeah? Am I going blind or is there some turmeric round here? Turmeric? It's supposed to be all here. Oh, I don't even know what it looks like. What do you use it for? God knows. Never mind turmeric. I want a word. I don't know how many people you've mentioned it to yourself, but they're discussing your bit of news, the length and breadth of Rosamond Street. They're choosing names and deciding whether you should stop at two or not. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye, lovely. Thanks a lot. Hiya. Are you on the bar case yet? Yes, Chucky. Right, here, I want uh, two ham, two cheese and chutney. Uh, cheese and chutney. Oh, no, hang on. Uh, are they egg and crisps? Uh, well, yes, probably. Oh. Now, maybe you don't well, mind, well, but I would. Do you follow me? No, no, no. I'm sorry I told you, Sally. I shouldn't have done. I've only given you the job of keeping quiet, which you'd have done better if you hadn't known in the first place. I'm not a walking megaphone, not like some people that we know. Yes. Well, I'll be talking about my mother. Let it slip out there and I'll kill you. OK, well, there's things you don't have to tell me if you don't want. Nobody's going to find out from me. Nobody. End of discussion. All right, then? Yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot. It's a pity you weren't able to be with us from the start of play this morning, Mr. Watts. I'm sorry, Mr. Holdsworth. Well, how's the problem now, Mr. Watts? I'm not getting any better, I'm afraid, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. It must make things difficult for you. Well, the remedy's in my own hands, really. I mean, I, I should have joined the AA, but I never got round to it. I'm not a member. Do you think you ought to be? Yeah. Well, one of the other organisations. But this is the kind of thing that you think, nah, it won't happen to me. Well, you see, I didn't realise you had this problem. I think you should have told us before you were interviewed for the job. Ah, well, you see, I didn't have it then. Ah, well, that's what you think. But I do know something about it, because my father had a problem very much Mr. of this Holsworth. sort. Mr. Holsworth, telephone call for Mr. Holsworth. We'll talk about this later. I think it's a problem that the company must take an interest in. I'll tell you why, Mr. Sugden, because it's not the sort of thing I feel is appropriate for discussion in council. Why isn't it? Well, because it's not... Uh, an issue of policy or accountability, what it is, actually, is a complaint. It's not policy when you go chucking folk on scrap heap on account of this age or that age. Look, your complaint is that you've not been fairly treated, and, in fact, you have been. Once it came out that you were... well, that you'd not been quite candid about your age, you were treated in exactly the same way as everyone else would have been. Oh, I. So I'm supposed to have reached the age when I'm useless? No, you've reached the age when people retire. In line with council policy? Well, it's not peculiar to Weatherfield. Well, you said it had nothing to do with policy. Oh, Lord, spare me. Look, I said it's not a policy issue. And if I were to raise it as an issue, most people would probably say we need younger crossing wardens, not older ones. I'm sorry. 
Oh, hello. Come Hi, Eddie. In. Got some spare time today. We're all up on job. So I thought I could... Oh, hello. How do? Yeah, I thought I could get those cupboards just about finished off for you. You know, you're taking far too much trouble. You start a job, you got to finish it. My word, you were a Roman. For a Bill Rib, that's your motto. I've never known one yet that could finish your job. You remember uh, Walter Raleigh discovered the world was round? Well, Mr Sugden here discovered it wasn't quite perfectly round and he's been trying to get something done about it ever since, haven't you, Percy? Well, I'll not take up any more of your time. I'm sure you've got more important things to do. Oh, am I glad you came in. have had me pinned down all day. Oh, it's nice to be welcome. One way or another. <laughs> Hello there. Me again, I'm afraid. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you won't need three guesses why I'm here. Well, I'm afraid, as far as I'm concerned, we've exhausted the subject. Oh, I don't think we have, Mr Barlow. Not by a long chalk. I mean, I thought I was buying a decent car from a decent bloke. Now, I'm not quite sure which one I'm the most disappointed by. Oh, come on, you've got to see my point of view. No, as a matter of fact, I don't have to see your point of view. I'm under no obligation at all to see your point of view, but I'm getting cold standing here. Come in. <coughs> right, OK, well, uh, let's not take too long over this. What's your problem? I told you yesterday. Yes, I, and I told you the answer yesterday, and it's nothing different today. Well, your attitude might not have changed since yesterday, but mine certainly has. Oh? Well, I've talked to a few people, and the general feeling is, well, the law's on my side. Oh, the law. Yeah, but I don't want to start going to solicitors. I don't think it'd do you much good. Yeah, but I don't want to be left with a bill of 300 or 400 pounds. So you think it might be a good idea to throw another few hundred to some fat solicitor for the doubtful satisfaction of complaining about it? That's very sensible. You do that. Look, I bought that car in good faith and I paid you good money. Good money? You got a bargain. A bargain? It won't even start. Here's me paying off a bank loan and it's just sat there, useless. Look, you bought a second-hand car. It's got 52,000 miles on it. Now, I don't know how well up you are in cars, but in 52,000 miles, according to the experts, they wear out a bit. Surprising, I know, very shocking, very deplorable. But it's why second-hand ones are cheaper than new ones. I can do without the sarcasm, thank you very much. Well, you can choose between that and a kick at the backside, because that's all you'll get. What's the matter with you? Why are you behaving like this? Because I've had enough. Every way I turn, somebody wants something for nothing out of me. Get it out of Ken Barlow. Ken Barlow will play the white man. Ken Barlow will let you bleed him dry. Ken Barlow will just roll over like a decent chap. Well, Ken Barlow damn well won't! Look, I know you've had... Now, look, you can either walk out of here under your own steam or you can encourage me to throw you into the street and that will make my day! You've not heard the last of this. Oh, I'd better have heard the last of it. For your sake. Hey, it's starting to look really good, isn't it? Uh -huh. Nah, it won't look anything like a motorbike, though. Hey, listen, that's what a motorbike's supposed to look like, you know, not one of your Darth Vader specials. Oh, come on. Could you honestly see one of these things going, what, 140? Who's going to do 140? Me. Oh, why? So you could handle 140, could you, eh? Listen to him, Don. He's never even sat in a bike and he thinks he's better than Barry Sheen. No, oh, he just wants to look dead good, doesn't he? He just wants to look dead, full stop. <sighs> Andy, I wish you'd stop saying stupid things like that. I mean, I know you're just talking through your head, but your mother doesn't, she worries. You might have no imagination, but she sure does. Passes that spanner, Steve. You see, Andy, the thing about this thing is, it's British. And there's something very, very special about British bikes. You know, you're right. They're like dinosaurs. Extinct. Oh, come on. They're all right. These are the best. No, they're not. Look, if these are the best, why aren't they still making them now? Ah, uh, well, that's the mystery, Andy, lad. We used to build ships, all sorts. In fact, we used to make everything. And something happened. Ah, uh, you're right there. I mean, look at me now, don't. I'm earning me living repairing TVs and radios, yeah? When was the last time I ever repaired a British TV? Never. What about a British radio? Ah, uh, you never see them, do you? <laughs> yeah, right. So, that's why I come back here 
and put this little item together. It's to keep an idea alive before we entirely forget about it. You know, once upon a time, Britain used to make things and make pretty damn good things as well. Yeah, I still say it should be in a museum, though. And she's interested in pop music, clothes and boys. I'm not sure in which order. <laughs> Has she got a boyfriend? Oh, she's got a crush on the lad up the street, but I think he feels he's a bit old to be taking notice of her. Give it another year, a bit other way about. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd be a teenager, eh? Oh, I would. Yeah, had a great time. But nothing about you is right when you're a teenager. And I was thin, and I mean thin. I had to be careful crossing the road, you know. Not because of the traffic. I mean, if I stood sideways on, they hadn't got a chance of it in me. That was in case I walked out over a grid. I'd have been gone. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the skinny girl with the big specs. Ah, you should have gone in for modelling. You'd have done right well. Oh, but not knowing things, like what you were supposed to do. I mean, surely you must remember that. Ah, biggest problem there is cracking on as you do, now, isn't it? It's been the know-all that gets you in trouble. My husband used to say that. You know, when he was a student, he went out with girls, but he always had to pretend that he was being faithful to this other girl, and that way he never had to let on that he didn't have the foggiest idea what to do. He's a know-all. God, is he a know-all. Hey, what do you think? Oh, yes, very nice. Oh, practically there, I think. Hey, listen, have you had any dinner? I can't have you doing all this lot and starve to death. I'll go and get us a couple of pies from the pub. Hey, I'll take you to the pub if you like. Oh, no, thanks all the same. I'll go and fetch us a couple of pies. Oh, I'm easy. But we'll have to have a drink when job's finished. Tradition at trade. Look, can I just say, you're a nice bloke and I'm grateful to you, but... I'm sorry. I probably don't have to say any of this. I'll go and get the pies. Getting a dinner? No. I want to see Ken Barlow about the car. Didn't oh, I? Uh, getting a joy out of him, did you? There's no talking to him, Vera. Mm. Well, it's where you go about in. So if you've gone round there yelling and shouting and laying law down, you've got to do things differently. Oh, I see. I'll become the first graduate from the Vera Duckworth School of Diplomacy, will I? Yeah. I can't see there's many about. Well, just do as I say, not as I do. You got very aggressive, Vera. You know, it's really upset me as all this. Mm, Something bothering you, is it? Well, you know. Yeah, well, you've been sick with hunger. You've had nothing to eat. Look, I'll be sick through being out of a job if I don't get on, Mrs. D. Mr. Watts, Mr. Watts, can I have a word? Not now, Miss Taylor. Mr. Holdsworth really got his evil eye on me today. Yeah, but it's something I've got to say. Don't tell me. I can't wait. You can't see me anymore because you've met a lumberjack and you're emigrating. No. Well, good, but it's been that kind of day. Look, there's something in the story I think I ought to show you. I haven't got time for, uh, for, for chatty. I mean it. So do I. It's shop business. Somebody's been using the sink. Uh, Mrs. Duckworth. Hello, Mr. Oldsworth. <laughs> uh, normally, I would never discuss a manager with a member of staff, but the two of you are domiciled together, are you not? Uh, I suppose so. Well, you can be perfectly frank with me, and this is entirely confidential. Is there any reason why we should be concerned about Mr. Watt's health? And I'm thinking of a particular reason. I don't know. Uh, I think it might be because he's not eating as much as uh, I would, you know. Not eating, eh? Well, they are like that, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah, well, just lately. He's had a lot to contend with just lately. Mm. And you think this has turned him into uh, an imbiber? What? No, you did quite the right thing there, Miss Taylor, bringing that to my attention. It is against the rules, though, isn't it? Well, someone having a wash and a shave in the sink may be against Mr. Holdsworth's rules, but it's not exactly a crime now, is it? No, but it is if he finds it and says you should have spotted it first. Yeah, too true. But on the other hand, I don't think we'll go rushing to Mr. Holdsworth on this one. I think this is just about the size of problem I can deal with all on my own. This car? Yeah, his car. Well, what's all this business about being sick? Well, he was sick. But then his car won't start. What's that got to do with it? Yeah, he was sick. That's what I'm saying, but this will be fun. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Watts? You were late this morning. Why was that again? Uh, I couldn't get my car to start, Mr. Holdsworth. Well, what was all this business about being bilious? I, I was bilious. But one excuse is quite sufficient, Mr. Watts. More than one is, a, is an embarrassment of riches. And do you have a drink problem? A drink for me? No, certainly not, Mr. Holdsworth. Have you been pulling my leg, Mr. Watts? No, Mr. Holdsworth. Well, I hope not, because strong drink is something I don't take lightly. I'm more than well acquainted with the misery it can cause. Cool. Well, uh, did you tell him about the sink? No, no, no. I think he's gone mad. I think the whole world's gone mad. What did you think when you knew? 
What do you mean, what did I think? I thought, I'm pregnant. All right, how did you feel then? <laughs> well, do you feel different? Not a lot. I mean, it's hard to say. Oh, do you, though? Go on, tell me. Well, I don't feel different, really. I mean, I'm not sick or anything yet, but I feel different knowing. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm asking you. Well, you'll have to try it, that's all I can say. Are you happy? Terrific. You're dead lucky. <laughs> See ya. See you, Tina. Hiya. Hi, right, Don. Hi, mate. <sighs> right then. What do you want me to do about the kids? Uh, they're around at our place, that bit's giving them the tea. Oh, right, Sam. Cheers. Well, shall I bring them round here then, or what? I could do with an hour to get this place straight. Well, shall I leave them at Ivy's, take them straight home? As you like. Well, it's up to you. Well, don't bother then. Just get yourself home. I'll pick them up later. Well, I'm only trying to be helpful. Then make things simple instead of complicating everything. Either pick them up or don't, but just do it, eh? I mean, don't be forever asking things. Mm. So you've had a bad day then, have you? By right, the sound of it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> when Ivy's tired of them, shall I take them out ourselves and kids? No. Well, why not? Well, you know. Sally. Ah, oh, no, don't start complicating things. I'm telling you just like you want. Anyway, it's a good practice for her. And you can practice your sweetest smile mm -hmm. for when I get back home. Come on. I'll run you around. OK. Ta -da. Tonight, we must raise a glass in honour of the day. Day's that, person. You don't know what day it is. St George's Day, isn't it? Marvellous. An Irishman telling you an Englishman St George's Day. I should know that. I'm the fellow who lives with the dragon. Anything you swing, don't you, Audrey? How do you mean, swing? Well, you know, mercurial, I mean, one minute you're right up there, next minute it's the end of the world. Oh, well, that's typical Leo, that. Oh. No, I just wonder if that's where she got it from, your Gail. I mean, she's up and down like Lewis's lift at the moment, her moods, you know. Well, Gail's not mercurial, well, she's Aries. Huh? Well, that's got nothing to do with it. What you're saying is she's unpredictable, right? Yes, that's what I was saying. You don't know from one minute to the next whether she's going to lick your hand or bite your head off, right? No, well, that's it, isn't it? Well, I don't know anything about this uh, Aries dude, but I know a woman when you're describing one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another? Or are we moving on? You know, some women are perfectly stable, totally reliable, and far too long suffering for their own good, like me. I shall have another gin and tonic and we'll go on with good and ready. All uh, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah, well, you make yourself heard, I'll say that, thumping and banging and shaking walls all day. Hello. What you two been up to then, eh? Oh, Dave's been putting some cabinets up in the kitchen for me. I'm sorry if it's been bothering you, Percy. Hey, that husband of yours is a rat crook, you know that, don't you? Why tell me, Vera? That carrot's old curl is a rat pile of old junk, as well he knew when he sold it. You're quite right, Vera. By law, I am still married to Ken Barlow, but I've long since been divorced from his flipping car, all right? Oh, sir. Exactly, uh, Pally. Some of your neighbours? Here in the war, they were wonderful. Another blitz would do them all the world of good. Well, didn't take you long, did it, eh? Dave has been putting some cabinets up in the kitchen. <laughs> Hero or handyman? Don't know what your secret is, son, but uh, I wish I had it. Hey, listen, why don't you stop and have some tea with No, us? I want to sell. We've got to go. It's only beef burgers. It's easy. Oh, I'll Sal. beef burgers. I can eat 200. Well, you've already had your tea. So that's 199 you've got to go, but you can't have them here. I'm oh. hungry. Well, you have to starve, won't you? You're mean. You're mean. You're mean. Come on, then. We'll go and see what your man's got for the supper. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yay. Yeah. All right. Martin, see you later. Uh, see you how's Gail been? What do you mean, how's she been? I mean, is she OK? Yeah, she's all right. Well, she's sort of under the weather a bit at the moment, you know. Well, is she? Well, she don't take enough time off work, I keep telling her. No, well, it's running the cafe and she's got two kids. Ah, oh, kids are no bother. Hey, hey, hey. We can cope with another one of you any time, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Do you fancy that, eh? A kid brother to boss around? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of these days I might just talk Gail into it, you know. <laughs> then we can join you, you never know. In fact, uh, we should work on ourselves. <laughs> See you later. Good See you, Kevin. Bye. So long. See ya. God, I thought he knew then for a minute. So did I. But he doesn't, does he? Doesn't know. Oh, I'd love kids, wouldn't he? You can see it's written all over his face. Oh, yeah. Can't Gail see it? I mean, what's she up to? I mean, what's she getting all worked up about? Well, we don't know, do we, Kev? We're on the outside looking in. We don't know. You know what I reckon? I reckon if she's not going to tell him, 
Somebody's got to. Don't. Don't you dare. I swore to Gail I'd not tell this to anybody. There's only me supposed to know. Forgot I'd told you. Oh, well, I must be a nobody. So, therefore, it's down to you to tell a minute. Go on, you've got to. Do them both a favour. All quiet. Yeah, nothing I couldn't handle. Can't you give us any idea? Well, not till I've had a proper look at it. I'm judging by what was wrong with it before he brought in. I'm sorry, mate, it's going to cost you. Well, come on, if you want a lift. It's all right if you're late, but I get my wages done, don't I? All right, I'm coming, Vera. But keep it as low as you can, eh? Still not be cheap. Still beats me why you didn't get one of us to look at it before you bought it. Cos I didn't have Ken Barlow down as a crook before, did I? Well, you can hardly blame the lad, can you? If I was buying a car and it packed up on me, I wouldn't exactly be over the moon. <sighs> All right, it needed money spending on it, but he bought it at the right price. So, just forget it, all right? Look, I've got a couple of meetings this morning, but I should be clear by about 12. You can take me out for lunch. That'll give you something else to think about. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. You've got to get out, Ken. It's doing you no good at all sitting in here brooding all day. I'll pick you up about half twelve and be ready. I've got Pats. Oh, Tar, love. So, what will he bring round today, do you reckon? What? Dave. Oh, nothing, he's finished. He'll think of summer. He didn't have to bring round them things for covers, did he? But he did. It was just an excuse. Excuse? To see you. It's obvious, isn't it? Look, Dave's been very good to us, and there's no way I could have tackled that lot in there on my own. You must like him. You went for a drink with him, didn't you? Only to say thank you for what he's done for us, and that's all there was to it. I told you he's finished here. Still, he'll think of some up. Yeah, and I reckon it's time you got moving. Go on, school. I'm going. Look, if you don't like him, I think you should tell him before he redecorates the whole house. Right, is that the lot? Yeah, for now, yeah. Four ninety-two, please. Should you be standing behind the till all day long, woman in your condition? Oh, don't you start. If Kevin had his way, he'd wrap me in cotton wool and make me stop at home and hibernate till right. this baby's born. Hi, Roderick. Oh, Tom. Now, Sally, when Alfie gets back from the cash and carry, tell him I've had to nip into town, so he'll have to get his own dinner. Right, Uncle. Oh, that makes two of us. Huh? Yeah, Ivy's out in town and all. There ought to be a society for the protection of neglected husbands. Oh, neglected Alfie? <laughs> you must be joking. See ya. Bye. Hey, um, tell me, hang on a minute. What? Uh, have you seen much of Martin lately? Martin? Mm. Uh, yeah, I saw him at cafe the other day with kids. Why? Now, how did he seem to you? Seem? Mm. Well, him and Gail, you know, were they all right with each other? Well, now you come to mention it, they were a bit snappy. Yeah, well, Gail was. I mean, Martin looks as though he couldn't do out right, poor lad. Well, what are you getting at? What's up? Uh, that's what I'd like to know. You ask me, there is somewhat definitely up. Hasn't Ivy noticed out? Well, she hasn't seen a lot of them lately, has she? Well, you better warn her to tread carefully, cos we don't want to make things any worse than they are already. All right, well, thanks for warning. See ya. All right, then. Bye. Bye. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, Audrey. Mm. Well, I'm not. Look, I'm not the only one that's noticed it. Alma has an all. When it comes to spotting crumbling relationships, Alma is world champion. Yes, Percy? Well, if you can manage it without snapping my head off, I'd like a cup of tea and a toasted tea cake, please. I think I can manage that, yes. Oh, well, that's summer. I suppose it'd be too much to expect an apology. Apology? Yes, for the way I was spoken to in here yesterday. Yes, you're right. Hey? Well, you were hoping for too much. We all have off days, Percy. <laughs> you're telling me. Look at me. Chucked on the scrap heap of life at my age. If anybody's got reason for snapping heads off, it's me. But some of us have more self control than others. Yes, Percy. Something, Percy. Wait, one arsy go two, Percy. Some top. Yeah, I'm just wondering what you get for battering a pension at the death with a butter tea cake. Hey, listen, you wouldn't have got away with that yesterday. Well, that was yesterday. Oh, what has happened since yesterday? I reckon I've got one or two things sorted. Yeah. Do you know, if something's bothering you, there are times when it can help just to talk, you know. Well, this isn't one of them. All right? There's nothing to talk about. See to Percy's tea cake, will you? Mrs. Dodds, good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Holdsworth. 
Where have you been hiding all morning? Me? Hiding? What nonsense. You've been avoiding me, haven't you? Whatever makes you think that? You haven't? Oh, no. Well, I, I, I'm delighted to see you. Oh. oh, well, I'm very pleased to hear it. Because I think you and me ought to have a little chat. That looks better, Mrs. Duckworth. <laughs> Mrs. Duckworth, how many times do I have to tell you? What? The stock with the longest sell-by date goes at the back. That way we get rid of the older stock first. Oh, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I just can't get you on that car out of my mind. It'll not get away with it, you know. All right, all right, let it drop. Let it drop? Nobody puts one over on Duckworth and gets away with it. I'm not a Duckworth. You're being as good as aren't you, by adoption. Do us a favour, will you? Forget about Kimball. Forget about the car and just concentrate on your job. Otherwise, you won't have one for very much longer. Not with the mood that Holdsworth's in this morning. All right. Mr. Watts, could I have a word? Yes, Miss Taylor, what is it now? Well, there's something I've just found in stock room. What? A sleeping bag. A sleeping bag? Yeah, it was stu stuck in one of them cupboards next at wash basin. And there are a couple of blankets in there and all. I reckon someone's sleeping in there. Sleeping? In there? Yeah, well, it looks like that to me after what I found yesterday and all. I think you'd better tell Mr Holdsworth. Thank you, Miss Taylor. I'm quite capable of making my own decisions, you know. Uh, Mr Holdsworth? Uh, not now, Mr Watts. Uh, there's something I think you ought to know about. Not now. It's about the storeroom. Do you want an interdepartmental memo in writing in triplicate with a copy to the head office? I can't be bothered with the trivia of the stock room. I've got more than enough on my plate, as you can see. You are supposed to be the, the assistant manager, and I would have thought more than capable of dealing with it. Yes, Mr Holdsworth. Well, then deal with it! I thought you were stopping out to your dinner. Yeah, I was, but I got fed up with trekking round shops, and Marge has been going on about her feet like a non-stop gramophone record. I thought, I can't go through all that this afternoon. Yes, Don, love. Uh, I'll have a juice for me, what you right, I'll have a lager, please. Uh, I'll have a lager, a couple of hot pots. OK, look. No. Hey, uh, listen, what were all this about Gail and Martin now? Oh, yeah, I'll do the same. She reckons there's something up between. I wonder if you'd notice that. Like what? Well, I don't know, do I? She reckons things are all they should be there. And it would explain why Gail was so sharp with Martin in Kathy yesterday. You don't look surprised. Do you expect me to be? You know what I thought about them two getting together in the first place. Uh, I mean, I'm not worried, though, Doc. No, no, I love her, no. It's less than Gail, needs after all she's been through, isn't it? It's not Gail I'm thinking about. It's them kiddies. Yeah. How much, do you say? Well, I reckon he's looking at 300 plus. 300 pounds? Mm. Poor Curly. Poor sucker. Oh, come on, Jack, it weren't all Curly's fault. If there'd have been one bloke I'd have trusted down here, it'd have been Ken Barlow. <laughs> Reckon a bloke who can do that to his wife and nipper is capable of doing anything. Aye. Oh, what does she want? I don't think I need three guesses. Hang on a minute. I've got something to say to you. We're off to lunch, Vera. Oh, yeah? Well, it's all right for them that's got something to go to lunch in, isn't it? Not like some I could name. Look. I didn't set out to put one on, Curly, believe me. You didn't, really. And you can keep out of it. You knew that cow would have it when you sold it to him. I knew there were certain things that needed attention, but that was reflected in the price. Well, why didn't you say something to Curly, then? Instead of letting him think you were getting a bargain. He trusted you, more fool him. He should have known better a fella like you. Oh, hang on a minute. you better explain that. Leave it, Wendy. Uh, I'll explain, love, yeah. He's left his wife, and not She trusted him. And his daughter trusted him. And where did it get them, eh? Come on, Ken. We don't have to stop here and listen to this. Look, Vera, I'm sorry, but as far as I'm concerned, the matter is closed. Get in, Ken. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's not. You might think you're very smart, you. Putting one over on Curly. It's not him you've got to put up with now, is it? No, it's me. And I'm warning you, I don't give up that easily. No. You want a fight? You've got one. <laughs> Kev? What? Oh, Curly, mate. I thought that boss of yours kept your chain to your bacon slicer at dinner time. Yeah. Did you get that estimate done? Uh, yeah, I did. Mm. That's what I reckon you're looking at. 370 quid? Plus that. Oh, come on, Kev. Sorry, mate, that's the best I can do. And 
He's cut to the bone at that. Yeah, he's right, mate. My old fellow would have a fit if he knew what we're charging you for labour. So, you want us to make a start on it? Yeah, I've no choice, have I? if you fancy a coffee. Uh, no, no thanks. No, I'm not stopping. No, I was just passing the end of the street. I thought I'd call in. Oh, I thought you'd finished here. Yeah, 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 I have. Uh... No, it's, uh, it's nothing to do with the job. It's, well, it's just that I was wondering, um, if you fancy going out somewhere tonight. You know, meal or something. Wh whatever you fancy, I'm easy. I just thought if you'd nothing else fixed up, well, you know. Mm. You know, over £400 you reckon it'll cost him. I mean, what kind of person would pull that sort of stroke on somebody as honest and as trusting as Mr. Watts? The kind of person who is no higher than a snake's belly, in my opinion, and he's not going to get away with it. Oh, no way. Before I finish with him, I'll let the old road know what a rat that Wendy Crows is shacked up with. You'd have to go there every day and shout it from the rooftop. Chips. You know, Mrs. Duckworth certainly doesn't do things by art, does she? I just wish Mrs. Duckworth would get on with her life and let me get on with mine. I mean, if Mr. Holdsworth heard any of all this... He's not said any more about that stock room, has he? Well, he was quite adamant that I dealt with it. Good. Good? That's right. I mean, if you're going to deal with it, I'll know you'll get to the bottom of it. This is your big chance to show Mr. Holdsworth what you're really made of and have every faith in you, Mr. Watts. Oh, hi. Is it that time already? Yeah, what's for tea? I'm starving. Um, I'm not really giving it a lot of thought. There's some of Auntie Emily's sponge cake in the kitchen if you want something to be going on with. Ta. Uh, you're not going to leave that lot there, I hope? I'm not. You have a good day? Yeah, you. I did have a visitor. Oh? Dave. What did he bring this time? New plug for the sink? Oh, I didn't bring anything. Looks as if you were right. He came to ask me out tonight. I told you. So where are you going then? I'm not going anywhere. You didn't say no. Well, I mean, how can I? I'm up to my eyes in council work. I've got a pile of iron in a mile high. That's not the reason, is it? Not the real reason. <sighs> Look, love. After what I've been through, what we've both been through, the last thing I need right now is to get involved with another bloke. Mum, he asked you out. He didn't ask you to marry him. Tracy, you just don't understand. No, I don't. I don't understand why he said no. Well, it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. But you've been thinking about it ever since, haven't you? Well... So ring him up. Tell him you can make it. He'll only keep asking you till you do say yeah. Hi. Gail? Hi, Vic. All right. Yes, yeah, fine, thanks. Do you, is it? Uh, no, I'm not stopping. As a matter of fact, I've come to offer my services. Oh? Maybe sit in. Seems ages since I did, any for you. I thought it might give Audrey a break. Audrey? Well, she seems to have done more than a fair share lately. Well, she hasn't, as it happens. We haven't been going out much lately. Oh? Well, it's not easy with the hours Martin's working, but... Uh, well, as it happens, he is off tonight, so if the offer's still open... Yeah, of course it is. It will be all right with Martin, I take it. Why shouldn't it be? Well, you might not fancy going out. I fancy going out. All right. Right. What time do you want me? About 8.30. Okay, I'll see you then. See you. Thanks. <laughs> Search me. Here we are. One tea. Nothing extra for the personal service. Oh, cheers. You've saved me life. I am worn out after ploughing round that supermarket. Hey, listen, don't let Alf Roberts know. He'll have one of his turns if he knows you've been shopping there. Oh, well, that's his problem. I save pounds in there. Hey, listen, has your uh, husband settled in all right with his new job? Oh, yeah, he seems to have. I think he still misses the army. Mm. Only natural, I suppose. It has been the biggest part of his life. Yeah, what, what exactly is it that he does? He fixes tillies. He's very good at it and all, but he's always been good with his hands. Yes, I've known a few fellas like that myself. <laughs> I was thinking, this catering exhibition they're having down in Birmingham. Well, what about it? I was thinking I might take a look. You what? You can manage it. Yes, but, I mean, why? I mean, you've never been to one before. 
Well, then, it's about <laughs> time we did, all right? I'll see you, and uh, what if I reckon it's a waste of time? You're not going. I am. Well, how do I look? I think that black dress suits you better. You look a real knockout in that. I don't want to look a real knockout. We're only going out for a meal. I'll go. No, you won't. You get on with your own work. Hi, come in. Fit? Yeah, just about. I'm just going to find me earring. Hi, Tracy. Hi, yes, so where are you going then? Tracy? I'm only asking. Any road, wherever it is, I hope you enjoy yourselves. I'm sure we'll do our best. Shall I nip a tell Auntie Emily you're off? Yeah, go on. Well, uh, Tracy doesn't seem to have any objections. No. I'm glad you changed your mind. Saved me having to cancel the table. Right, right. Then go on. Son. You're a dark horse. You never told me you were a pro. Well, I played a fair bit in my time. Huh? Mind you, there's not a lot else to do in a sergeant's man. Mm. Darts, cards, snooker. You got paid for that, then, did you? Well, I wasn't playing all the time, you know. I thought about joining the army once, you know. No, oh, it's a grand life. I never regretted it anyway. Mm. Life's not your own, though, is it really? Oh, <laughs> why? It's, uh, it's yours, your own now, then, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, life's what you make of it, kid, and don't you forget it. Mm. Mugs away, then. Go on. Okay. Well, 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 he seems happy enough now. Jim. Oh, yeah. I think he's beginning to realise that civilian life isn't all that bad. Though he'd be the last to admit it. So we never mention it. Some things are best left unsaid, don't you think? Yes, I do. You could have got it going, you know. It was just a matter of time. I mean, you can't rebuild a bike like that in just five minutes. Only some folk wouldn't have it. Because some folk were fed up to the back tea, the boiling sprockets and gaskets for breakfast, dinner and tea. And it still looked like an explosion in a junkyard when I got rid of it. Beats me what I wanted a motorbike for in the first place. Have you got no romance in your soul, girl? Romance? The only time I've ever been on a motorbike, it was blowing a gale and chucking it down. My skirt ended up round my navel. I was like a drowned rat when I landed. Where's the romance in that? Well, it's a symbol, isn't it? A symbol of power and virility. <laughs> I'll take more than a motorbike to do for you, I can tell you. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Uh, I'll have a five, please, Tina, then, so. I'll have uh, a bit of lemon, please, Tina. Yeah, you do right, love. You don't nip for coming into World K, lad, do you? How are you feeling? Oh, I can't describe it, honest, I can't. Do you know, I reckon it's the best feeling in the world, knowing that you've got a whole new life growing inside you.
Stop where you are and don't try anything. We've got the place surrounded. Mr. Holdsworth! No way. Ooh! Yes! Flaming lucky pig! Hey, talk about luck in the Irish. Hey, we made luck in the Irish. Pure skill, that is. Skill, you. smell. So, uh, that makes it your round again, then, doesn't it? Yeah, go on, then. <laughs> well, Set him up again, please, Jack. Right. Hey, Webby, show him how it's done on that dark board. What, you? me? Hey, yeah. what about a game of doubles? You and me, Sal, I'll take one of the cleaners. <laughs> No, thanks, Tim. I'm going to take the weight off the feet. Oh, you do that, mate. Hey, Come on, then, Liz. You'll play us a game. You'll throw a good dart, don't you? How's that for appreciation? Married over 15 years, and all they can say is my favourite. I throw a good dart. I'll leave mine in the pocket. Yeah, I will. I know you wish you'd never told me, but you did. And ever since, I've done nothing but think about it. Do you want another drink? No, thanks, I'm fine. Gail, just listen to me. Sally, I don't want to talk about it. I know you mean well. Anyway, I've been getting up at six o'clock in the morning and going down to that cafe in the precinct to get me breakfast and turning up as normal. But why did Mrs Holdsworth chuck you out in the first place? Well, she found out about it, didn't she? Found out? Yeah. About me and Rennet. Mrs Dodd. Oh, I wish I'd never set eyes on that wretched woman. But I thought all that between you and Mrs Dodds was over months ago. Well, I wanted to finish it, didn't I? Really, I did. But the damn woman, she wouldn't let me alone. Now what it's led to, eh? Reduced to this. Me. One of the brightest stars in the Better by Galaxy. What's going to become a Norm? You're going to have to mention this to Martin sometime, you know. I won't have to tell him anything. Gail, this is a baby. It's not a boil on the bum that you can keep covered till it goes away. I won't have to tell him. Because I'm not going to have it. Uh, You're going to get rid of it. Have an abortion without even mentioning this, do you? That's right, so you can save your breath, Sally. I've made my mind up. I've made the arrangements all right. That's it. Let's just drop it, eh? Birmingham? Yeah, there's a trade exhibition there hmm? all this week. We've been thinking about getting a new heating cabinet and one or two other things, so. I thought I'd go down and take a look. Start eating, Nicky, or I'll take that away from you. What, are you staying over, then? Just for one night, hmm? yeah, but I've asked my mum to look after the kids so you can come and go as you please. Hmm? Right, I warned you. Oh, Mum! Eat! Well, I wish you'd have told me. I could have come with you, couldn't I? Well, it's all a bit last minute-ish. Only heard about it yesterday. Oh, I can change my shift. What time are you setting off? I haven't worked out the train times. Well, yet. you won't need no train times if I'm coming. I can drive us there. Yes, Michael, come. Yeah, of course you can. And then there's Sarah. You're into catering equipment as well, aren't you? What? Yeah. So we can all go. Family outing. In fact, we could hire a coach. So who else wants to come? No. I'm going. Nobody else. All right, Gail. Look, there's no need to look so worried. We're just having a laugh with you. You go by yourself. If you don't want to look after the kids, I'll look after them. Thank you. Right. See you, fellas. See ya. See ya. Bye, Mum. We went out for a very nice meal. Where? A place called the Fenny Arms, which you don't know, so there's no use pretending you do. Then he brought me back here, and that was it. What time did he bring you back? Oh, about 10 o'clock. 11. Has the urge to come in? <laughs> so why ask? So you going out with him, then? Well, he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of yours, too, so... Mum, you know what I mean. Questions like that aren't as easy to answer when you're 34 as they are when you're 13. I don't see why not. Well, all right then. No, I'm not going out with him. Now, isn't it time you got moving? So you won't be seeing him again then? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he took me out for a meal, so it's only polite that I do something in return. He's coming round here tonight, as a matter of fact. But you're not going out with him? No! Hey! I've just been in that storeroom. Yeah? 
There's still some decamping out in there, you know. Sleeping bag, radio, flashlight. They're all stuffed away into a corner. But you can tell they've been moved since yesterday. Well, it's all to do with us, is it? You're so curly. Let him worry about it. I know, but has he not said anything to you about who he thinks it could be? No. He hasn't said it to me, either. I can't believe how hard them sugar bags can get after a few hours. It's like sleeping on concrete. I suppose the danger would be if the staff were to discover that you've... <laughs> that wouldn't do at all, would it? Oh, dear. Uh, dry fruit. Come on, let's get round here. No, something's got to be done. Steps have got to be taken. I mean, let's analyse the situation. You find the root cause. I'm, I'm sleeping in the stock room. Why am I sleeping in the stock room? Because your wife threw you out. Yeah, and why did she do that? Well, she we stand out about you? Yeah, because of my liaison with Mrs Dodds. Yes. <sighs> So it seemed that the root cause is? Mrs. Dodds. Mrs. Dodds, yeah. Remove her, and we're halfway through getting through the situation, aren't we? Remove her? You stay here. I've got something to do in the office. Carry on. Right. <clears throat> Mrs. And you don't mind having the kids, oh, just for one night? Of course we'll have the kids. Now, you're going to a what exhibition? A trade fair. Catering equipment. Mm, rather you than me. You leave an hour to run the cafe on oh, our own. Well, just for a day and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I think an hour and a half would be about her limit. Oh, yeah, but you don't mind having the kids? Oh, lovely. We love having the kids. And Alfie will love having the kids. He doesn't know it yet, though. Oh, well, thanks, Mum. I haven't worked out the times of the train, so I'll give you a ring later. Oh, OK, right? of course. Any time. You know that. Oh. Ah, oh, I come to pay you what I owe you for turning in and fixing the car. Oh, yeah. I've uh, done a bill somewhere. So, Curly's having everything done then, is he? No choice, has he? And uh, you, like everybody else, you think I should be paying for it? As long as somebody pays. Don't bother me. I mean, he buys a seven-year-old car, quarter of the original cost. If you bought a seven-year-old car, would you expect it to be perfect? Well, not perfect, no, but I'd expect to be able to drive it. Yeah, well, suppose I sold it for less than it was worth, then found out, went around asking him for more money. You think I'd get it? Well, don't suppose you would. No. Still, it's given a lot of people a chance to put the knife in, hasn't it? I bet Curly's surprised to find just how many friends he's got all of a sudden. Oh, there you go. I'll do. Thanks. Cheers. What's it, uh, what's it all going to come to? Won't be changed out of 400. I promise you that. Expensive toys, aren't they? Still, you and me are straight now, anyway. Yeah, it's true. And there aren't many people I can say that to just at the moment. Yes. I'm telling you, Dom, I am getting proper housebound. Don't be daft. Look, pack the bits and lights out. Right. Look. look, just this morning I found myself thinking I'll wash that sweater out, I'll do a bit of hoovering, and then that'll occupy me nicely till dinner time. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong, Don, is I used to do all that in half an hour and then go out and do a full day's work. Now it's all I've got to think about. I'll end up in that state where we don't want to go outside his own front door. All right, then. I'll come for a drink on my own. Um, Hello, Audrey Love. Hi, Tom. Hi, there. It's my shout. What are you having, love? Oh, gin and tonic. Thank gin you very much. Well, listen, what do you call it when you don't want to go outside your own front door? Thank you, Pop. Agrophobia. Yes. Oh, well done, love. You'd win the prize if there was one going. Well, my auntie suffered from it. She won't go out. Not even for my uncle's funeral. But you're not like girls. Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks Jack. Thank you, thank you no, I think the worst time is after tea, when you'd normally settle down for a chat about today. Well, if there's nobody to chat to. This is a little girl. Yeah, but I don't want to put too much on her shoulders. I'm frightened of making her old before her time. Well, you won't do that with me, love. Alan Baldred did there. <laughs> anyway, if ever you want to talk, let me know. I'll be there, Oh, love. thank you. A catering equipment exhibition in Birmingham. <laughs> Doesn't sound a lot of laughs to me, but that's where she's going. Well, what's happening to kiddies then? Oh, they're coming to our house. Oh, we'd love to have them, won't we, Dad? Well, of course we would, but if uh, girls... I can dog... manage, I think. You don't have to worry. Well, it's just that here I am, we know what to do. I had a jumped at chance of having them. Right, just an update of what we are talking about earlier. Mrs Dodds. Ah. The root cause. Hmm? Right, now then. What does a store detective most need to operate successfully? Good eyesight. Ah, well, no doubt that helps. But what I had in mind was anonymity. Ah. See, it's no use being known to every shoplifter that steps through them doors. Mrs Dodds has been with us for quite a long time, long enough for her face to be known all around here, which is why I have been on the phone to head office to see if a little redeployment might not be in order. The upshot, which is, Mrs. Dodds is being transferred to our Bolton branch immediately. Ah, well, congratulations. Well, I do think it's uh, 
It's a great thing. Gives a chance for new starts all round. And uh, how is Mrs Dodds taking all this? Do you know, I think you're going to make a very fine manager one day, Mr Watts. Oh, thank you. It's very nice of you to say so. Yes. And when you do, I hope you look back on this training that I've been giving you as, well, adequate? No. More than adequate. <laughs> you see, because sometimes, as part of your training, I like to step aside, let you feel what it's like to, to have the authority, the power to give work and take work away. Ah, uh, well, Mr Holdsworth. Now, I bet... I've got to be out this afternoon, so this is one of those occasions when I like to say, there you are, Mr Watts. The throne is all yours. Yes, but about Mrs Dots. Now, there shouldn't be any problems. It should be easy enough to handle. Uh, have you told Mrs Dots? Norman, would I be helping your career in the long run if I made the training easy, removed all the obstacles from your path? You haven't told Mrs Dots, have you? I was going to, and then I thought, no, no. You see, to me, it would just be a routine chore, but to you, it will be a learning process. Now, get stuck in. You'll be all right. I'll catch you later. <clears throat> Yeah, because I bumped into your mother this dinner time. She's told me about your plans for going away. For one night, Ivy. Well, you've asked her to tap kiddies and all, which perhaps I wasn't supposed to find out about, oh, I don't know. Oh, Ivy! Well, it was round at your house the other night, wasn't it? It wasn't even mentioned it then. It was because you were babysitting the other night that I didn't ask you twice on the run. So I asked me ma'am instead. Well, your mother's got shop, hasn't she? And one thing and another's me, and I'm sat with time on my Ivy, hands. Ivy, I don't want to argue over this. I've not come to argue. Then what have you come for? I've come to remind you that I'm here for those kiddies whenever I'm needed. Not a second best, either. For when your mother decides she's had enough, well, she wants to go off boozy. Oh, do you, do you think this trip is really worth it? And what's that supposed well, to mean? Well, it seems to be causing now, but problems is nothing if you really need to go. Oh, don't I? You know, if you want my well, honest I opinion... Because I'm not going to no trade exhibition. I'm not going to Birmingham. I'm going to Liverpool, to an abortion clinic. That's why I have to go! <laughs> Doctor says it's no more than six or seven weeks, so medically it's straightforward. And Martin doesn't even know you're pregnant. Not a clue. Well, well, he'd think it was wonderful. <laughs> it's not that I don't think he'd stand by me or anything like that. Well, he'd think it was marvellous. He loves kids. But you don't want another one. No. Not with them two at the age they are. But mostly, I don't want Martin to think he can never leave me. That somehow I've trapped him for the rest of his life. I thought you said he'd welcome the <laughs> idea. Well, he would now. He'd be passing out cigars and all the rest of it. <laughs> Five years. Ten years. When he's still a young man and I'm passing middle-aged. I know folk don't think I'm even aware of how old he is. But of course I am. And I don't want him tied to me forever. Because we have a baby. And, uh, and you're going in overnight? Yes. Operations the following morning. Yeah, I did it that way when I had mine. Oh, that was quite a while ago now, in different circumstances to yours. I mean, I didn't have any children. <laughs> Trouble was, I didn't have much of a husband either, and uh, I think, uh, I think I was frightened, basically. How did you feel afterwards? Relieved. A bit guilty, but um, mostly relieved. Ah, now then, Mrs Dodds. Mr Holmes was not here. Uh, no, no, he's had to go out this afternoon. I've stepped in. Oh, I see. So, what is it then? Well, I'm sure you'll agree that anonymity is the most important attribute to any store detective. How do you mean? Well, we don't want them knowing who you are. Well, it can be useful. They see me and they know not to try it on. Well, yes, well, and there is that. If they know me, odds are I know them, mm. which is what I'm paid for. Yes, well, to get to the point... It would be nice. Well, we, that is the company, have decided on some staffing changes. The main one being that uh, you are to be transferred to our Bolton branch. Really? And whose bright idea was this, might I ask? Head office, I think. Dear. Well, I'm sure that Mr Holdsworth will be very sorry to lose you. Will he now? I must say, I'm beginning to wonder. Well, thank you. That's all for now. 
I'm not an old sock, you know, to be cast aside when I've served my purpose. Mind, I'm talking to the monkey, aren't I? It's the organ grinder I want. Well, I'm sure there's no need for... After all he said to me, all he's promised me. Well, you can tell your precious Mr. Holdsworth that if he thinks he can hide away and get an underling to do his dirty work for him, then he's even less of a man than I took him for. And if he thinks I'm going to quietly pack my bags and disappear off to Bolton, then he's a fool as well. I promised I wouldn't tell you this, but... You're going to. You know Gail's pregnant as well? Yes, you have said something. Yeah, well, what I haven't said, because I didn't even know myself until last night. And, Kevin, you haven't got to say a word about this to anyone, you haven't. No? She's not having it. She's having it terminated. Hey? And I think it's going to be tomorrow. She came in the shop saying about how she was going away somewhere, and when I asked her where she was going, she went all cagey about it. Flipping it. I suppose they must have the reasons. It's not a decision you do lightly, is it? Yeah, well, I don't think Martin has his reasons. I don't even think Martin knows about it. Gail hasn't even told Martin she's pregnant yet. She's Never got meant... to! Well... Well, she can't do a thing like that without telling him. It says as well, you know, it's not just hers. Kevin, don't shout at me! Yeah, what's she gonna do when he finds out later today, when it's too late? What's she gonna think then? Yeah, well, he's never gonna know, is he? Yeah. Nobody's gonna ever tell him. I think it's diabolical. Oh, God, I wish I'd never told you about it now. <sighs> never mind me! It's Martin, he's the one you should be telling. One down, one to go. Not yet. I didn't say yet. She's never going to game of football. You know, I regret saying that, see? Well, Martin! OK, go on then. You go out and get warmed up for two minutes, OK? Two minutes. All right. <laughs> ah. So, what time are you off to Birmingham tomorrow then? I'm setting off early afternoon. Mm, Cos I'm working. Otherwise, you'd love me to be going, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, you can't. I'll can't, sir. Only, I had a word with one of the lads down at work today. And don't get too excited when I tell you this, but I've got the next two days off, which means the kids can go to Audrey's and I can go with you. Martin, it's not a holiday. Oh, come on, it could be. It's a trade exhibition. You'd be bored to death. Hey, yeah, just use your imagination, will you? Just tell everybody I'm your secretary and you can go round as if you're some high-flying executive. Look, I just fancy a bit of time on my own, all right? I know that's not very nice, but I just fancy it, all right? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the magic's wearing off, really, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, don't say that, Martin, please. <laughs> I just fancy getting on a train on my own. Mm. No kids. I just fancy a bit of time on my own. Don't make a big thing out of it, please. No. Mm. OK. You go by yourself, then. Thank you. Mm. Can't keep the crowns waiting, can I? Right, what are you having, Vera? Um, I'll have a lager. Right, half yeah. a lager, a pint of bitter, and whatever you want, Jack. You're a good little lad, Curly. Hey, yeah, uh, what happened with Rena Jobs this afternoon? It's on order to office, so when she come out, she will have a, a kind word for the cat. Ah, oh, well, it's no secret. Everyone will know sooner or later. She's being transferred to uh, a Bolton brand. <laughs> Well, she's not too happy about it, I tell you that. Yeah, tell me about it. I was the one who had to tell her. Burdens of high office, eh, Curly? Hey, yeah, you know her husband's an ex Royal Marine. Goes round punching folk if she tells him to. No. Oh, ah, she's always talking about him, a right nutcase by all accounts. The company will pay your medical expenses, though, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, darling. What you want? Half. Half a lager. Half a lager, please, too. You haven't even got the oil off your hands. Look at it. Oh, look, it'll wear off. Anyway, I told you, once I get this bike done, she'll be a real cracker. I knew I should have taken my nan's advice. She said there are two sorts of blokes, them that have hobbies and them that make money. Oh, well, she's probably right. Anyway, you made the wrong choice, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do better next time. Oh, here. Hey, 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 come back. You're a million miles away. Oh, it's just a bit of the past came back and surprised me. Well, whatever it is, it was in the past. Can't touch it, can it? That's what I thought. <laughs>
Drei. Drei. Da-da! Oh, you shouldn't have. Uh, pinched him out of someone's garden. <laughs> Come on, through. So. Evening, young lady. Hiya. Right, I'll go and have a bath and then go straight to bed. You're welcome to stay if you like. I know, I just feel like an early night, that's all. Night. Night, love. Good night. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go and put these in water. She uh, doesn't mind me coming round here, does she? Only she seemed to be getting out of my way like. Yeah, that's what she wants you to think. She was asking me this morning if we were going out together. What did you say? I just told her not to ask such daft questions. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> look who's showing us first now. Uh... Hey, Hello. I've, uh, I've just been to your house, but... Yeah, well, we're not there now, we? It's this car business. Look, I don't want it dragging on. Anymore. Well, you know what to do, don't you? All right, get your wallet out. Look, uh, can we talk about this quietly? Why? Why don't you want us to hear what you're going to say? You stop here, girl. You want witnesses to this. Yes, you do. That's Look, for God's sake, can you just keep out of this? I want to talk to him. You, I do not want to talk to, and I most certainly don't want to listen. Hey, have you heard this? I have. Take my glasses, Tina. Look, no. Do you want to talk about this car, or do you want these two loudmouths to do your talking for you? Loudmouths? Hey, outside you. Let's see you say Jack, that outside. Jack, come on. Stupid. Yeah, he thinks he's clever, him. Yeah, clever enough to leave his wife and his child. That's how clever he is. I beg your pardon. But you heard! Oh, you've got to say, you've got to say to me now. Come on. Anyone serving here? Are you monopolising the place? Don't you start. I'll start any time I like where you're concerned. Look, just keep out of there. Just Look, you sold him a lot of junk. You're really you enjoying this, aren't you? Hey! As a matter of fact, no. I am. Look, this <laughs> oh. 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 Come here, you. Come here. Leave it out, all right? Just leave it. All right. I never started it, did I? No, I'll vouch for that. Started it? You started everything. All right, come on. Come on. Leave it, you. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I've never kissed a counsellor before. I was beginning to think you never would. I'm all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're not taking your football, right? Oh, Grand and Elsa, we can have a kick about in the garden. Look, I'm going away for one night. The last thing I want to be worried about is broken windows, let alone heart attacks. So another time, right? And she's a spoil sport, isn't she? Poor old Elsa's not had a good broken window since last Christmas, has he? Yes. Hey. Well, not tonight. Come on, you get your coat on. There's a good go. girl. You go and help her. Come on. Right. Orders received and understood. Number one, Nicky to school. Number two, Sarah Louise plus overnight bag to Pauline's. Number three, me to work. Number four, if you're a good girl, I'll pick you up in my lunch hour, take you to the station. Now, how's that for organisation? Thanks. But uh, I promised Armour I'd work lunchtime. All right, I promised I didn't offer. No. Are you all right, Judge? Yes. Place? Fine. Have you got a phone number in Birmingham? I'll give you a ring tonight. No, I haven't. All right. There's always director inquiries. Where are you staying? I haven't fixed anywhere yet. I'll do it when I get to the exhibition. So I'll ring you, right? All right. Come on, you two. I'm going to give your mum a big hug. Come on, give your mum a big hug. She's coming away. 
I'm all right then, kids. Yourself. Come on. In fact, Nikki, just hang on for a minute on the porch, will you? <sighs> Don't I get one? Look, Martin, nothing's changed between us. I promise. Okay. As long as you don't make a bit of it, eh? What? Well, you know, want to leave me and the kids. Do I've been worried sick. It looks worse than it is. I've been awake half the night. Look what's been going on. I mean, look at you. I'm all right, honest. Well, what time did you get in? Three, four. I don't know. I was just walking about. And you didn't pass a phone? You didn't think I might be out of my mind with worry? I'm sorry. It, um, I just need a bit of time to myself. Besides, I wasn't looking for sympathy. So what happened? It's a long story. I don't think you'd understand. Don't you? Well, try me, Ken. I've had a lot of practice recently. You told me you were going to see Curly about the car. Yeah, I did. In the Rovers. It's got a bit out of hand, that's all. So, who were you fighting? Uh, you must know. Baldwin. Baldwin? Well, why? I mean, what was it about? Well, like I said, it's um, something and nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't fob me off, Ken. You treat this place like a doss house. I think I have a right to the truth, don't you? What was it about? Look, I'm sorry, Gail, but I just had to see you. Well, all right then, but I should be at work. You're going to work? Have you changed your mind? No, Sally, I haven't. What about Martin? Martin will never know. And that's the way it's got to stay. Well, I'm never going to tell him, but... Gail, I wish you would. I mean, it is his as well, you know. Yes, but it's my decision. I'm the one that's going to have it. Now, I've talked it over with two doctors. They both agree with me, so there's an end to it. Martin, don't come into it. But he must. No, Sally. He mustn't. But he loves kids, Martin. And you think I don't? Sally, I think you better understand this. I'm doing this for Nicky and Sarah Louise. Not out of some convenience for myself. Not because I like telling lies to Martin. But because those two young kids have had enough trouble in their lives, young as they are. They need stability. Not the chaos this would cause. I'm sure Martin would stick by you, though, Gail. Yes, he might. Probably. But not for the right reason. Because I'd forced his hand. And then every time we'd had a row, he'd throw it back in my face. And who do you think I'd blame, Sally? Think about it. Wouldn't be fair on the child. No. I suppose not. Gail, I do feel sorry for you. I'm so glad I don't have to make that decision. Yes, well, just be thankful you don't. I am. So, how long are you going to be in Birmingham? Liverpool. I thought you were going to Birmingham. So does Martin. Till tomorrow. And it'll all be over. Gail, there's still time to change your mind. Listen, Sally, I know you're expecting as well, and I, 
I know in your situation I'd probably feel the same, but I'm not in your situation. I'm in mine. And yes, I know what people would say about me if they knew, and I don't give a damn. This is my life. It's my future. And no one, not you, Martin, Ivy, not anyone, has the right to tell me what's right or wrong. Ken? Look, Ken, I'm going to be late for work. Right. What? I can't hear you. I said right. Don't want you being late for work, do we? I think you better sleep it off. I'm taking the phone off, OK? Thanks, Wendy. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about all this. I'm not exactly thrilled myself. I'll see you. Confirmation from head office about Mrs. Dodds. It's all gone through without a hitch. And don't think your part in the negotiations has gone unappreciated. Thanks, Norman. I thought I was firm but fair, sir. I shall put that in your assessment. Firm but fair. And remind me to buy you a drink one of these evenings. You, uh, you take a tipple, I take it? Sir, look, it was nothing. It might be nothing to you. I felt as if I'd been snatched out of the jaws of death. Poor old Ernie Wingate down at Bolton, he won't know what's hit him. Eh? He'll have his vest off before he gets time to wipe the steam off his verticals. <laughs> right, now perhaps I should warn him. But then again, who warned me? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, the enemy to the approach. Don't go on. Miss Taylor might need me. I might need you. Oh, Mr. Holt, I'm glad I've caught you. Uh, key to my office. Uh, I've cleared my things. Mrs. Dodds, I, uh, I hear you're being transferred. Yes, Mr. Watts has just been telling me. Well, you'll be very well missed at Weathersfield. We were already thinking of moving Bolton way, so it's a blessing in disguise, really. Oh, really? Good. Uh, did you hear that, Mr. Watts? <laughs> well, perhaps you could assist Miss Taylor. Yes. Well, no hard feelings. Why should there be? What did she say to him? Nice as pie. Butter wouldn't melt. Hey, I bet he were relieved, weren't he? Mind, I can't vouch for my husband. You haven't told your husband? Not like keen on sexual perverts, isn't Archie? Being perverts. I think you know what I'm talking about. Sexual harassment. It's me that's been sexually harassed, Benny. Happen you will be when Archie gets hold of you. Strike first, taught later, that's Archie. They taught him that in the Royal Marines. It's not safe for decent folk to come out anymore. It was never like this when Mrs. Walker was in charge. Not like this when I'm in charge, Betty. Mm. Sim, Calamity Jack, getting this pub a bad name. It's Ken Barlow you want to see about that. I don't know why you keep picking on Ken Barlow. It's Mike Baldwin that causes all the trouble around here. If you ask me, he wants barring for good. That'd be a novelty bar Mike Baldwin. Mm. Nobody did ask you, Betty. She's right, though. You bar Percy. You've got to bar Mike Baldwin. I think a quiet word in his ear do the trick. It's a quiet word you want with Ken Barlow. He started it. All that messing about with Curly, that's what it was all about, you know? Right. Right, that's it then. I'll bar Ken. But Ken doesn't live round here anymore. No, he won't have thought of that. He's a little tinker, my Alec. He once barred the invisible man, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, really I am. Oh, it's all right now you're here. Listen, can you hang on for half an hour while I go out? Look, you're not going to believe this, but I'm not stopping. But I won't be long, honestly. I just came round to just let you know. Look, what's going on? Well, I'll make it up in my lunch hour for you, if you don't mind. I'll see you later. Bye. I don't know. Since when has being pregnant given you a licence for skiving off work? Well, it's a pity men don't have to go through it. That's all I can I say. I think you're on a loser there, Al. Look, all I meant Typical, was... isn't it? They're quite happy to stoke the fire, but it's us as to carry coal buckets. Why is it that everything I say turns against me? Listen, Alf, I think it might be as well to realise that a little bit of tact and understanding won't go amiss. Mm, See? Yeah. Oh, I'll get that uh, thing. Excuse me, dear. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Alf. Hasn't it gone quiet all of a sudden? He'd be licking his wounds, I dare say. <laughs> Not the only one this morning. Oh, have you had a Barney with your Jim? Haven't you heard? Your husband. Ken? What? What's he been up to? He were fighting in the Rovers last night. I thought you'd have heard the commotion. <laughs> it's the first I've heard of it. Are you sure? I were there. Saw it for myself. What happened? He just blew his top. He were like a man possessed. 
an idea what set him off. Who was he fighting with? Mike Baldwin. God knows what it were about. He must have said something. Mr Holdsworth? Hmm? Are you all right? Yes, what, why? Oh, I thought all your troubles were over. Oh, well, I've not been sleeping lately, not well at all. In fact, under normal circumstances, I think I should have stopped at home and had a few days rest. Left everything in your capable hands. Well, you can rely on me. I'd be happy to take charge. Yes, well, uh, I have to soldier on. Mm. Oh, I've uh, been thinking about your, uh, your situation. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, somewhere to keep. Oh, I'd be very grateful if you know something. Well, I think I can get you fixed up with something. What? You know about a place? Excuse what? me? Yes? Where do you keep your vodka? Yeah, uh, down the aisle, round the corner. It's on the left-hand side. Sorry to trouble you. Oh. Are you sure you're all right? Just had a gastric spasm. What was this you're saying about this friend of yours? Well, he's not exactly a friend, but I'll see what I can do. Mm. Well, all right. Uh, use the phone in my office. Uh, well, it'd be better to negotiate on a one-to-one -one basis, because it, it won't be plain sailing. Yes. Um, uh, get back as soon as you can, will you? Leave it with us, then. Yeah, speak to you soon. Bye now. Nothing round. And? Is Mark here? No, he's gone under discount. It's no good, Kev. I've tried everything. No. So he still doesn't know? Well, it's too late now. He's gone off to work and Gail will be in Liverpool by the time he gets home. I thought you said she was going to Birmingham. No, Liverpool. Look, Sal, the truth will come out, you know. She's told that many lies. It always does. Yeah, but it mustn't. Look, if he finds out, you know, It'll be on your conscience. I just hope you know what you're doing going along with it. But, Kevin, I swore to Gail I wouldn't tell him. Oh, God, I wish I didn't know anything about this now. Yeah, well, you do, don't you? But you've got to see Gail's point of view. It's her decision, you know, and not Martin's. You what? I know it's awful, Martin, not knowing. But she's the one that's having it. It's her life. Can't you see that? She has the right to choose, not Martin. I don't think he understand you anymore. How can you say that to me with our kid inside you? Ours, remember, not just yours. And if you go getting ideas off Gail, God help you, cos I won't. <laughs> I'd watch her armour. Once you taste the forbidden pleasure of an expense account, you won't see her for dust. Just for one moment. Look, I'll, I'll see you tonight, right, Mike? Hmm? Right, but I'm warning you. Next time there'll be a ten-day symposium for fish fryers in Honolulu. Don't tell me. Listen, don't look it, kid. It's what keeps us businessmen sane. A little pampering never did me any harm. Right then, I'm off. See ya. And watch the a la carte. He's uh, not the most tactful of men, Mike. How's you? Once I'm on that train, I'll feel better. Point of no return, eh? You haven't had second thoughts, have you? I can't wait for it to be over. Mind you, I've had to stand my ground. Hey, listen, he hasn't found out, has he? No. But I've had Sally round, trying to persuade me to tell him. You don't think I should, do you, Alma? What, make more trouble for yourself? You just stick to your guns, kid. Thanks, Alma. How many more times have I got to tell you? The flat is not for let. It's full of stock at the moment, so that's it. Look, it's just for a couple of months until he gets himself sorted out. He's homeless. No, I can do without the aggravation. And if you ask me, it's a bit right coming from somebody who don't pay the rent. You still owe me 80 quid. Oh. Have you forgotten? Come on, Mr Roberts, you know I'm fixed with that car. I'm skinned. Yeah, well, that's it in a nutshell. Folks should not take on fresh commitments until they've honoured their old debts. You get no sympathy from me. Look, he'll be no trouble. He'll, uh, he'll pay in advance. No! How many more times have I got to tell you? No, Curly. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Hi, hi. Hello, Kev. 
How's it going? Well, there's nothing wrong, is there? What's up with you? I've got to talk to you. Hello. Hey, listen, I'm going to have to go out. Audrey should have been here by now. Now, listen, if there's any deliveries, I don't want you doing too much. You get that? If you bring it through here or dump it out there. Mr Roberts, I'm not ill. I'm fine now, honestly. Yeah, well, just as long as you know that I'm not unsympathetic. Right, well, from now on, you're not going to be able to tell the difference from me and a normal person. Oh, that's the ticket, right. <laughs> I'll see you later anyway, love. Take care. See you later. Right. So these uh, lemons look nice and fresh. Are they South American? Yes, and the best stock and all. Um, how many would you like? Uh, well, actually, I've uh, come to see about the flat. Mr Watts sent me. Oh, you must be Mr Holdsworthy. No, Holdsworth. Reginald Holmes. Oh, Alf Roberts. Oh, how do you do? Yeah. Bye, you didn't waste any time getting around here, yeah, did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, Curly's boss, are you? Yes, yes. Hey, listen, how long have you been in the grocery trade? Well, I was apprentice to it. Ah. How many can say that? Ah, yeah. that's true, yeah. yeah. Was uh, a pity. Tell me, Mr Roberts, do you get a lot of coke for these stuffed mushrooms? Oh, it's funny you should say. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute, love. Yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, Sally's here now. There's no panic. You're right, Sally, love. Yeah, I'm fine, oh, Margaret. Well, would 30 in advance be all right, then? Oh, yes, no problem. Oh. But uh, I would like to see it, though, if you don't mind. Ah, yes, of course you would. Yeah, well, it's full of stock at the moment, you see. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can soon get it cleared. Like. Mm. Oh, come on, I'll show you it now. Uh, it's oh, up there, man. That reminds me now. Where do we keep the ravioli? Because I need some tins for tonight. Ravioli? I didn't know Mr Roberts was into Italian food. I thought it was more of a, a steak and kidney pie, man. <laughs> I'll fail have to eat Boris Kiffin. <laughs> no, it's Nicky's favourite. Got the grandchildren stopping with us while girls gallivanting around Birmingham. If you ask me, I think it's just an excuse for a holiday. Mind you, I think I'd have chosen somewhere a little more exotic than Birmingham. <laughs> oh, here we are. I'm surprised, really, because uh, I thought she would have fixed it to take Martin with her. So come on then, Kev. You've not searched me out around the back of the kitchen just so you can tell me you can't say whatever it is you've come to say. Look, I'm laying myself wide open here. She'll kill us when she finds out. Go on. It's about Gail, innit? Yeah. What? She got another fella or something? No. Nothing like that. Oh. Well, what then? Look. She's pregnant. <sighs> Are you joking me? Well, how come you know? She told Sally. Well, why did she tell me? Because she's not keeping it. She didn't want you to know. That's why she's going to Birmingham, isn't it? She's not going to Birmingham. She's got one of those clinics somewhere in Liverpool. She's having it done first thing in the morning. Oh, no, she's not. May we remind our customers, for this week only, we'll be giving away a free Better Buy t-shirt with every purchase in excess of £20. So please retain your till receipts. Enjoy your shopping the Better Buy way. Mrs Duckworth, have you got a minute? You want me? Where are you going? I, I'm taking an early lunch break. You don't mind, do you? It's just that, well, I've got a, an appointment at hairdressers in five minutes. I'm sorry, but you're on one while two. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm taking it early. They could only put me in at half past twelve, so there's no need to tell Miss Drogs with that. I'm sorry, but it's out of the question. Oh, you are joking, aren't you, Curly? Why do you think we have a rotor? Now, Mrs Duckworth, will you please go back to work? Do you mean it? You're getting too big for your boots, you know. You're not the manager yet, you know. May I remind you, in Mr Holdsworth's absence, that is at this precise moment, I am the manager of this store, and I expect the appropriate respect. Do you really mean it? I most certainly do. It's the last time I stick up for you, you know. Our Jack could have got his head bashed in last night. And I appreciate it. And how many times do I have to tell you we must keep our personal and professional lives totally separate? Ah, I want to see the manager. Oh, complain for it. I'm not here for the good of my health. No, I don't think you were. He's over there, look, on the toilet roll. Right. Hey, Kimberly. Oh, yeah. What? I think, I think Curly's going to get a lesson in customer relations, look. Huh? What's your game? What did you do that for? Listen, pal, I know what you're up to. What have I done? Sexual harassment, that's what. It's lucky for you I trust my wife. No wonder she wanted a transfer. I'd watch it if I were you. Not as innocent as he looks. 
Mr. Wolf, are you OK? Oh, Curly, are you all right? What was all that about? I think that was Mr. Dodds. Look, Marty, can't you see I'm Where is she? Feet? I told her to get an early train. She's there. She's gone to Birmingham. <laughs> Marty, and I, sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. I'm just trying to find this. You're in on this as well, aren't you? In on I know what? where she's gone. She's gone to Liverpool. I don't know why. I don't believe this. It's my baby. Look, Everyone knows but me. Come through the back. Keep your door, Sam. Go enough. Look, it's no good, Martin. You're too late. 